It's 8 o'clock on today. Coming up, deal or no deal, Hunter Biden pleads not guilty to federal tax charges after that controversial plea deal falls apart in the courtroom. So where does the case go from here? And what does it mean for 2024? We're live with the latest. Plus, safe and effective new details on the game-changing new drug for women suffering from postpartum depression, roughly one in eight new mothers. The pill now on the fast track for approval and what you need to know. Then, reunited. A set of triplets separated at birth find their way back to each other. We, you know, walked in and saw each other and just like ran up and gave each other the biggest hugs and it was like we had known each other forever. Just ahead, they join us live in studio to share their emotional journey to sisterhood. And Killer View, the new trailer for Only Murders in the Building is out and the prime suspect is a Hollywood icon. Storms coming. Don't take us that for the opening in the rocks. So out of all the big stars, who done it? We'll break down all the mystery and mayhem today, Thursday, July 27, 2023. We today interns representing Howard University, the University of Texas, Carnegie Mellon University, Fordham University, Barnard College, Montclair State. Columbia University, and we're celebrating National Eternity Day! Back now, 812 with a heartwarming story of sisterhood. Yeah, more than 30 years ago, a Colorado mom had triplets, but due to personal and financial challenges, she had to place two of her babies up for adoption. Years later, the three sisters finally met and have grown closer than ever since, and they are here to tell us about their special bond. But first, their remarkable journey. Triplets Ricky Jump, Kendall Scavo, and Julianne Scavo are sisters and best friends. I think I really lean on both of them. It's the closest we've ever been. The three have such an inseparable bond. It's hard to believe they were actually separated at birth. 32 years ago in Colorado, their biological mom, Kathleen, and her husband, Lee, used a sperm donor and became pregnant with triplets. But the couple had to make a tough decision. They decided to put two babies up for adoption. They were not well off financially. And again, my mom was 100% deaf. So that further complicated the situation, made both of them believe that they wouldn't be able to raise three children successfully. Kathleen and Lee raised Ricky, while Julianne and Kendall were adopted as twins by Tina and Ken Scavo, who live 40 miles away. Ricky grew up knowing she was a triplet, but Julianne and Kendall had no idea they had another sister until their parents gave them a special Christmas gift when they were eight years old. They had told Kendall and I that they had one present left for us, uh, and it was the kind of present that could not be wrapped in a box. And they showed us a picture of Ricky and let us know that we had another sister out there the triplets then began exchanging letters every few months. So we were like pen pals. It was the highlight of my childhood. In one letter, Ricky writing to her sisters, all I've ever wanted was to run up to you and embrace both of you in my arms. A few years later, Ricky finally got that chance to hug her sisters. The three meeting for the first time at a local mall when they were 11 years old. We, you know, walked in and saw each other and just like ran up and gave each other the biggest hugs and was like, we had known each other forever. Since then, through all of life's ups and downs, including the tragic loss of both of their dads, the triplets have only grown closer. And now the three live just minutes away from each other in Austin, Texas. We're seeing each other at least once a week, if not twice. The more time we spend around each other, the more we start to like sound like each other and act like each other. They've even started a podcast together about their story featuring some special guests. You're here with the three babies that you birthed. Look at you all, you're all <laughs> together and you're healthy and happy and smart. The triplets say they're grateful for each other and they're now unbreakable bond. They are just like the most important people to me. Being able to kind of cultivate this really unique 
relationship has just been like the best thing that we all could have done. Here they are, the oh. triplets, Ricky, <laughs> Jules, and Kendall. Gross. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We're so morning. happy to see you. Okay, this has been such an emotional journey just to watch this unfold. And Rick, you always knew that you, that you were missing a part of you. Mm -hmm. What was it like? Describe the moment when you're 11 years old, you're in a mall, and you see the two sisters who you've kind of dreamt of meeting. A lot like a puzzle piece sliding into place. Mm. Uh, I had been a pretty sad kid up to that point just because of the tragic loss of my father. So it was like the first reprieve I had from that in a long time. And you're identical, Ricky and Jules. So yeah. was that, Jules, what was that like? Not only are you meeting these, this long lost sister, mm -hmm. you're identical. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was very trippy. I had been resistant <laughs> to thinking that we were identical for a long time, but um, it was like looking in a mirror and knowing that I didn't have those clothes and I didn't have my ears pierced. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it was, yeah, it was a little jarring, but it was so fun. Kendall, I was thinking about that Christmas when mm -hmm. your parents kind of surprised you with a photograph. Yeah. What, you have to describe that moment because I can imagine it was exciting, but also sort of like jarring. It was very surreal um, because yeah, it looked like we were looking at a picture of Julianne, but mm -hmm. like, Obviously not. <laughs> yeah. so it's like that our parents took us aside separately, asked us individually how we felt about it. How and did you feel? I said, I'm unique. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been uh, really cool. So, you know, the years have gone on. You have obviously formed this really close relationship. Have you noticed things now where you're like, oh yeah, we're so triplets. I mean, it's an interesting mm -hmm. thing where you, Two of you had a different upbringing mm -hmm. than you did, Ricky. Mm -hmm. But do you find those similarities? Yeah. Stuff? We talk about nature versus nurture all the time. Julianne and I especially speak exactly the same, mm -hmm. which I'm mm -hmm. sure you've noticed, have the same hand movements. But mm -hmm. most of all, we just got the oddball gene, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> um, did you ever, I wondered when you knew that, you know, the way you were separated, your mom had to make that very, very difficult decision, that birth mom, did you ask your mom, like, why us? Why did it happen this way? I think we always, I don't know if it was why us so much as why them, my parents, uh -huh. because they did fight so long to have babies through the adoption process. And because they told us so young, it was just always a part of growing up and it was never like a shock to us that we were adopted. But of mm -hmm. course, when it when we found out we were had a triplet, that was the bigger shock. <laughs> I mean, for your adoptive parents, it, I, I'm sure it was a complex decision yes. because you know you always are, you know want to make sure that you know you're you're going to hold on to your kids that mm -hmm. you're raising and you love so much, and you know when you add in this other element in a mm -hmm. birth mom, I mean that's it takes a lot of courage for your adoptive parents to say, okay, let's bring these girls together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they had to overcome a lot of fear in order to do that because I think they just always had that inherent like fear that we would see like our birth mom and um, our her. sister and yeah. like feel like a biological pull, but that was mm -hmm. just never the case, so. So we're looking at you three, you all live in Austin. I mean, this is yeah. the craziest situation. <laughs> um, how did it come to be that the three of you wound up in the same city sharing life like that? Yeah, so I moved to Austin first for graduate school. Let's just pretend because we're on the Today Show that I completed that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, about, I'd say eight years later, Julianne had just been soul searching in California and I begged her to come join me. Mm -hmm. And Kendall just couldn't stay away. Oh, I love <laughs> it. Well, you're together right where you belong. It's so fun to have you here. It's, I mean, it just shows you the family transcends all of our definitions. It sure does. Thank guys, you. I can't wait to hear your podcast too, by the way. I know. Love oh, the Star Wars we'll love reference. your feedback. <laughs> <laughs> all right, by the way, we've got a lot more on this remarkable story on today.com. Thank, Thank you, girl. Thank, Thank you. you.
morning. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming to this early, right? Everybody, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage, liberated? We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stop with us now. The boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. on today, our first ever today summer block party. Of course, block parties are such a beloved American tradition, and it's no surprise why, because they bring communities together. When summer hits its peak, neighbors from coast to coast pour out onto the pavement. America loves a block party. It's an epic get together set in the street with everything from grilling and games to music and dancing. The beloved tradition dates back more than a century. A New York Times article from 1923 calls the block party a social phenomenon. And over the years, the neighborhood gathering evolved into a full on celebration, often even in including live entertainment, vendors, even rides. When residents close the streets, the traffic ends and the party begins. All right, our party's starting right here today. We're going to start with today contributor Alejandra Ramos. She's here. She's got tips and tricks for how to set up. So let's yes. pretend you're ready. You want to have a block party. Oh. What are the first few things? All right, so the first few things, not super fun, but you got to do your homework. Okay. So this depends on where you live. Make sure you have any permits you need, any insurance. Get those T's crossed. Nobody wants to shut the party down in the middle of the fun. Uh. You also want to make sure you work as a community. Divide yeah. jobs up. Everyone's got special talents. Let them do it. Okay. Uh, use sign-up sheets to make sure you don't miss out on anything, and hopefully you won't need it, but set up a first aid station. Okay, after you checked yes. all those boxes, let's get started, because you're going to need lots of drinks, lots yes. of ice, and sometimes you got to get creative, because you don't have exactly. that many coolers. Exactly, yeah, so we've do? got a couple ideas for your hydration stations. I love the idea of raiding your garage. This is See a what you have, a wheelbarrow. Right. You can use a kiddie pool, a canoe, fill it up with ice, bottles and cans. It's such a great, easy grab-and-go, but it's also fun and you don't have to buy anything new. Someone in your town has, has a wheelbarrow. A wheelbarrow. Yes. But again, you said a baby pool, a canoe, anything, anything in the garage, you fill have. it up with ice. I love this little rainbow hydration station. This is just water, but we added some watermelon, some lemon, some cucumbers, adding a little bit of color and also some fun. And that way, again, I love these dispensers. People can serve themselves, stay Perfect. hydrated, but it also adds color and, and also, fun. by the way, decorate the joint. Yes. Easy. You want people to feel welcome. Yes. <laughs> See what I did there? I got so, all our interns on so TV simple. again. All right, popcorn is something popcorn. that's always good to have. I love the idea of a DIY popcorn station. You have your popcorn machine, your little container, yep. and then all sorts of fun toppings. You can add pretzels, you can add cheese powder, coconut, sweet, savory, whatever you like. Fun. So fun, and this works at any temperature, so you don't have to worry about things melting. Let's get to this kind of uh, great snack department, but it's a great way to stack everything. Yeah, so pull out some of those shelves in the garage or wherever you have them and add some grab-and-go snacks. These can just be store-bought things, cookies, boxes of raisins, chips. You don't have to man the station. Everybody can grab them. It's such a fun way, but it also adds color and helps people help themselves to fun snacks. Simple, easy to restock, yes. a perfect place for exactly. it. Exactly. Okay. And, and what's going on uh, here? All right, so these are my party pails. We want to keep things clean in our community, so you can distinguish just regular garbage cans, okay. buy some little grass skirts. You've got your regular garbage, your recycling, Cycling, place them around. They're not an eyesore. People will know where they are and they look fun. You need a ton of trash cans. Totally. I like a community swap table. So yes. what is this? So this is such a great opportunity. You already have all your neighbors out. Let them go with like anything that they want to get rid of. So whether it's old toys, old equipment, kitchen supplies, you can put them there. It's a, basically a free store. The community can swap, but make sure you have someone at the end ready to bring any leftovers to a like a Goodwill or a donation center. By the way, brilliant, easy. Yes. Alejandra, thank you so much. Miss Guthrie, over to you. All right, coming up next, it is time for a little fun cornhole. We're taking it next level. These are actual pros. They're in the American Cornhole League, and they're going to show us how to play. But first, this is today on NBC. You make it look so easy. <laughs>
today. It could be fun to play with friends with a drink in hand to hear the feedback there, but it's also very competitive. It is now featured on TV as professionals toss their way to championships and big prize money. In fact, there are more than 250 pros in the American Cornhole League. This morning we have a few with us. We've got the best of the best. Okay, we've got Hoda Craig, Alan Jacob, getting some tips from Yeti Irwan and Moses Zazueta. And I am with pro Lori Duell. Hi, Lori. Good morning. Good morning. Tell me about how Cornhole has kind of expanded exploded in popularity. So Cornhole has definitely exploded. It has been a huge success on TV and a lot of people have seen it, but it's a backyard game that anyone can play, anyone can win. And so it's really taken off because we've moved it from tailgates to the big screen. I know, I mean, you have a full-time job, but you're also a pro. How, how do you balance those two things? How do you become a pro? So you become a pro by going to the qualifier, earning points throughout the season, but it is very difficult to balance having a full-time job. <laughs> having a full-time job, I've worked over 50 15 years in public education and so it's kind of a, a give and take but really trying to make every moment count. Okay, you're going to show me, I'm gonna, can I put this mic down, you're going to show me yes. a few tips and then we're going to yes. put the pros up again. Greg yeah. and Jacob. So what is what's what is what are some tips we need to know? So the absolute best best tip I can tell you whether you're playing in the backyard or you're really trying to become a pro is you want to throw a flat bag. So what that means is that you want to be able to kind of throw it like an underhand frisbee toss. Okay, which way, where am I aiming? So you can ah. let's aim this way. All the way there? Yes. Okay. And what oh. am so like underhand toss? Where should underhand I stand? Toss. Okay, you show me. Oh. And you're going to try and flip it. So you hold that? Yeah. And put it on the board. Oh. Okay. Oh, switch? Oh, okay. Yeah. We really want a flat bag so that. Oh! Oh, oh my god! Oh, 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 we gotta get you signed up. Do it again, that'll never happen to us. Okay, I I'm gonna turn it over to you guys are playing against the actual pros. So, Hoda, take it away. You guys, okay, me and Yeti, we're a team, no, or, we, or we're playing against each other. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Let's see. here we go. First one in, go first. Go ahead. Oh, come that on, girl, let's really see. What you got. Let me watch, watch her work, watch her work. Oh, oh. Yeah. you there. Up, yeah, get there. Oh. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, go ahead, go, go again. Go ahead, Yeti. Good. My turn. Should I go? Oh, so Way to go, good. Sobo. This is a now this is Moses. Here we go. This Moses is an 18-year-old. Yes. Bring it, Come bring Moses, it. Moses, you show go. us how it's done here. Oh! Go, Did you Moses. just? I see. Do another one. Oh! Did you just make it? Yes. Who are he you? He dreamed it. I didn't even know cornhole was professional. Oh! Leo. This is insane. Oh. I got you, I got you. You're, I'm hungry. Let's see it, Moses. Oh, I don't, no. Oh, oh, no. I have never Wait played cornhole without a beer. Al, will you throw some of those down here? Uh, okay. That's a bunch of Al. Al's drinking. Oh! Oh! Yes, 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 oh, yes. Oh. oh, this makes it better. There you go. This yeah. makes it better. All right, okay. What's happening now? Right, this is how you play cornhole with the beer oh, in your hand. Come on, you Yeti. Go. Come on, girl. Come on, Sobo. Come on. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. oh. So what are the rules on how many shots oh. you can get? You just take turns? Or? So the rules are Almost. you have oh. Oh. Moses, show us how yeah. it's done. Yeah. This so is what Moses. happens is we're going to alternate. So whoever scores oh, last is going to throw really? the first bag, and then we do cancellation. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh, so cool. Wow. All right, guys, it's on. Cornhole is fun. Yes. Thank you to our pros from the American Cornhole League. We appreciate it so much. Um, oh, by the way, now we got to pull up, don't we? We've got Chef David Rose here ready to feed a crowd with the perfect sandwiches for a block party. Come on, Hoes. Oh, got it. I knew it. Yes. 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 But first, this is today on NBC. Did you see? She just got it.
Today's summer block party is sponsored by Good and Gather, only available at Target. We are back with more of our first ever today summer block party. So we've covered music, we've covered games, but save the best for last. Time to talk about food. And here to show us two tasty grab and grow mm -hmm. sandwiches that will impress everybody on the block. Yes. Chef and cookbook author, Mr. David Rose. Good yes, to see you. Yes, sir. Good to be back. How's everybody doing today? Hey. Basically, chili ste uh, uh, cheese steaks. Yes, sandwiches, sir. But make sliders out of them. We're going to kind of switch it up. Also, kind of a Mexican flair. So, a really cool tip okay. to get that steak nice and thin. You freeze it partially. Oh, okay. And then you slice that super thin. Okay. Then you let it cool Going down to room temperature. Grain. Yeah, against the grain. That's going to tenderize it, make it nice, and just kind of uniform cuts okay. on there. You're seasoning that oh, salt, black pepper, chipotle, garlic powder, sometimes smoked paprika okay. for a little bit of smokiness. Oh. And you just toss that all together, Al, like okay. that. That's Boom. It. I like to get the vegetables going first because that's the longest. So right here I got some jalapenos. I'm Jamaican, a little bit of heat. Okay. We share that. Yes, Onions, sir. peppers, all that right uh -huh. there. We saute that up. That uh, you want to do that uniform yeah. cuts and size so mm -hmm. it cooks evenly at the same time. Right. Once that's nice and cooked, you put a steak on there. Right. Steak's going to go very quickly it since it's sliced it's thinly, sliced so about a minute. Okay. Golden brown deliciousness. Mm -hmm. You're going to add in there, yes. you're going to add some beef stock for okay. that nice kind right of umami, a little bit of jus in there. Uh -huh. A little bit of thinly sliced garlic. I yes. like slicing them thin for that nice okay. garlic pop. And cheese. What's a Philly cheesesteak without cheese? You gotta have oh, cheese. Oh, no. you gotta have yeah. it. They know what I'm talking about. Okay. So we're doing Mexican cheesesteak style. So we got Oaxaca and we also have Chihuahua You're cheese. You put that right on the Yes, grill. you can also substitute Monterey Jack. Uh -huh. And then you go Benny Hanna style right. with it, Al. Oh, you go yeah. Benny style. You got the onions, you got the cheese, all that till it's nice and melty you and don't gooey have and onion, delicious. That's the next segment. Okay. That's the next segment. Patience. All right. And so we got, got that. These uh -huh. little slider buns. We got little slider buns right there. Uh -huh. And you're going to bring it all home with some pico de gallo oh for that nice God. acidity. Wow. To cook that fattiness. Okay. So you feel like you're in Philly and in Mexico. Uh -huh. So if you're looking, this is your tasting plate right here, sir. Oh, so right. feel free to grab one of Absolutely. those while we move on to okay. the next recipe. You okay. Grilled cheese. Grilled cheese. Oh, grilled cheese. I love grilled cheese. It's the perfect snack. And it is an awesome vessel for whatever you want to do. So what we're doing right now, we're keeping it international. Cuba. Style. Ah. So we're going to start with aioli. We got uh -huh. a little bit of vinegar. We're going to put that in there. Rice wine vinegar for that nice sweetness. Mm -hmm. All right, there we go. Boom, like so. Yeah. A little bit of lime juice. Yeah. Okay, a little bit of Worcester. How do you say it? Worcester, Worc Worcestershire. Worcestershire. How do you say it? It's delicious. Cilantro. Uh -huh. And go ahead and dump that garlic powder uh -huh. for me there. Al, you're going to put you to work today, my friend. And you whisk that all together. All right. And essentially, aioli is kind of a fancy mayo. Yeah, so you can right. add different herbs, spices. Okay. Exactly. So we're going to build our Cubano. Now, okay. traditionally, Cubanos only have ham. Oh, look, look. What do you think, sir? What do you think? Out of control. No, out of control. Oh. There we go. Out of control. Right. Traditionally, Cubans have ham, smoked pork, and Swiss. Uh -huh. But in certain parts of Tampa, Italian influence, salami. Okay. So we're putting salami in there. All right. So on this half, like we're doing mustard. Mustard, okay. Yeah. On the other half, we're going to utilize that aioli. Uh -huh. Give that a nice slather. And we're going to build. Seven. So you got to have your Swiss cheese in there. So okay. you can Swiss cheese me on there, huh? Okay, Swiss cheese. All right. We got that pork. Pork roast right there. Oh, pork roast. Okay. A little salami right salami. there. Uh huh. Salami. And then right there, bologna. a little more pork as well. And pickles. Yeah, you pickles. gotta have gotta pickles. Have pickles. Okay. And the great thing with this is, and you wanna top that for me, All please, right, <laughs> You can substitute, you know, turkey breast, chicken breast, whatever you like. Now, but before we do that, uh -huh. mayonnaise is a great golden brown I enhancer. Love the mayonnaise. So you put that chipotle aioli on right. there. Okay. That's cilantro aioli Boom. down there like that. Boom. You let that press that down. Uh -huh. Burger press, cast iron pan. When you flip it, hit it again. Flip it over oh, one more time. Right. That butter just gets all up in there. Oh. And that right there, Al. Oh. Boom, bam, Let's bim. Go. Let's slice it up. Are y'all ready for the reveal? Yeah. Slice it down now. You see that? See that down? Cheers. Ooh. To the block party, to end all block oh, party. Yeah. What y'all think? Yeah. And folks, that's how you do a block party. Yes. Big thank you to our sponsors, Good and Gather, only at Target. Check out these recipes. Go to today.com, scan the QR code, lock, and uh, today.com slash block party. Hey, you know what? We're going to keep this party going on our streaming channel today, all day. David's going to be back. We've got some more all-star chefs right over here. Over here, we've got Christina Tosi. Ah! 
We got Chef JJ. What's up? What's up? What's it? Over, oh, wait, hold on. Over here, we got my man. Oh, we got Alejandro Ramos. Oh, oh, Joy Bauer. And we got, what's going on, you big boy? And, of course, my man, Adam Richmond. Everybody here. Oh, it's going to be great. Hey, so you guys ready to do this? Let's go. Are you ready? You ready for a big block party? All right. Well, are you guys, the sandwiches? It's beyond. Unbelievable. Best grilled cheese I ever well had. Well done, All right, that's it. Best grilled cheese? Oh. You heard that, right? Here we go. Best grilled cheese. Well done. Yeah, and, of course, David Rose is going to be back, too. A lot more. The fourth hour coming out the first. I don't know. I quit. DJ. DJ is nice. DJ is nice. This morning in the third hour of today, remembering Sinead O'Connor, the outspoken singer, dies at age 56. To you. We'll look back at her life and career and the mark she left on music and beyond. Plus, clutch performance. And swinging ball, had it down, tied and won! She did it, huh? The U.S. women come from behind the World Cup, finishing in a draw with the Netherlands. We'll get the reaction from New Zealand. And we're bearing it all in our series from start to finish. That is like Willy Wonka's factory. An exclusive look at how those iconic Haribo gummy bears are made. It's all ahead today, Thursday, July 27, 2023. Live from Studio 1A in Rockefeller Plaza, this is the third hour of today. And a good Thursday morning. Welcome to this third hour of today. I'm Craig with two of our third hour pals, Jacob Sobroff in from California, Savannah Sellers in from across the street. <laughs> uh, they are joining me while Chanel and Dylan are off and also because Mr. Roker is having oh, yeah. a very busy morning. He... In case you missed it, hosting an epic summer block party on the plaza. It's going on as we speak. It's over on our streaming channel today all day. So Al's going to be cooking and dancing and drinking and cornhole. Cornhole. Hours. <laughs> Got some great chefs lined up, by the way. They're going to make some classic summer recipes. We'll check back in with him a bit later. We played some cornhole yeah. out there. I, it was Why generous to say that I played well. cornhole. I failed miserably at cornhole. <laughs> well, but you guys were terrific. No, you, that's there a good you toss. Almost good making form. it. That's good almost form. making it is and not making there it. You are. Oh, there you are. I made like Alice spill the beer. Clap everybody's hands. <laughs> I, 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 I got so excited. I rarely do anything um, that's celebration worthy. It's so, really fun out there. By the way, if you want to watch this uh, block party that's happening right now, you can head over to our streaming channel today all day on Peacock uh, of your smart TV. Or you can also just scan that QR code that is on your screen right now. It's right, right beneath uh, Savannah Sellers. <laughs> so that's happening right now, but we do want to start with uh, some news that broke yesterday. The loss of a towering figure in music and pop culture. That's right. Sinead O'Connor, the Irish singer and outspoken activist, died yesterday at age 56. NBC News Now anchor Joe Fryer is here with a look at her life. Hi, Joe. Good morning. Hey there. Joe. Good morning. So O'Connor skyrocketed to stardom in the 90s with her beautiful and haunting rendition of the Prince song, Nothing Compares to You. She was also also never one to shy away from controversy and this morning she's being remembered as a fearless rebel with endless talent it was a defining pop culture moment Nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. the iconic tight shot of Sinead O'Connor's shaved head capturing her tears Nothing as her voice compares. carefully carried such a fragile song In 1990, her cover of the Prince song, Nothing Compares to You, made her a star. Just two years later, a single action left her career in tatters. Over, 
Believer. While performing on Saturday Night Live, O'Connor ripped up a photo of then Pope John Paul II. Fight the real enemy. She was protesting sexual abuse in the Catholic Church a decade before the scandal was widely exposed. The backlash was fierce. Critics literally bulldozed her records. She was also booed while performing at a Bob Dylan tribute concert. Sinead O'Connor was never meant to be a pop star. <laughs> In 2021, in one of her last known interviews with Carson here on Today, she said she had no regrets. It was a blessing because I had to make my living doing the thing I love doing, which is making music live. Though her career was never the same, she kept making music. In all, she recorded 10 albums with millions sold worldwide and a performance on the Today Show Plaza in 2000. My darkest through it all, she was proudly a self-proclaimed troublemaker. When her record company asked for a conventional look, she shaved her head. When the Grammys awarded her with music's top prize, she skipped the show, saying it was too commercial. O'Connor also spoke candidly about her mental health struggles, some of which played out on social media. This is no way for people to be living in. In 2021, she released a memoir, Rememberings, opening up about the alleged abuse she suffered at the hands of her mother. I suffer from a condition called complex post-traumatic stress disorder from things that I went through growing up. Just last year, her son Shane died by suicide. He was just 17 years old. On social media, O'Connor called him the love of my life, the lamp of my soul. This morning, Sinead O'Connor is being remembered by fans and friends. Actor Russell Crowe posted, What an amazing woman. Peace be with your courageous heart. Actress Jamie Lee Curtis says she once heard Sinead sing a cappella in an empty chapel in Ireland, calling it one of the most beautiful things I've heard in my life. She was a warrior. She was a rebel. Sinead O'Connor's family put out a statement saying they are devastated but did not reveal how she died. Police say her death is not suspicious. Already just last night we saw tributes and yeah. concerts. Pink, Brandy Carlisle both performed their own versions of Nothing Compares to You, breaking away from their typical sets to honor Sinead O'Connor. That stripped down version of the song, Prince made it in 1985, but she really made it. Own. Yeah. yeah, she did. Carson uh, Daly also had a, a posted a nice tribute, and, and mm -hmm. it's widely thought that he probably did the last televised interview with her um, a couple of years ago. And they had become friends as a result of that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, she will be missed. Absolutely. Thank Joe. you, Jill. Thank you. All right, guys, let's take a turn now to an early showdown at the World Cup. The U.S. women's national team finished with a draw against the Netherlands in a rematch of the last World Cup final. NBC's Molly Hunter has more on the hard-fought game. Hey, Molly. That's right. Definitely was not the result the U.S. were looking for. But I got to say, talking to a bunch of U.S. fans after the game, they're still pretty pumped up. They're not too disappointed. And we are at Rosie's Red Hawk Cantina in Wellington. And I just happened upon this group. I was wondering who, who you guys were cheering for. USA! 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 It was not the result the U.S. women were looking for. But it was the tough physical match that everyone expected. 17 minutes in, the Dutch buried one in the back of the net. The crowd went nuts. The orange team was gaining momentum. But when American Rose Lavelle came off the bench, there was a spark. Fans cheering Lavelle. In the second half, co-captain Lindsey Horan went down with a hard tackle from Dutch midfielder Daniel Vandedonk, who happens to be Horan's club teammate. The ref breaking the two up, then Lavelle taking the corner, and Horan getting the last word, heading it straight into the net. She did it, Horan! We caught up with the co-captain after the match. A lot of the first half, we, you know, we were fighting for the ball. We were running a lot, and um, the momentum wasn't going in our favor. So, you know, halftime we made a few switches. We changed a little bit. The momentum came, and, and opportunities came with that. So, really happy for the goal. And she happened to be doing interviews right next to Vandedon. I did get angry at you. The two seen hugging on the pitch, and the Dutch posting this photo later of the two friends. By the way, they're all good. We also asked U.S. co-captain Alex Morgan about the front line. She leads with newcomers Sophia Smith and Trinity Rodman. Do you think the three of you are gelling more than last week? Um, you know, I think it, last week was really different. Um, Vietnam was, was very a very different team to play, but I felt like we definitely found each other a lot more this week. 
But despite the draw, American fans aren't too disappointed. We knew this was going to be a challenging game, so we have to get it under our belt. Um, we're really excited because we're going to the Portugal game. Woo! Yeah. So okay, awesome. We know that we just got a little taste, and we're just going to come back even stronger the next time. USA! USA! And still believe their team can go all the way. There are literally U.S. fans everywhere. You go in Wellington, New Zealand. I cannot avoid them. But look, everyone is wishing, obviously, they brought home that W, but definitely looking ahead to that Portugal game. And we will be monitoring those other games in Group E play uh, very, very closely. I'll send it back to you. All right. Looks so much fun every time we see her. Like, I got the FOMO. I got the Molly Hunter know, FOMO. Right? I would love to be there right now. <laughs> Guys, by the way, we wanted to take a moment to tell you about a new NBC News documentary that's out today. This guy traveled mm -hmm. to Atlanta. This is an incredible story to find out about a controversy over what a new police and fire yeah. train Facility. I've been down to Atlanta a few times over the last few months, uh, and this is a debate that's actually it's been brewing for a few years now. Opponents call the $90 million facility there in Atlanta, they call it Cop City. And there are so many issues at play here that are not unique to Atlanta, uh, but we're talking about race, we're talking about policing, we're mm -hmm. talking about gentrification, we're talking about the environment. Um, we interviewed some city leaders who support the project, but we also spent some time with people who are trying to stop it, including the mother of an activist who was shot and killed by police. Here's a, here's a first look at the film. We don't want Cop City here, and we don't want it anywhere. Thank you. Atlanta police are now charging 23 people with domestic terrorism after what police call a coordinated attack. It's not a cop city. This is for police officers, firefighters, emergency medical responders. This is for our safety. After a shootout near Cop City left a protester dead and a Georgia State Patrol trooper wounded. Your men well died for this. Yeah. Was it worth it? We will see. We will wow. see. Wow. We will see. The uh, film was made in partnership with the digital documentary team here at NBC News, a fantastic group, mm -hmm. by the way. Uh, but it is called Life, Death, and Cop City, the fight over the future of policing. Uh, you can watch it right now on NBCNews.com. You can watch it on YouTube, and you can also watch it on Peacock. Looking forward to that. It looks fantastic. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Coming up, our Consumer Confidential, the latest tech scams on the rise, and how to protect yourself. Then later on, our series from start to finish. This is a good one, a sweet look inside the first ever Haribo gummy bear factory Ooh, here in the U.S. I love those gummy bears. That means we're going to get some gummy bears, I think. We'll be right back. Who doesn't love Haribo? When I just... now with our Consumer Confidential on how to protect yourself from tech scams. Last year, get this, more than 800,000 scams were reported to the FBI. Wow. And there's a good chance that you or someone that you know has been targeted by one of these scams at some point. So we brought in the expert, NBC News technology correspondent Jake Ward. He is here to help us try and, and stay safe. So let's just start, Jake, with, yeah. with some of the most popular scams sure. that are out there right now. So, you know, right now there are just so many ways that technology is making it easier and easier for scammers to get going. And that has to do, of course, with AI. Voice cloning is a big thing that's happening. Now already people that I know in my life, I'm sure all of us have had this experience, have had someone call up and pretend to be right. a long lost cousin, your grandson calling from the police station, calling from broken down on the highway saying, please come and get me, send me some money. Yeah. That kind of scam is going to get worse and worse. The thing to do is call that person back. Do not go right into just, you know, uh, sending off the money. Instead, you got to call them back at the number you know and check that they're there. 
You're going to get texts like crazy from carriers and retailers. You're going to get people texting and saying, oh, your password's been changed or, oh, there's been a yeah. thing. Click here. Do not click there. Go around the text and go back to the bank yourself. Go back to Facebook yourself. Whoever it is, check with them directly. Phishing emails. They're going to get more and more specific. They're going to convince you that, you know, they know specifics about your life. So they must be legitimate. No. Do not click on these links. And in the end, scrutinize the senders. You have to look at the emails themselves and you're going to see zeros have been swapped out uh. for O's. These kinds of things are a huge part of the scam. It is really important over and over again to just remember they just want information out of you. Do not respond as much as possible. Scamming has become so prevalent. I actually got an email this morning from Amazon oh, warning me about a scam oh. and I had that verify it was actually Amazon. Turns out it, it was. You know, this is the thing is you're just going to get it everywhere. I get multiple a day. It is something that we're all going to have to contend with in the future. So, Jake, if yeah. you are like me and have fallen for scams in the past. Let's go. You and me. <laughs> and so it happens. Sure. What do you do? Well, so the most important thing is to report it right away. You can send, for instance, anything that looks scammy on a text message on to the number 7726. That spells out scam, uh, spam. 7726. 7726. And that will report it to the FTC. You know, and if you huh. do actually lose money, you can call the FBI. They have a whole center about this, the FTC or your local police department. Um, if you are unhappy enough to have sent a wire transfer to somebody, you can get that reversed. You just got to act quickly, go and do it. And, you know, the thing to really watch out for, I say this to everybody, is gift cards. Whenever someone yeah. says to you, send me a gift card, the reason they want to do that is it's basically cash once you do it. Stay away from gift cards. Over and over again, you'd hear people sort of making that turn where they've given somebody a bank account or they've given somebody a, an actual gift card. At that point, there's no going back. So really think hard before you proceed down that road. So important. All right, right this way, sir. Yep. Come on yep. down. Yeah, yeah. Jake, and okay. give us some rules. What do we need to think about here? Help us so we don't end up like Jacob. I know. I, scam. Want me. I mean, <laughs> as the NBC technology expert, I have been taken in by these sorts of scams as well. You know, so one big thing is use multi-factor authentication. Basically, mm. any browser, any site that you're going to right now offers you the option not only use a password, but to then be emailed mm -hmm. further credentials to get in. Right. Use that. Really important. I know it's annoying and irritating to have to update yeah, your software. Do that. They're always I saying always to do this. That. And this is something you actually shouldn't ignore because that software very those mm -hmm. software updates are very often protected you and the most important thing of course is think before you click mm. don't get into the text messages don't get into the links that you are don't sent. follow Go the links that. that's right and I like most people in our line of work use a password uh, manager you shouldn't be remembering passwords you should be using an app that keeps them for you mm -hmm. I think over and over again you guys the thing that I really want to emphasize for everybody out there is don't be ashamed when you get scammed mm -hmm. don't be ashamed when someone reaches out to right. you in a way that makes That's you feel mess. like you, you are too embarrassed to tell your friends or yeah. loved ones about it absolutely go to your kids or to a nephew or somebody in your life who knows a little more about the internet than maybe you do check in with them about it it's so important the only thing that uh, that embarrassment does is help the scammers that's out. true yeah do not be wow. embarrassed go to your friends and family and say I am I'm talking to somebody online should I be doing that yep. mm. don't be embarrassed don't Especially, keep it yourself yeah, the romance ones that you Especially think you should but no ones. don't exactly. yeah good looking out Jake thank thanks you, guys buddy. appreciate thank you, it thank you that was great stuff coming up bear with us see what I did there <laughs> that was for Roker I was right? gonna say that. Uh, we're gonna get an exclusive look at how those iconic Haribo gummy bears go from start to finish. And then a little bit later in our series, Double It Up, a fashion remix. We are going to show you how to get two looks out of wow. one piece of clothing, Jacob Soboroff. Thank you very much. Third hour of today, right back <laughs> after great this. I cannot wait. <laughs>
So this morning, we're bringing you back one of our favorite series. It's called From Start to Finish. This is where we show you how something it started and how and it, it finishes. finishes. Yes. Uh, we're going to show you how one very tiny but iconic candy is made. So here's so the start of this segment. NBC's Maggie <laughs> Vespa got an exclusive tour of the first ever U.S. factory that is making Haribo gummy bears. Maggie, this is amazing. Lots to chew. It says lots to chew on here. I don't know if I can pull that line <laughs> off, but I'm just going to say it. Lots to chew Guys, on here. I know, the puns write themselves, right? And especially when you look at how much product they sent us for this segment. I mean, we are like swimming in Haribo right now, and we couldn't be happier. And of course, candy loyalists likely know the Haribo's gold standard, the gold bears here in the gold bag very well. But the German-born company is actually a century-old global brand that now, as you said, for the first time ever, is turning out sweet tooth satisfying favorites right here in the U.S. For generations, candy praised American kids, and let's face it, their parents. Let's talk about Haribo Gold Bears. Aloha. Have happily devoured those iconic gold bags of Haribo Gold Bears. Pierce rest. Eat the gummy bears heads first. Lately, flaunting their gummy love on social media. But what Gold Bear fanatics may not have known was that their beloved Haribo confections. I love gummy have historically been concocted abroad. Haribo Confection. That is, until now. Welcome to Haribo's first ever American factory, opening this year in Pleasant Prairie, Wisconsin. That is like Willy Wonka's factory. It is. Like, that's insane. Our exclusive behind the scenes tour kicked off with a sweet spread and a warm today welcome. Hi, Gold Bear. Among the array, Haribo's classic gold bears, as well as twin snakes, watermelon, and peach gummies. I'm a fan favorite of uh, this product of the year, Berry Cloud. Snacks were a must as we sat down with our tour guides, head of corporate communications, Lauren Trickler, and John Veit, director of plant operations. How many different varieties of gummies can you possibly come up with? Like, this is wild. The possibilities are endless. In all, Haribo boasts more than 1,000 gummy and candy products sold in more than 100 countries worldwide. Its sugary reign has German roots, dating back more than a century. So Haribo is an acronym, and it's our founder's name, Hans Riegel, and the city where he founded the company in Bonn, so Haribo. And we started in 1920 in a small family kitchen. Regal, a career confectioner, appealed to kids by basing the sugary treat on teddy bears. It was an instant hit, dominating overseas for decades and coming stateside in the 80s. For Americans, the appeal translated perfectly. It gives them that feeling, that childlike happiness. It reminds them of being a kid. You look at all of the colorful bags, the varieties. That love now cooked up right here. With the smell of sugar strong in the air, we got a rare glimpse at the raw ingredients. Oh, wow. So here's where it all begins. A top secret gelatin mix that later is infused with fruity coloring and flavoring. Strawberry, raspberry, orange, lemon, and pineapple. Then it's poured into gold bear shaped molds pressed into sheets of cornstarch. Once hardened, the bears are tossed in beeswax. I've never seen that before. That's yeah. crazy. Which stops them from sticking together in the bag. They then travel down a gummy bear river to be bagged, weighed, and checked several times over by specially trained factory workers. This state-of-the-art Wisconsin plant boasts 400 employees and counting. You were saying despite automation, you still need people. What we want to try to do is use automation, but people are the ones that are behind all the machines. They built these machines, they install them, they run them, they maintain them. People is our most important aspect. People have been checking in on us this whole tour to make sure we're not touching anything we shouldn't be. They want to make sure you and I don't mess anything up. I'm, I'm trying not to. A new phase for a brand that for more than 100 years has brought out the gummy loving child in all of us. What's so special about Haribo is that connection. You want to bring them home and share them with the people that you love. 
Just trying not to mess anything up on that tour. Okay, so the factory, guys, we should note, is now one of 17 worldwide. And the company, by the way, produces more than a staggering 100 million of its classic gold bears, the gold bears, every single day. And guys, by the way, we mentioned the flavors and you saw those little cartoon bears popping up on TV. Earlier this year, we should note, Mines Blue on social media after it was revealed that the green gold bear, this little guy, is actually strawberry flavored and not lime or no. apple like people thought. I know, it still blows minds to this day. This is strawberry, so setting the record saw, straight here. I saw that in your story, I, I didn't believe it. Yeah, that's true. But it I does know. taste like strawberry. Well, let me try. By the way, I will tell you, Maggie, I did not fully appreciate how many candies Haribo actually manufactured until that story. I had no oh, idea. Did you say 100 million bears a day? I just ate 90 million of them day. during So many other products. Yeah. <laughs> berry clouds, guys. If you can try the berry clouds, that's berry one of the clouds. new ones this oh. year they were really promoting. So lots one? of variety that's in the, the Haribo world, for sure. This is the most delicious segment in a long time, Molly. Thank you. Good. Ma Maggie, Maggie I'm mean, rather. Sorry. There you go. Thank you, Maggie. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Maggie. <laughs> Sugar high. Sugar rush. Coming up in our series, Double It Up, we'll show you how to take one article of clothing, wear it two totally different ways. Then later, cheers to shop all day. Cool products to help you get through these hot summer nights. We'll be right back. Take the game. Uh, right. I know. <laughs> with our series Double It Up. All week we have talked about products that have more than one function, but this morning we are switching it up. As you can see here, we are using some imagination to show you how one piece of clothing can be worn two ways, which is so cool. Here to help us out is celebrity fashion expert Jay Bolin. Good morning. Hi, good morning. Was this a tough one? Oh my God, it was a fun one. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it looks fun. It's a, it's a fun this one. This is fantastic. Let's talk about this first outfit, Coretta here, wearing it open. I know, right? So get into this oversized kimono piece that every lady can own. It comes from Forever 21 and it's under Ooh, like 50 bucks. Yeah. So the fabric is incredible, the colors are incredible. So this is really about Maybe. maximizing your wardrobe. So I added underneath here this rust nice. jumpsuit, right? The fabric feels so young, yeah, right? It does. But the rust jumpsuit just kind of pulls out all the different colors and then this belt that's under $10, okay? The belt kind of gives us wow. that whole like Carrie Bradshaw feel. Oh, yeah. Kind of breaks up the different oh, textures so right. or whatever. And then we bring it over to Rochelle and we style it a completely different way. So we turn the actual kimono backwards. Yeah. Tie it backwards oh, in the this? back. Look at this knot. knot. Look at right. that. So this can be tried at home. You know how people say don't try it at home? Yeah. This is a this moment that look, you can I totally try at home. I think I would look like home. I was in a bathrobe backwards, but you <laughs> tied it beautifully. <laughs> and then, now camo is like the new going thing now. So it's like the new accessory that everybody wants to put on at all times. So these shorts yeah, are incredible. They come from Kohl's and they're under $20. Wow. So mix matching your, your prints is always a good thing as well. I love so here it. here you are taking two pieces, taking one piece and like doubling this thing up. Okay. It's very cool. So there we no, go. No longer do you have to like buy those one moment yeah. pieces and then you wear it at one time and then you never wear it again. Jay, before we move any further, we have to talk about your hat. That oh, is, <laughs> that's this is, this is a, a hat that we're actually, I, I design hats too. Of course. So, right? So it's I love hats, man. Hat. So I had to put on a cool hat for you guys today. All right. So this is Lamone. This is Luxia here. And we've got uh, the same outfit. It's this is really cool. Outfit, man. This I, and you've dressed it for. 
for two different people. For two different people. Well, now you have like little sisters wow. going into their brother's closets. You have the ladies that are going into their husband's closets. Mm -hmm. So now you can take these pieces, you can wear them how you want to wear them. So we have taken this full look from Zara from head to toe. Absolutely love it. The colors are so neutral that you can like mix it and match it up forever with whatever you need to in your closet. And so this top that, that he has on here is from ASOS. It's under 20 bucks and it comes from- Under 20 bucks. I know, right? That's hot. So, I mean, and that's it's like soft. You know, it's so hot outside, right? Everybody needs something that's a little more lightweight, okay? And so even the shoes, the shoes are Reeboks. They come from Macy's. The fellas just want to be as casual as possible. And then we take it to our ladies. Just put on like a little under top it. underneath it. You don't really have to like uh, just do the rust color. You can actually do like a white one. You can do a black huh. one, put on a pair of black boots with it if you want to. There's so many ways to style these incredible looks. And I love it because again, it's not that expensive. It's not yeah. that expensive at all. I'm all about that. I'm not necessarily just about maximizing the wardrobe, but I'm about maximizing the bank account as well, Amen. okay? Oh my God. <laughs> right, I'd so be scared to try Denise that, but over it here. awesome. We have another incredible I, outfit. I know, another incredible outfit. And you all know that I love prints, right? So here we are with this printed dress that we're all obsessed with. It kind of ties up around the neckline area. And it just helps the ladies that are like, listen, I've eaten. I don't want to show my tummy. I don't want to wear any spank. So here's this A-line dress that's really flattering to any kind of neckline and any kind of body, right? So I'm going to do a live transformation for you to yeah, show you woo. how do you actually maximize this. So I'm just going to take the knot out up here, right? In real take, time. Take the knot out in real time. And then we're going to move it down a little bit. Okay. And you're going to take your skirt and you're just going to tie you're it up nervous. in the oh, back, amazing. right? <laughs> so tie it up in the back really nicely. No problem at all. This is easy for any lady that's at home. Take it and tie it in a knot and bam. Boom. Now you have Amaze. it into an actual done. skirt as wow. well. Right? So now you have like this cute little bandeau that comes from Macy's as well. It's super cute. I love mixing prints. It's easy to do, ladies. Take that undertone, this black undertone in, in both of these worlds. That mix so it all cool. together. And here we are maximizing all of our work. Wow, you're great letting you do that live on TV. <laughs> and, now, and, and adding a cool clutch to it. So adding this clutch to it just to kind of add a little bit of more mixed print here. It kind of gives like a whole like tribal safari vibe. Absolutely. Really, really cool. Oh, it's gorgeous. Jay, awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> no this, I want to try this and I would have been scared, but try I love it. Home. Yes. Try it at home. Thank you, Jay. Right. Just ahead, we're chilling out in shop all day. We've got some products to help you beat the heat even when you're asleep. Third hour of today, right back after this. back another edition of shop all day and this morning we are helping you beat the heat with some products that should help you cool down a bit and with us right now shop all day contributor Mako and Lovu and you can scan that QR code to see all of these items mm -hmm. good to have you back thank you for having me you're, you're speaking my language here well let's start right here I absolutely <laughs> love we're gonna drink our drinks and make them nice and cold with these freeze cups it's a two-pack here's the thing this is for wine but you can use it for any drink it keeps it at that perfect serving temperature but look at this band right here yeah. this according mm -hmm. to the brand that's where the magic is so it keeps it at that great temperature and 
again, you can use it for a variety of things. This is how you use it. You put it in the freezer for a specified sort of drink, or you put it in the refrigerator. So when you're ready to use it, you can just grab it. And according to the brand, it'll keep your drink cold for up to three hours. We got something for the beer lovers, Jacob. Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this will keep your beer nice and cold. Imagine having a nice cold beer on a hot summer day, but not just for beer. You can use this for any beverage, even like a milkshake. This makes for oh. a great mm. gift, right? Isn't that nice? I can confirm this is a very cold beer. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and super easy it to sure use. Is. Again, these are two packs, so definitely make sure that you check them out. And so what, this thing is pretty awesome. Yeah. This is yeah. a cooling pad for sleep? Yeah, well, this one is for Savannah, because she was telling me that she sleeps hot, which I do. I'm so a sweaty sleeper. Right. You are? Very much so. Okay, excuse me. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's start right here. You definitely want to check out these two products that I'm going to talk about. So this is the actual pillow. So what you can do is this put is this so over awesome. or under your pillowcase. This is going to keep you up to cool, up nice and cool for up to three hours. And get wow. this, it doesn't need any refrigeration, any electricity, any water. You can just put it to the side. How do we know? How do, you, then how, does it how do we know? Well, put it in a cool area for up to 15 to 20 minutes, and then it's going to regenerate. And here's how it works. So as soon as your head hits that pillow, that's when that cool formula just kicks in, keeping you nice and cold throughout the night. So this is great. And, and by the way, this is for your whole body. This is for your whole body. It's about three and a half feet long, which is nice if you've got night sweats, you've got hot it's flashes. Yeah. This is going to keep you nice and cold. And for our shop all day viewers, we have a nice deal, 30% off. So make sure that you scan that <laughs> QR code to check out that 30% off. Listen, get the two of them together. Have a nice little pillow fight. It does bite. feel good though. It I like does. that. All right, what's so special about this fan? Okay, so this fan is more than just a fan. It's a humidifier, it's a light, and it's a misting fan as well. It wow. works with wow. water. So all you have to do, this one is already on, and then you have the mist just come right out of it. It's well, nice and portable. Turn, oh, yep, oh, turn oh, it on right it. there at the bottom, and oh. then that's your light. And then that is right there where the mist comes out of it. So this is great for taking with you to outdoor barbecues. Oh, oh yeah, look to at any the mist. Game. There you go. There's the mist. <laughs> right I, under nose. The mist, is, the mist is a little aggressive. It's aggressive mist. <laughs> but you can control the mist, right? So you can take it with you on the go. But think about this. Yes. It is so hot outside. If you have a barbecue, so keep one of if these you've got the a game. Exactly. Why are we not giving these to Al who's outside at the block party? I'm going to buy this for Jason. <laughs> give this. Jason needs this. Does that feel good? There we go. Let's get a real there right now. See? That. Who loves you, Jay? <laughs> Who loves you? He's going to drop the steady cam. He's all yeah. slippery now. <laughs> That's good stuff. And by the way, according to the brand, this will last for up to 36 hours, which is great. So if you're like going outside, spending a lot of time outside, kind of this will keep you nice and cool. It's aggressive. You can yeah. just turn it up. Use yeah. the night oh like that. There you go. Not want it. <laughs> what I is this, Mako? Great. Okay. So speaking of spending time outside, <laughs> if you are sunburned, then you definitely want to check out this product. So this is a nice mist. If you get your skin, get sunburned, this is formulated with amazing ingredients. We're talking about aloe, you can put this and mint. So this helps to alleviate and give you that hot relief, and you can use it all over. Over your face wow. or all over your body. So if you've been outside and you have maybe sunburn yeah. and you want that nice cooling relief, and better than the goopy gel you have exactly. to rub on. Exactly, and then yeah. you can just take That's it great. with you on the go, and it smells great too, right? Yeah. Uh, right. Should I spray it is on it, you? Yeah. No, oh, it does like smell that. nice. Okay, how about this last one? Is that right. is that Riri's brand? This is Rihanna. So if you wear makeup like I do in the summertime, oh then mm. it, chances are most likely that's the blotting powder, blotting paper. But what we're really talking about is this right here. We're going to talk about this Invisimat. If you get nice and hot in the summertime, then if you're wearing makeup, you definitely want to make sure that you absorb all of those oils, and you can do that with that Invisimat. And by the way, uh, Rihanna used this at the big game, mid oh, performance. She did. To make sure that her makeup was on fleek, it was on point. Sure so was. if Rihanna can use it, right. then you can definitely use it as well. So all you do is you just take a little bit of it. I'm a little shiny right now. Oh, and I not. like, oh, I not. am, just a little bit of that glow. And then it just absorbs all oh, of those oils. Oh, like and it has that. a compact oh. mirror as well. So you can take it with you on the go. Oh, you're right. Wow. I can tell a little bit of it. A little yeah. bit of a shine, yeah. right? Yeah. Look yeah. at that. Like you. Colored powder. That's Thank awesome. You. Good That's stuff. Right. Uh, yeah. For more on these items, you know what to do. Scan that QR code. Or you can go to today.com. Slash shop. Coming up, you guys, Al is still out there throwing a summer block party. We are all invited. We're going to check in with Mr. Roker and learn how to make the perfect, ooey, gooey, easy summer dessert. We will be right back on the third hour of today. He's still playing Cornell. <laughs>
In case you hadn't heard, our buddy Al Roker, uh, he's not here in studio with us this morning because he is throwing an epic summer block party, but he looks hot. Right out there. I know he does. He's taking over our plaza, and he's cooking with some of our favorite chefs. Al Roker needs that, by the way, yeah, Mr. Melvin. Right now, he has a sweet summer dessert to take your own block party to another level. Al, you all right out there? Oh, we're doing great, guys. I mean, we're having a great time. We've got so many of our great friend chefs. It's a perfect way to celebrate the best parts of summer, thanks to our sponsor, Good & Gather, only available at Target. Join me right now, milk bar owner and dessert queen, Christina Tosi, going to show us how to make a summertime skillet cookie. I love this. I mean, who doesn't love a skillet Come cookie on. for the summertime? Woo! So for me, baking has a place uh -huh. at a block party, yes. 100%. Brought this recipe with me today because, like, you can feel the energy out here, sure. right? Like, yeah. it's convivial, it feels like a reunion, there's togetherness, and you don't want to spend all your time hiding out in the kitchen prepping, no. right? No. You can do so this and then bring it out you later. You can do this, you can buy store bought, like, there's so many ways around mm -hmm. it. I'm gonna show you how we get it done from scratch. Oh, my good You're friend, my Craig cookie Melvin monster, right? right? My friend oh, looks, my friend looks warm. Oh, there, there you go. All right, buddy, keep going. What do you there think? Is I like there it. You go. Very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> Craig's always got your back. Yes. Okay, so we're gonna start with two sticks of butter. Okay. You're gonna give me a little light brown sugar. Okay. I'm gonna go granulated sugar in the mix. It's a nice little combo. This is gonna be a chocolate chip based cookie, so oh, I like nice. a little light brown sugar, a little mm -hmm. granulated sugar. If you were gonna go more of like a fruity sugar cookie vibe, I'll go all granulated sugar. Okay. The sugars really help set the tone of the flavors that are gonna come after. From there, we're gonna scrape down the bowl. Right. It takes one egg and a whole lot of vanilla extract. Mm. The secret to any great chocolate chip uh, cookie, by the way. You wanna get on vanilla? Okay. I'll go egg in the mix. You can make this dough ahead of time, which is really great. Oh, that's we terrific. also make this cookie dough and we sell it at Target. Oh my god. You can get a cornflake chocolate chip marshmallow cookie dough or a fruity cereal Woo. cookie dough. So different strokes for different I folks. like that. And then it's dry ingredient time. Okay. So we're gonna do the normal dry ingredients first. Okay. Flour, okay. salt, baking powder, baking soda. Right. A any particular order you no, like? Just all in the just mix here. The mix. I mean, do you want a job? I feel like I, I, you could work at the milk bar some days kitchen. I need one. We'd hire you. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Look at this man. He's pay, taking control. Pay me in cookies. So here's a real, go for it. Okay. Here's a real tip for a cookie like this. If you're going to make a cookie and add a bunch of fun stuff at the end, right. you add your basic dry ingredients first. You bring your dough together just to what I call it shaggy, so it's uh -huh. not all the way mixed. So that stays nice and fudgy and dense. Right. And then you add what I call the fun stuff. Okay. So cornflake crunch, marshmallows, mm. chocolate chips, right? Mm. It's salty, it's sweet, it's a Got whole lot of energy. And then everything goes in the mix because we know we still have mixing to go. Right. So adding this stuff into the dough is going to give us texture and goo and personality. Okay, so we're mixing And then our dough. you pull out the skillet. Mm -hmm. So this skillet has been preheated. You can make the skillet cookie in an oven, okay. 350, or hand it to the person man in the grill. Oh my god. Or gosh. woman in the person in the grill, right? The grill. So you preheat the skillet to get right. a nice crust on the bottom of your cookie. It goes straight into a seasoned skillet. Grease it if you don't have sure. a seasoned skillet. And all you do is you take your spatula and you spread, spread it, out. it out just so it reaches the end. And then you go fun stuff. So whatever you think meets the personality of the cookie you're trying to make. Mm -hmm. There you go. Oh, I like the salty sweet. The salty sweet we've cookies. got. So these cookies are our super crunchy cookies. Mm. They're new to the aisles of the grocery store. That's brown butter chocolate chip okay. to bring the flavor personality. Look at him. He's it's like, like a give me pizza. a cookie. I've been ah. out here all day. All right. So milkbarstore.com, we got all the recipes mm. for you. We got all the cookie energy for your That's summer fantastic. block party. All right, we got to go back to our pals at the third hour today. Next commercial, guys, you come out, get some cookies. Fantastic. Yes, sir. Yeah, I so, want some. Okay. Okay, so anyway. That party's just getting started, by the way. It's still going to continue over on today all day. Hey, guys, if Mr. Roker's going to be out there for a little while, so go check him out if you're in the city. In the guys, plaza. stick around. We'll be right back on the third hour today.
Sobo, Savannah, always good to have you. This is so much always fun. Always good. Pleasure. For Thank you, us. Mr. Melvin. By the, remember, uh, by the way, remember to check out Al Summer Block Party. It's today.com slash block party. Or you can just watch it on Today All Day on Peacock or your smart TV. Tomorrow here on the third hour, singer Renee Rapp Ooh. here to perform out on the plaza. That's going to be fun. All right, coming up, though, on Hoda and Jenna, the viral TikToker who's become a DIY sensation. You are not going to want to miss that. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. reclaiming and reframing their lives by throwing themselves divorce parties. We'll explain the new trend. And meet the popular TikToker whose brilliant DIY ideas have made her one of our fave follows. And our friend Alejandro Ramos whips up a tasty treat, homemade empanadas. So it's today with Hoda and Jenna. It all starts right now. Hey, 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 guys. Welcome. It is Thursday. It is July the 27th. Hey, 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 hey. Guys. Hello, hello. How are we? How What's are you? What's going on? Are you happy that Thursday is here? Which I am. means Friday is close. Oh. And summer is just swinging I've decided by. decided each week to take part of one day. Yes. And carving it out for things that I need to and want to do. Yes. Because I feel like we work this part of the day like every parent. Yes. And then you immediately get home and then you work that shift and then it's bedtime. And then you just keep doing it and doing it. And then you wonder why on Thursday or Friday you're, you're totally white. out of juice and you can't function. I know. So I decided that Thursdays was going to be my magical day. Thursday is the day that if I need a manicure, it, yeah. it's blocked off in my calendar. Yes, that's so good. What do you block like, it? Um, just like what it's does a it meeting. Say? It just Hoda's says meeting yeah, just, with herself. Yeah, just <laughs> so that way I can do in that chunk of time. And I ask that nothing gets in there, even if you're like, oh, but it's yeah. the only time. It's as if it's it's if it's it's as if it's it's sacred. Yeah. So last Thursday, I went to go see a Broadway show, which I haven't done in forever, and I saw Shucked. Shut is so fun. I went with my friend Soraya, that's her in the back, and Brittany, and that's her husband, uh, Mike, who's um, uh, one of the head Producers. honchos on that. Yeah. Was it amazing? I not, I, first of all, I did not expect it to be what it was, which is, first of all, a whole show about corn. That's so you're hard like, to how could that pitch. be? Yeah. It is so funny that, you know, usually in Broadway shows when you laugh, you're like chuckling and chortling <laughs> at some joke that seems like it's from a, a million years ago. Yeah. Like, it seems like a, one of those kind of like yuck, <laughs> yuck, yuck. <laughs> yeah. This one's really funny. And the music is crazy good. Like, I wanted to download the soundtrack afterwards. Yeah, that's so fun. And it's country, it's like, it's got a country vibe, but it's also got a ballady vibe. You're like standing O's in the middle of the show. It was like wow. that kind of a thing. Was so it packed? Is everybody going packed. to see it? It was funny as could be. It had a ton of t Tony noms. Oh, it did, it So did. I feel like yes. it's probably the hot ticket. But it's hot. Anyway, if you want to go see a show on Broadway, that's a fun one. It's light, it's delightful, it makes you happy. Yeah. It's got some saucy jokes, I don't think it's squeaky clean, but it's Fun. Okay, fun I have got to go see it. I was supposed to go too. Yes, that same night. Yes, and then and then you got busy not spending time taking time for yourself. Remember? You're right. You did something. I else. didn't program yes. myself the way yeah. that you program yeah. yourself. But I think it's good, even if it's just for an hour. Totally. A week. Like this hour is non-negotiable. And it could just be taking a nap or yes. reading a book. It doesn't need something to be something. Something. Regulate. Big. Just regulate, regulate, regulate your business. Regulator. Get it. Okay, what you got? Um, okay, so there's a football star. Y'all know him. His name is Travis Kelsey. He recently decided to shoot his shot with Taylor Swift at one of her concerts. So he goes to the concert. 
He wears a bracelet. You know, all those, you know, you'd swap all the bracelets yeah. at Taylor Swift's concerts. Yes. This one had his phone number on the bracelet. So his master plan was to give her the bracelet. To give her the bracelet. And, and then she'd read the number and dial it yes. and text him. But this is what actually happened. Take a listen. If you're up on uh, Taylor Swift concerts, there are friendship bracelets, and I received a bunch of them being there, but I wanted to give Taylor Swift one with my number on it. Not right now. Ooh, yeah. your number's in 87 or your phone number? You know which one. Um, <laughs> so she, did, she doesn't meet anybody, and she doesn't, or at least she didn't want to meet me. So I, um, I took a personal. <laughs> That's him and his brother, by the way, yeah, on that podcast. And remember, they were both in the Super Bowl. Very cute. And their mom went. So cute. But he's, isn't that funny that he decided he was going to give it a go? Yeah. That was, that's cool. I know. If I were Taylor, I might be listening and being like, hmm. hmm. Maybe. Because it wasn't such a dramatic, I think um, because of like the way the world is with reality television and The Bachelor being, you know, hot tub mm -hmm. moments and rose petals and helicopters. Yeah, too much. Sometimes the gestures that are too grand are, are kind of good. gross. Yeah, I agree. Cheesy. I think too much is not good. There's that. There's that analogy that says when a water faucet is dripping, you lean under to capture the drops. And when it's gushing, you sort of back up like, whoa, it's like someone who full court presses yeah, with too totally. many bells and whistles. It's like, when it gushes, you're like, you're getting my hair, hair wet. wet. Come yeah. on. But when it's just, and you want, yeah. you don't want to be fighting for crumbs, but you do want to lean in a little. Yeah. You, you don't want it to be so plent. Nothing that's plentiful is like, you don't feel like it's coveted. It's like when you want, you know how everyone waits in lines yes. for toys? Like it's, you you gotta get the toy. Yeah, and, you know, it's a hot if toy. there were eight million toys, you know totally. who wants it? No Nobody. One. one time I waited on a rope line to get into a New York City club, and I remember the line was forever, and I was like, oh my God, what's in there? What's in there? What's in there? Finally, we got in. First of all, it was practically empty. Second of all, they had binoculars all over the place, so you were, it was like part of the gimmick of the place. And I was like, this is it? This is the long line? With like two more in, two more, just you two. And you get in and you realize like the whole it's thing not even that cool. was nothing, yeah. yeah. Okay, the headline is you went to a club. <laughs> Really? What do you wear to the club? What, I can't. What's wrong with this? I don't know. I just, oh. have, I, I just have stuff on me. I've been, I've been, I don't know. Something. She just happened. licked her hand and I know, wiped because herself. I'm, because I'm my own child. That's how. That do you do that with your kids? Do you go like this? Mila, I do. me, and you it's got some. so gross. It's and gross. I remember hating it when my mom and dad did it to me or What'd like they do? putting in a napkin. I mean, this isn't <laughs> just pretend it's a napkin. Yeah. And then wiping yes. yourself down. Yes. I would be like, Mom, mom don't. I it. Don't. And now you do it to your own <laughs> to children. To your own body. Well, or okay. yourself. Okay, let's talk about the Wait, Barbie movie. Hold on, can what? we just go back to yourself I went to at the club. club. Yeah, I go to club. Did I you stay to. at the club? Did you stay no, there? No, because it was dull as could be. I couldn't believe that that's what I was wearing to the clue. I don't I don't know what I wore. You know me. I don't know. Booty shorts. Oh. Um, okay, the Barbie movie. I don't know why I said that. Y'all, the Barbie movie is breaking so many records. Yeah. Y'all know that. Um, and of course, like, this is sort of what happens in our society. If one thing works, they want to green light a million toy films. films Barbie made this. Toys. Let's do a million toy so films. So you know what's coming? What's coming? Polly Pocket. I love Polly Pocket. Okay, Polly Pocket, the movie's coming. It's starring Lily Collins, mm -hmm. written and directed by Lena Dunham. Okay. So that's one. That sounds fun. There's also a Barney movie. That's in development. It's being described as surrealistic with comparisons to being John Malkovich. I guess it's not for children. Right? Barney is. I don't know that Poppy would get being John Malkovich, even though it's a great film. I'm not sure I would take Hal Hager to it. Okay, some other toys that could be coming. What about American Girl dolls? Magic 8 Ball or Uno? Uno? Yeah. How could you have Wait, an are Uno? these Wait, definitely what's the coming? Uno? Wait, Uno the movie? Correct. <laughs> Wait, we just played Uno. We actually played Cinderella Uno. Oh. There are special Uno ones that have different I just characters have on it. Uno. I love Do you have Uno Uno mega hits where you hit, hit it and it goes ch -ch -ch -ch, all the cards no. shoot out? Oh my god. What am I doing? Mega hits. It's on Amazon. You can get okay. it. Okay. But all the cards shoot out. So you don't know if you're getting zero cards or ten cards. Ooh, I'm scared of that. Yeah, it's good. I can't I want to see a movie on Teddy Rubskin. Remember him? Yes, of course. Look how cute he is. He is cute. And you could put the tape recorder in his back and he'd oh, read you nighttime stories. Read you nighttime stories. It basically was for lazy parents. <laughs> <laughs>
now that I'm thinking about it, it's for parents that didn't really want to read the nighttime story. <laughs> so you just press play so the That's teddy really bear funny. Read That's it. really funny. <laughs> All right, guys, coming up next, something for trivia buffs. We're playing a brand new game, and y'all can play too. I think it's going to be real fun right after this. <laughs> some pop culture fans in your house right this minute. Go get them, because we're going to play a brand new game. It's called Categories. Okay, and, and we need a host, so there's nobody better than our girl Donna. Hi. Fetching. Look how cute <laughs> I she is. I love that suit. Yes. Um, you can borrow it anytime. Yeah. I'm excited to start a new game. This is going to be fun. Here's how it's going to work. Over there, you will see a list of eight names in no particular order and okay. a category. Okay. So you will take turns guessing which name you think fits into that category. Okay. Okay? Got it. There will be five correct in each round. Mm hmm And once you get one correct, you'll get a point. It sounds really fun. I it reminds me of that game we used to play in the pool. Well, oh. in Connections. Connections on, at the we're New York Times. Oh, so Connections. Fun. We yeah, look forward to it. It's like it Wordle, day. but I know, I haven't done but it yet. I like that part of your I brain know. better yeah. than Wordle brain. Anyway. Okay. So let's start. I have a pen in hand because we're getting serious. Um, okay. Here are the names. The first category is multiple Oscar winners. Hoda, you're up first. Meryl so, Streep. So who? Yeah, oh, who's won more than correct. who's won who's more won, than yeah, one? Correct. Multiple. So um, Jenna, now you. I was just making um, Daniel Day Lewis. That is correct. Nice. Yes. Hoda. I'm gonna go with Pacino. Ooh, that is incorrect. Ooh. But he that's would have okay. worked for hot at his youth. Okay. Um, <laughs> Kate Winslet. Ooh, that is also incorrect, but I would have guessed I'm the same, go. Hoda. I'm going with Denzel. You are correct. It, how many more? Do One we... more, because there are three incorrect and five correct. Oh. Sally Field. That is correct. Okay, so we can get she one more. She likes me. They oh, like me. More? They really, really like me. Hoda? Oh, there's one more. I feel like it's going to surprise me. Jennifer Lawrence? Mmm. There's Brando. Incorrect. It's Brando. Yeah, you know, I thought it was one of those trick questions that you're like, did she win two? I can't remember. So can I so guess Jenna Brando? Brando? Did we all get that or no? Oh, no, we'll okay. go on to the next one. Next. Okay, so it's 2-2 two, two, tied. Okay, here are your eight names, and the next category this is, is kind of celebrities with siblings. Oh. Who's up first? So you have to guess, Jenna, you're up first. Which of these A-listers have brothers or sisters? Okay, well, I know my girl T. Swift has a bro. Yes, you are does. correct. Tony Braxton. Good one. Correct. Um, Tina Fey. Correct. Chris Hemsworth. Oh, Correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All three of them are hotties. One, two, three, so the last one is this. Mm hmm. Sandra O. Oh. That is correct. Nice. Oh. Yes. Great Good job. Good job. Way to go. That was great. Okay, so Jenna, you are in the lead 5-4. Nice. We good. have one more category. Here is your list. It's a fun, fun game. game. I know, it's fun, Why right? Why is this a real game, or is it? And the category is Song of the Year Winners. Oh, so you have winners. to guess which of these. Winners. Take take a beat, because this is tough. You have to guess oh. which of these songs. Okay, Hoda song goes first. Song one Song of the, of the Year oh, at the Grammy, Grammy winners. Yep. I won a Grammy yeah, for, for this song. song yeah. of the Year. Okay, I'm going to go with... Kiss from a Rose by Sea. You are correct. Wow, what a classic. Yeah, that's a good, good one. one. Go ahead. Um, okay, Jenna. Thinking Out Loud by Ed Sheeran. That is correct. Hoda. I'm going to go with Daughters, John Mayer. Yes. Wow. Wow. Hoda, you're getting the. You're good. Uh, you both are good. Okay, Jenna. Uh, Bad Guy by Billie Eilish. That is correct, yeah. yes. And such a good one. This okay, one hard. more, Hoda. This is hard, this is hard. A Grammy. Hoda, if you get this, it'll be tied. Wait, hang on. I think it's single and ladies. if you don't, Jenna, you're Grammy, you're a Grammy. Whistle 
I'm gonna go with single ladies, Beyonce. You are correct! Wow! And that means you Good both job. are tied, so you can share our crown. I'll put it right there to display okay. it for the oh. two of you. Thank you, that was so and much that's fun. fun. That's a fun, a fun day. That was a come back. Yeah. I love that, thanks Donna. All right, coming up next, some women are doing what they're doing to turn the page on their past and start a brand new chapter coming up right after this. Thank you, Donna, that that's was fun. fun. That's the similar. Coming up tomorrow. Lizzo, Selena Gomez, Tracy Ellis Ross, what these stars are up to on social media. Then it's sheer perfection when we show you how to wear summer's hottest trend. Plus, the performance by rising country star Ashley Cook. That's all Friday on Hoda and Jenna. Welcome to today. Every day. We are adding to the star power in our studio. The biggest names, only on today. See, we're coming in this early, right? Hey, buddy, it's today. Like I won the lottery. How do you feel at this age, this stage? Liberated. We're just getting started, folks. Ain't no stuff with us now. <laughs> the boys are back in town. The boys are back in town. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. This has been fantastic. Everything and everyone you're talking about, only on today. Okay, whether you've been, <laughs> been through a divorce or you know somebody who has, it's never easy for anybody involved. And instead of dwelling on the past, a lot of women are doing something interesting. They're embracing their brand new future. Yeah, they sure are, and they're doing it in a very unique way. Take a look. They mark the end of one chapter, but more importantly, the beginning of another. We're talking divorce parties, and women are throwing them. My name is Brandy Stellers. And I'm recently divorced. After all of that stress, I wanted to take something about this tragedy and make it exciting to move forward. My divorce party, I had just a simple little house party. I bought a fictitious dress and I hung it up outside so that when my friends came, they could paint on it. These are powerful messages on something that symbolized what once was. And it really did help. I mean, all of my friends came and I, I look at them in, in such a beautiful light because they're there for me, not only for this party, but for the future. My name is Nicole Sedoma. My own experience with divorce was the most eye-opening. There's this roller coaster of freedom and grief that comes with divorce. Nicole celebrated her newfound freedom with a party of her own and purchased her dream car. There's such relief when you get to the other side and being able to embrace this new chapter, you have the ability to control what that looks like. I'm Allison, I was married for two years and I'm now divorced for officially one year. Post-divorce, had a lot of loss of sense of self and confusion about who I was and life pushed me around a little bit. I didn't have any say on what was happening to me in a lot of ways. And I just thought it didn't have to be a shameful thing that I failed. I just want to start laughing again. And I thought nothing funnier than a divorce party. And so we had it in the city at my friend's apartment. I invited just a bunch of my close friends who had been there during the whole process. And we kind of just had like a really fun funeral. And it was, it was great. It just reminded me that like fun still exists. In the end, or should we say the beginning, this is less about the party itself and really about women choosing to look ahead. I wanted to be able to take control of my own story, my own narrative. I don't think about it as celebrating divorce. I think about it as um, celebrating the ability to get through 
this really hard time in your life, but also a lot of freedom to make the decisions that I was that I thought was right for my children and for me. I got married again eventually. That was very exciting. That's when I started kind of finding peace with what happened, and it really was because of the party. It kind of was like dominoes fell into place, and I think that was like the catalyst of like me entering my new life. With us now is Allison McWhite, whom you just saw in the piece, mm -hmm. and Lane Florensheim, who wrote about the divorce parties for the Wall Street Journal. You guys, this is so yeah. interesting. Yeah. Um, I know that this party wasn't like anti-marriage, mm -hmm. anti-men. It was just about a new beginning. Did mm -hmm. you feel like it helped you find that? Definitely. I think it just helped me get ownership of the experience again. Like I mentioned, it just felt like so much was happening without my say in it. And it was my first time getting a sense of control of the situation, I think, telling the truth in a weird way, where I was kind of, you know, you forget it's happening to you, you don't want to admit it's happening to you, and yeah. the party kind of says, it's real, it's happening, it's in your face, and you kind of just have to own it. Yeah. Um, and I think it just, again, just brought me a lot of ownership to the experience. That's so, it, it is interesting, because I think a lot of times you find yourself that you've lost yourself. You think you found your other half, but really, in reality, you didn't have a voice after that. Yeah. And I get how that would be. And also, you're on this road, and you think, well, I might as well just keep going, because yeah. I'm on the road. Right. It's so easy to stay in something than it is to leave it. It's much harder to look at it and say, I was wrong, and change your mind. And I think in a marriage, you're mm -hmm. for so long making choices with somebody else, you forget to have your own in a way. You rely on their other half to lift you up. And then you're out of it. There's so much choice in your face again. Like, do you yeah. really want this in your life? Do you want the blue shutters? Do you want any of these things? Right, you, you get to decide. Yeah, you, you have, have to, to re-ask yourself all uh -huh. these questions. Uh -huh. And it's really fun, it's, I think. Um, Lane, you've studied this topic. You've researched it for this piece. And you're way out in front, yeah. by the way. You were talking about this before yeah, this was trending. Yeah, we've been studying it for a year or mm -hmm. something, researching it. First of all, how did you come to the topic and what did you learn about it mm -hmm. by writing this article? You know, I had a couple of friends who were talking about getting divorce, having divorce parties, and they didn't end up doing that. But it made me curious about the trend and yeah. curious about who was doing doing it. Um, and the first time I kind of tried to research the article, I had a hard time finding subjects. But then, mm -hmm. you know, over the months, I saw more people like Allison on TikTok yeah. and more <laughs> people on Instagram. And I think I think it really is gaining popularity. And, you know, what I found was what um, some of the subjects uh, just said right now is that it's not so much about, you know, bashing anyone or celebrating divorce, but it's about celebrating a new chapter and surrounding yourself with, you know, your most loved ones, your best friends, um, after you go through something emotionally exhausting and difficult. It does yeah. seem very girl powery. I totally. mean, once you're watching it, you realize you're not by yourself. You don't have to go it alone. You have a, yeah. a good group Try. of friends. I think cool. it reminds you that love is still there with yeah. our partners. But just in different ways. Different, different ways. You forget about it. You forget those other routes of love and friendship and connection. You forget that it still exists without a partner. Can we mention life. that three of your friends that yeah, were there are. are here right now? <laughs> because your posse <laughs> says your house, of course. Of course they are. Well, we're going to have more of this conversation yeah. in just a second. Reframing divorce coming up right after this. Be 
you a good day. Okay, back now with more of our conversation about reframing divorce. Allison McWhite is a recent divorcee. Uh, Lane Florsheim is a Wall Street Journal reporter who wrote about the topic of divorce parties. And joining the couch here, Natalia <laughs> Juarez is the breakup coach and the founder of Loveistics. Loveistics. How are you? By the way, I do think this is important to have a coach through this because often when people go through divorce, it happens and you're like, your life was a certain way. It totally changed and people are like, move on. Go ahead, move on. But you actually need coaching and yes. work. Tell us what are the main questions that you get asked or how you help your people. Wow. Well, so often people don't even know where to start. Yeah. Thank you for saying that because yeah. that was how initially I got into this work was having to piece together a lot of the resources that I felt I needed at the time. Mm -hmm. And once I went through it, I naturally started helping my friends and then they yeah. started recommending me to their friends. Mm -hmm. um, so Allison, what, were there things that you did that helped you? I mean, other than the party, <laughs> but other things that you found that were just helped you in the, a time of grieving? Because obviously you're grieving. It's a loss. It's yeah. a loss. Yeah, I think giving yourself mercy and like grace to grieve. I mean, letting yourself sit in it for a few months and investing in your friendships. I think I let myself sit in it for months and the party came and then mm -hmm. it was a restart for myself. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of grace, I think. What do you think um, women need the most when they are when they go through a divorce? What's the first thing they need that they would not think of off the top of their head? Oh, wow. Well, I always recommend a holistic plan that's based on four pillars. You need self-care, you need the grief work to process the loss. Then you also need to focus on rebuilding your life, mm -hmm. which is a huge project. And then you need some joy and pleasure in your life to offset a lot of that difficulty. Yeah, yeah well, the joy and pleasure, I think that that is really what these parties are sort of about. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, as you were talking with all of these people that were throwing the parties lane, did you find that that the just the being with girlfriends, mm -hmm. like the simple act of that and mm -hmm. of having joy and of laughter helped heal. Mm -hmm. Definitely, I mean, I think that's a huge part of it. And what was kind of funny in working about on the article is it was so much easier to find female subjects than male subjects. Yeah. And I ended up talking to a man who. Um, attended his female friend's divorce party and he said it was like being a fly on the wall at a bachelorette party. Mm. But he also said, you know, in terms of why men don't throw these as much, he's like, I think women are much better at celebrating and guys just call a divorce party, let's go get drinks again. Yeah, you know? mm -hmm. yeah so, totally. Yes. Well, it's funny because you have this party because you're celebrating your freedom and all of those things, but then comes Sunday, the next day, yeah. and you wake up and you're by yourself in your house and now you're trying to put the pieces together. Yes. I think it's important to, to give yourself grace. Like, yeah. you can grieve. Yeah. You don't have to bounce back. Everyone's like, I got someone to set yes. you up with. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Rituals are so important. <laughs> You know, we have this big celebration to celebrate the start of a marriage, but we equally need a ritual to mark the end of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, the other thing that's changed is obviously there was stigma yeah. around mm -hmm. divorce for so long, maybe still a little bit. Yes. Um, did you, does that also, I mean, did you have to kind of battle that yourself, Allison, mm -hmm. and be like, okay, I'm not a failure. This is not a failed thing. I think that was the goal of the divorce party. I think also sharing it online was the goal to remove the shame from it. Yeah. I think that a lot of people whisper about divorce and it shouldn't be whispered about. I mean, it's not a failure. Um, and I think you should take pride in it because it's, it's a success. Uh, your TikTok it. went wildly crazy. It's viral. <laughs> yeah. Why do you think that was? What can I, I You know, I, I think women just liked seeing someone else be loud about their experience because I think often your failures are hidden and I think that they just love seeing ownership of the experience. Again, I think that they just needed someone to show them that they could talk about it, be proud of it, take pride in it even, um, and not be embarrassed about it. When do you advise yes. people to, to date after divorce? Like, what's, what's some <laughs> advice da going down that wow. road? Well, it, it always depends on the circumstances because often the divorce has perhaps been in the works for years. Mm -hmm. So sometimes by the time a divorce happens, people are ready, like Allison, to celebrate. Yeah. You've it, already, yeah, you've already, yes. it, it died a long time right. ago. You just stayed yes. in it. And like Jenna was saying, I think a lot of people stay in marriages because they think they can make it work. Yeah. I can do it. I don't give up. I'm not a quitter. When real, sometimes you just can't put a circle in a square. It yeah. doesn't work exactly. like that. That's just, as, and that's exactly it about reframing divorce is that it doesn't have to be a failure or about a broken family or broken vows. It can actually be a necessary ending, a natural conclusion to a successful marriage. Yeah. Yeah. How are you uh, feeling? now, Allison? Great. I think it's, it's actually been exactly a year to this month oh, since wow. the divorce happened. Uh -huh. And I think that since the party happened, since owning it, and since 
just, again, grieving it, taking pride in it, and reframing it as a success, not a failure. I've, I've just been, again, proud of it and happy it happened, grateful it happened even. Um, it's so yeah. interesting yeah. how owning your own story and yeah. telling the truth can change yeah. everything. Yeah. I, yes. I, that's what I meant by saying the party was the first time to tell the truth in a yeah. long, long time, mm -hmm. I think, those months of just grieving. Mm -hmm. you, you have fun friends, too, by yeah. the way. Yeah, I do have fun friends. By the way, the I do party have fun also friends. looked like it was fun. We yeah. would have liked to I barely really remember it, so I think it was a good time. Yeah. All right, guys, Thank you all so much. We appreciate you guys Thank so much. You. Thanks. Coming up next, y'all, we're joining Al in the big blog party. It's live streaming right now on the plaza. We're going to cook. We're going to get in all the fun coming up right after this. My chef friends here. This is the ultimate summer block party, and we're we're here for it. I know, and now you invited us, which we yes. appreciate. Oh, Have yeah. you been eating some delicious things? We've been eating. We've had such a good time. Uh, this party is being presented by Good and Gather, available at Target. Uh, Alejandra walked us through a mini muffaletta sandwich <laughs> earlier. Now she's got another great grab and go for a block yeah. party: empanadas. Empanadas. And the QR yes. code's got all the ingredients you need. Oh, all right. You can so, this. Show us, all So we are starting with our savory empanadas. And we're keeping it vegetarian. We're doing some sautéed spinach and onions. And you uh -huh. put it in the pan, really simple. And then we add our cheese. Yeah. Oh. I like to do two types what kinds what of cheese. What types? So we've got crumbled feta because that gives it that nice salty bite. Yeah. And then the, the mozzarella gives it the cheesy pull, which Did is what everybody Did you know that Jenna's loves. nickname was Salty Bite? <laughs> I do love so some you, cheese. You mix, I make, you mix it up a little bit neater than I've been doing. <laughs> no, it looks good. And it's then just, what? It's lemon? a nice and a little bite. lemon. And then we squeeze that lemon juice in. You can also add a little fresh lemon zest. Okay. Gives it not, lots of great, bright flavor. Nice. I love, this is kind of like, have you ever had spanakopita? Yeah. So this is kind of a little grab and go version of that. Okay, what is that? And now, so we've prepped our, we're prepping our fillings here. So we've got the savory filling ready. Now this is guava paste. Oh. You know I love my, yes, yeah, so no? guava. Well, I'm Puerto Rican and I we know guava. Are, I love guava. guava. Guava and cheese as a dessert. Oh, we yeah. call it Romeo and Julieta, Romeo and Julieta, because it's salty sweet. And uh, so you start off with the guava paste, and all you want to do is cut it. it in little slices, just like little pieces. And if you can't find guava paste, you can do any kind of sweet jam will work well for this. Okay. So strawberry, cherry, yep. tropical, pineapple, whatever you can find. But you want something about this size, not okay. too, too big. All right, then we are moving on to our pie crust. So, oh, you just buy a pie crust? Yes. Yeah. That's great. Store bought pie crust. So much easier. Oh yeah. my God, it's, it's too hot. It's too hot. It's too summertime. Hot for this. Come on. Not yet. First, we want to cut out the forms. Right? So then oh, we've got, yeah, so we cut it out wash. first. Well, no, actually, the egg wash doesn't belong there. Oh, oh. Okay, let's the egg wash, that. We'll bring it's the egg wash happened. over here. Oh, we're going to bring it over here. <laughs> yeah, here oh, there's some yeah. over there already. Yeah, yeah. 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 we'll have a brush. Okay. Well, actually, you know okay. what? We can give me the spinach. You can give me that spinach filling. Let me give you we go. Take this. There we go. You do that. <laughs> As a team. Put a little yeah. spinach in there. Okay. All right, let's make let's make those guava and cheese empanadas over here. What kind of cheese do you use, Kat? All right, so for this, I'm doing cream cheese. Yes, and the cream cheese is like, got it's got that nice sort of salty uh, mix, and it's also just melts. It's so good in that mm -hmm. soap. And then you put your little guava That's right there it? on top. Yeah, so simple. And it literally, it's literally guava. The recipe is the name. 
then you brush it with your little egg wash right on the side. Yeah. You gotta glue that down. Yeah. Bounds it over, right? Pinch and you it. can you can pinch it. And there's so many. I mean, you could do a fancy. Look, fold. I did this one. Were you happy with that? I like the little press. But here's what. Here's the trick too. You take your uh, your fork and yeah. crimp it, and that's oh, gonna really lock in oh, the. Look at, uh, wait, the look face. how. How did you do this? Do look at this. This one. Yeah. So did you is, do that? This I. I did yeah. not do that one. But <laughs> <laughs> that's our our fancy culinary team here did that one. But that is another option. So you can fold it. And what actually a really good tip too is because when you're doing savory and sweet empanadas, uh -huh. you want people to be able to know what's inside. Uh. So this is like a fun tip for you guys. Right. I like doing a little bit of food coloring and you can just kind of brush like, so for example, this is like the green food coloring, so we'll put it on the spinach and you could just do like a little swipe that there. Means, oh, so this is so spinach, that, that's and, spinach this is... and this is the guava. So you can put a little pink food coloring oh, and that makes, especially when you've got a big crowd, that just makes it really easy to kind of grab and go. Uh -huh. And so everybody knows what's inside without constantly being like, hey, what's Should this one? one of these? Mm -hmm. Al, do you yeah. want one? Sure. You like that? Yeah. Which kind? Sweet or savory? I'll go with uh, sweet. Sweet. I love a sweet one. Yeah. Oh my God. Oh, yummy. Wow. Good. Really good. They're so good. It's such mm. a fun dessert. Like I grew up eating these. This is like a classic. Sometimes as a kid, I would literally just eat the guava and the cheese, not even wait for the empanada. Why? This is Why? so delicious. So what was your summer tradition growing up? We we just had, what did we do? Ran through a spring floor and ate watermelon? I don't know. I love it. That's how I do my weekends still. <laughs> I know. I'm like, what did I eat? Um, popsicles. Oh, yes. And frozen grapes. Oh, oh yes. That's a good one. Super Very easy. Good. I love like that. that. That's you know, sometimes too. when I, like my first job, I used to walk to work on summer mornings eating a popsicle to stay cool. Yeah, yeah. I love breakfast. it. Gotcha. Breakfast. Well, guys, you can catch Alejandra on season two of the Great American Recipe on PBS, uh, Great American Recipe on PBS. And for these recipes and all the recipes from my block party, just scan the QR code right here with your Al, smartphone. You're, uh, you've been on the air since 7 a.m. Yeah. It is now almost 11 Eastern, and you're going to keep going? How much longer is this block party? Uh, I think around uh, 1, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Wait, what? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> Okay. It, I was it like, out, drink some water. Next, guys, it, it, we're going to meet our newest day <laughs> follows. TikTok's upcycling queen coming up after this. But for those of you who are on all day, after the break, a double dutch lesson from the elite Brooklyn jumpers. Ooh, I wow. wish you guys were staying. I'd love to I see know, that 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 well, oh, yeah. you. Perfect activity <laughs> for any block party. Stay Bye. with us. Y'all know we always love to tell you about some cool people we're loving on social media, so it's time to introduce you to our latest fave follow. Her name is Sarah Terrence. Nick Terrence. Tara Sinski. Yes, she got a TikTok or account. Sarah T, yes. It's called Redux, uh, Redux Style, and she's going to show us some easy upcycling projects in just a moment. But first, why don't we take a look at how she became a DIY queen? This is absolutely one of my favorite ways to start a gallery wall. Sarah Tarasinski has been DIYing and upcycling way before it became cool. Time for an upcycle combined with one of my favorite lighting hacks. Check it out. Almost two decades ago, Sarah was a single mom in Texas trying to clothe her two-year-old daughter and taught herself to sew dresses out of curtains and old concert tees. And her skills took off from there. And boom, done, easy as that. Some thrifted pieces of a file folder that I got for two bucks. At a friend's suggestion, she started posting her projects to TikTok in 2019 with few expectations until her account, Redo Style, 
went viral with her ingenious transformation of old ceiling fan blades. Now I've got two up, I'm gonna do one more, so I've got three. Now with her can-do attitude and projects that are chic, accessible, and eco-friendly, Sarah is teaching her hundreds of thousands of followers that you can easily be stylish and sustainable. You're brilliant. I mean, that's brilliant. crazy. Okay, let's start with showing a before photo of a piece of furniture that you actually flipped. Yes. On flipped Tuesday. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You upcycled it. I did. And, and wow, what happened to it? Let's see. What, what did you do to it? Well, listen, I wanted to make it so basic anyone can do it. Yeah. So, of course, we sanded it. We painted it. Peel and stick wallpaper. New what? handles. And I use these little, these little, they're planter sticks yeah. for your garden. A friend of mine did this oh. with a table, and I was like, oh, that's so cool if we put those on there and right. create, you know. You so you're gonna show us this? the final piece. Oh, oh my word. I know. Isn't it so Very cute? Very really beautiful. Cute. So I have this deal in my front entry. I have a dresser, and I use it. I put my kids' shoes in it, and I just oh, have, that's I a like, good idea. We did it in. Why not? Get everything out Dresser, of the way. That's a great Entry. idea. Yeah. And I like how hardware made a big yes. statement. Yes. Just redoing the hardware, that's an easy sort of thing. Totally easy. And the holes that were already there, you don't have to fill them in, just cover them with peel and stick. So if you're not like Wanting super to, into the DIY. By the way, yeah. All, yeah. just even in that piece, all your ideas are so clever. That's Using the binder. And making that wine that, thing. You're so smart. Okay. <laughs> okay. We're going to okay. now, this is, I feel like this was a lovely one for us because you are going to yes. make a... A what is this called? Yes. A flower pot. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yes. So this is a book I have from home. I love using book jackets as art. Here, you're here with your book. Okay. Okay, and I'll be here. Mm -hmm. So here's the deal. I am a huge fan of reading, and I'm a huge fan of using books to decorate with. That's okay. a cute idea. So what I did is I took this book cover, this book jacket that mm -hmm. I like, right. because you can still keep the book. You want to keep right. it nice. Right. But then I just wrapped it around yeah. the vase. You guys, it's so easy. Easy, and you take your favorite book. You take your favorite. So do you want to make sure you buy a vase? Look, it fits well, perfectly. We trimmed a touch oh. of the top and bottom of the well this one just a touch and yours just a touch and then you guys you just take a little bit of tape so we're gonna start can we use hot glue you, oh you could but then you want you wouldn't be able to use the book jacket again you know what I mean oh, like this it might, is, oh you're, you're doing this just for temporary jacket. yeah temporary and then you could pull it off so you just tape it you know oh, what it'd be really cute Hoda like if I was gonna throw you a book party yeah oh thank you yes or a, oh, that's all it does. a little book party Anything. this would be a cute thing to do or if you're you know having a birthday party for kids and it's all book themed Yes, and you could do it all over the you tables. Make this. Or you could use a plastic like. By the way, oh, a cool idea. By the way, yes. you're so smart. Where do these ideas come from? They just pop put in your head. Wait, wait, underneath, put, your, put flowers? your flowers in, guys. Yeah. Oh, what? Of course. There you go. Ta da! Oh. Ta da! They're just there. Yes, cute. Okay. So, love. Ideas come from finding things and using things yeah. that just trying to be resourceful, yeah. right? So, here are some coasters and a cutting board. Again, the kitchen. I like to keep my yes. cookbooks in there, but I don't want to stack them on the no. counter. So, take a cutting board. Wait, you what? These are coasters. Coasters. Oh, coasters. And I bet you can find those for really you cheap, can. but you're just using what you already have yeah. at home. Or you can just hit a craft store or sometimes yeah. thrifting. Yeah. So, glue them together. Right. And then, y'all, you put a little glue, you know. And a glue gun. And if you, the I love glue, a glue gun. I know. You gotta be careful, though, because you can hurt yourself. So just pop them there and there. Yeah. Oops. Can I do that okay? Yeah. Are you happy with mine? Yeah. Yes. Good enough. I got Good a enough. little crunchy. That's all right. We'll do it for sake of TV. And then okay. you go right there. And put this on top? Yeah. And you go right here. Wow, it's satisfying to use a this glue gun. This is so cray. Can I do this one yeah. too? Yeah. I think we got a little piece. I haven't used it. Let me get that out of the way. That's okay. Just like that. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. And just like that. <laughs> okay, and, and then, then you let it dry, and then you, you can... let it dry, and you can put your books in between. By the way, Gosh. it's called redo. It is, yeah, redo. redo. It is. I know. You are awesome. All the things you've done, great ideas. Can we officially add you to our fave follows <gasps> yes. list? The best. Some great the ideas. The best. All okay. right. Thank you. We'll be back right after this. Thanks, ladies. Good idea.
coming up tomorrow, a performance by country artist Ashley Cook. And Laura Batali, she's going to cook something delicious. What is All right, it? I think it's going to be a one-pan dish. Today's Thursday, tomorrow's Friday. the first of what we're hoping is many. I'm Al Roker. Of course, block parties are an American tradition, and for the first time ever, we're going to host our own right here on the Today Plaza, thanks to our good sponsor, Good and Gather, only at Target. Next two hours, we're cooking up an epic party featuring 10 chefs right here, like this, serving uh, 16 delicious recipes for a crowd. We got uh, Adam Richman. He's going to be whipping up pulled pork, egg rolls. J.J. Johnson is grilling Black party bites. The queen of dessert, Christina Tosi, will share her must have summertime treats. Plus, fun and games, everything you need to host the perfect summer celebration. You want to follow along with the fun? Just scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen with your smartphone for all the recipes and more. All right, so guys, to your stations, and we got, we're going to start off with uh, Alejandra right now. So, of course, you know Alejandra Ramos. You've seen her here today and on her show. Okay, break, everybody, break. They're going to go play cornhole. And I want to find out how did it get named cornhole? Because it just sounds weird. I don't know that one. That's yeah. right. Sounds her, a little weird. Her, her show, uh, The Great American Recipe on PBS. And so you're making something kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, the the Mufaletta, which is, we've heard of. Yes, heard down, in, down in New Orleans. These are a New Orleans classic and fave. But you're and making baby Mufaletta. You, yeah, usually they're about this big. Right, but huge. since it's a block party, we want to keep them kind of small for grab and go. That's right. right. Okay. Also, you want to be able to enjoy all the treats. Yes. I don't want to fill up on just one sandwich. So for this, the key thing about the muffaletta is the olive salad, uh -huh. right? So that's kind of like the spread. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make it in a food processor. We're right. starting with, with some uh, um, stuffed olives, like right. the green ones. Like or the also, olives. Yes, exactly. Uh, then we're also going to do some of these kalamatas. But okay. honestly, you can do a mix of whatever olives you have. Sure. Just make sure no pits. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we're also going to do some capers. I right. love capers. These are briny. They're uh -huh. salty. Some pepperoncini okay. peppers, garlic. Of course. You know, I don't Not do recipes garlic. without garlic. And then this is giardinera. So these are, it's an Italian mix of pickled vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's oh, so delicious. Those. You buy this in a jar, uh -huh. so good on its own. But we're adding it here and it's going to add a lot of like this nice mm. tangy, yep. briny bite. We've got some olive oil, some lemon juice. That all goes in there. And what's great is like, honestly, these are jars basically, mm -hmm. right? So it's a bunch of jars into the food processor. You can do this by hand if you prefer, because then right. you can, um, you can like pan chop it. Right. You really want the little coarse. I'm having a little trouble here, Mr. Roker. Let's see. <laughs> Get it. Okay, but you, 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 you know, well, you know, you know how food processing works. So you go, use that pulse button, you go to chop, 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 chop. You want a nice coarse chop. It's going to look like this. You don't want a puree. Did you make this ahead of time? Actually, you should make it ahead of oh, time, okay. right? Because that's why these sandwiches are so great. Mm -hmm. These sandwiches should be made up to uh, 48 hours in advance because oh. they taste better that way. Because all the juices soak yes. into the bread. You got it, yeah. sir. Yeah, so all of this olive spread gets in mm -hmm. there. It soaks into the bread. I like going on both sides. Oh, OK. And both then, sides. yeah, both sides. And then we just build the sandwich, right? OK. Uh, and we've got a whole variety of meats here. You can do the soppressata. It's kind of dealer's salami, choice, whatever you want to put in. Whatever you want to do, whatever what is on sale, whatever mm -hmm. your family or your friends Friends love. What is Pile this? it on. This is mortadella, I'm but I'm not it's, a big fan yeah, of Yeah, I'm not a big Yeah, so this, oh, you can also do like bologna if people uh -huh. like it. But honestly, it's, do you worry more about the amount of meat? Right. So if you want to do a pound of meat, but you can pick and choose what you want. And then we're also using some provolone, ah. which is really nice because that also has a little bit of spice, uh -huh. a little bit of kick to it. Uh, I love food with a lot of flavor. Right. Pile it together. So then we've got our beautiful sandwich here. Mm -hmm. And then here's the tip first. Okay. Uh, so I don't have it here, but if you have some plastic wrap, right. you wrap it up in plastic wrap. 
and then you're gonna use a skillet or pile of cookbooks and you weigh it down and this is how you put it in the fridge. Ah. And you leave it for 48 hours mm -hmm. like this and then we can do the cut, I'll, I will let you do the honors there. I like doing little uh, little oh, triangles little, little almost. Triangles. I know I should have told you that before. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great, and then because this, these are such um, kind of like they're, they're loaded. stacks, exactly loaded. You want to do the the a little pin, but in I fact, love, it's kind of like my uncle at, uh, like, at our, he's at our block totally party. Loaded. He used to get loaded. Oh, he's loaded. <laughs> you gotta love those guys. The olive kind of holds it down. Mm -hmm. Looks so so fun. Yeah, hold on. What do you think about this? Yeah, hold on. Uh, it, it, this is part of the problem with the with the block party. You're oh, no. stitching. Oh, you're no. stitching. Oh, it's you're, that summer we're, heat. We're That's here. how you know you're having a good time. <laughs> And so, right. especially with the heat, you want something like nice and cool and refreshing. Exactly, cool and refreshing. We've got some fresh fruit, but here's a fun way to do it. So we're doing these DIY charcuterie oh. cups. Oh! So you can buy these little paper cups like, uh -huh. at um, at the store. You can get them online. Right. And then all you do is you can layer in your like meats and cheese oh, and brilliant. some rosemaries, mm -hmm. and you can also make little skewers like with the like the fresh mozzarella balls uh -huh. here. You know, everything here is a little it's a little warm today. <laughs> This is what people are going to have. This is what it's going to be like, right? But that's good. And so oh, then you put those in. This is brilliant. So you can just walk Look around. Look how gorgeous. Yeah. You can walk around with it. And that way you don't have people like pulling it off the uh, the charcuterie shelf. That is fantastic. What do you I think about this. that? Yeah, let me try a little bit. I love like this. Mm. Also, do you know how to make a charcuterie rose? No. Look at these guys, right? How do you do that? Uh, okay. So this is like a fun little tip you can do. So you can use a champagne flute for this. Mm -hmm. And we can use some of this uh, little warm salami here. And you just kind of load it on the side like that. Mm -hmm. And then you just layer it in. You could do this in a wine glass too, but that'll be a bigger uh -huh. rose. And you just kind of keep layering it like that. See, and I'll just do the little, the like that. And then once you uh, have another layer there, uh -huh. there we go. And you can flip oh, it out. Oh. And that's how you get your my rose. Gosh. Look, I mean, isn't that just the cutest that's, thing? That's amazing. So these are these are great and for this you, party. You got the the salami rose. Yeah, right over here, rose. we've got Chef David rose. She's, exactly. Which is very 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 <laughs> fitting. Chef, we've got two roses. What a what a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> I love it though. And and so when, when you do these things, yeah. How how far in advance could you put this out? Or okay, well this, this you want it. You can prep this in advance, but keep it chilled uh -huh. until you serve it, and then you can put it out, and then right. people do it. So Fantastic. this is yeah. Alejandra, but those guys definitely make them way in advance. Make them in advance. Yes. That's great. Hey, don't forget catch Alejandra on season two of PBS's The Great American Recipe Mondays at nine. Well, next up, we're going to be turning up the heat on this party with one of our 30 Rock neighbors, Chef J.J. Johnson, right over there. Woo! J.J. Hey, J.J. You know him from his... Oh, let's, let's kind of walk over. We're going to walk over this way. I'm ready for Chef, you. Chef J.J. You know his, his fabulous restaurant here in New York. In fact, one, when you guys finish up, go down to the concourse so you can check out J.J.'s field trip. Well, today, he's going to be grilling lemon pepper prawns with a signature collard green salad. Good to you see know, you. Sir? Good to see you too. Hey, how's everything? Oh, everything's great. Ready for the summer? Um, I, yeah. I mean, I'm in it. This is it. I got the fit. You're going. Back. You said I'm coming to a block party. You, you got to look right got at the, the block got party. Got the shorts. Got the kicks. So looking good. Today's all about lemon pepper prawns. Okay. So how, how's your pepper? How's your pepper game? My pepper game is strong. I it's like strong? the pepper. You so like this is going to be spicy. All right. Okay. So onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper. It's so humid. Ooh, it's so <laughs> it's humid. It got stuck. Look at this. Look at this. They are literally rock hard. <laughs> Because it's so humid. That's crazy. You add in some pepper flakes. Can you get it in there? Hold Use on. that spatula. Get it in there. Get it in there, Al. Hold on. I got wow. you. I've uh, never seen that before. Coagulation. <laughs> Woo! And then fresh lemon zest. Oh, okay. Right? That's the trick. Yeah. All right? And then the good and gather olive oil. Uh-huh. Then mix that up for me. All righty. So you mix that up. Now, let me... You, you said prawns. What's the difference between prawns and shrimps? If you, if you can't get... Uh, prawns. Could you use shrimp? You can use shrimp. You can use really a large shrimp. The great thing about prawns is they come from like three places in the world. Costa uh -huh. Rica, Australia, and Nigeria. Okay. Oh, so, cool. and they come in many different sizes. I like to have my prawns with the head on. Uh-huh. But, and then they look like this. Right. And then you just put these, boom, you put these right on the grill. You don't want the grill too hot because you don't uh -huh. want to smoke it up, but you want a little bit of that sizzle, right? Sure. And when you talk about summertime, are you ready for summer? Prawns or shrimp talk summer. Yeah, and the great right. thing is they cook up fairly quick. They cook quickly. This is great for large groups. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out what to do with family coming over. Right. Go get some large Not shrimp. Not everybody eats meat. 
Exactly. So that's perfect. And now, then, once, you, once you've got your shrimp, Once you've got the shrimp now, Al, come on now. It's all about oh. this lemon pepper sauce. Uh-oh. All right? This is when you turn it up. So there's some, there's some hot sauce in here. So right. your favorite hot sauce, mm -hmm. honey, yeah. a lot of lemon, and then you just drop that on top. Oh, now, big you, that looks. Does that not look good? It looks good. Let's see come how on, it I'm going to jump in there with you. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. Sweet, spicy, the lemon. Mm. Man, that is good. Now listen, I can stay here all day and eat this with we you. We could, but we've got other things to do. Well, let's jump into collard greens. Oh, yeah, the collard greens. Now, we're not braising collard greens. Oh, OK. These are not your mama's collard greens. Mm -mm. This is raw collard greens. OK, what you always think, wow, it's so tough. You, you couldn't eat it no, raw. No, but that's the great thing about collard greens. They're versatile. Mm -hmm. They're affordable now. Right. I used to want to say cheap, but they're not no, cheap no, no, no more. No, no, nothing's cheap they're anymore. They're affordable. And this is a great thing. So you make this beautiful coconut dressing. So what did you, what, what was it, like a toasted? So some toasted cumin seeds. Okay. And you got to toast the cumin Why? seeds because you want to get that effervescent. Mm -hmm. You want to bring it to life. So lime juice. Yeah. Coconut milk. And, and if, if I can, just for a second, I want our crew, we, we can't do this without our crew. Let's take a look at our stage crew. They got to bring stuff put in it all and together. out in this heat. They're getting this thing done. Thank you, guys. You guys are doing a great so job. We really some, appreciate some it. mustard here. Uh huh. Ginger. Yeah. And then if you want it spicy, right, you can put a little bit of chipotle. I like to put, a, I like to put it all out. It's got you know a little smokiness in exactly. there. Exactly. And then you blend that up. Okay. All right. So that's your dressing. So, collard greens, you like the stems? Uh, I do like the stem. Well, I mean, so if you like the stems like me and Al, you can keep the stems in, mm -hmm. or you can just pull it. Okay. And what I like to do with the stems is I pickle them. Oh, nice. So there's I've no waste, right? You're right. So, so humid out here, Al. <laughs> Nothing's working. Nothing's <laughs> working right. And then you just roll them up really uh -huh. nice. And you're basically going to chiffon out it? Yeah, so if you guys, if anybody ever comes to Rockefeller Center, go down to Field Trip. Hell yeah. My rice bowl shop. We just opened a new one. Where? Right in front of Columbia University oh. on 114th oh. Street in Broadway. Those students are going to love that. So, you heard Ali say that the students are going to love it. Send your kids to Columbia. That's it. That's and a get main reason trip. to do it. <laughs> so, you end up with something that looks like this. Something like this. And uh -huh. then, you add in the beautiful ingredients some red onions, uh -huh. some cucumbers, right. candy cashews. Oh. You can buy those in the store now. Uh -huh. Azuki red beans. And, and the Azuki red beans. And then that dressing, right? And you just drizzle that right on top. And you mix that up. Mm -hmm. Now, what you think? This is my famous collard green oh, salad. Oh man, this is bright. And, it's fresh. And Ooh. you can you can put these you can put those prawns right on top. You oh can yeah, add some there you go. To it, some swordfish. You can layer this things, bad boy. Exactly, all the things mm. that speak summer. You know, I just I just mix it up. But you know, black parties for me are a thing. That's fantastic. Thank you, sir. We no appreciate problem. that, Chef JJ. Thank you so much. Guess what? We are just getting started here on the Ultimate Summer Block Party on today, all day. J.J. Johnson's going to be back in our next hour with another delicious recipe. Coming up, then we're talking Mr. Adam Richmond, my Ooh. man, going to show us how Brooklyn does a block party right. with a crowd-pleasing wow. recipe for the perfect handheld bite. And our own today contributor, Joy Bauer, is here with two tasty and nutritious recipes. Everybody's going to love all that more as the Today Summer Block Party continues right after this.
Pals, welcome at Summer Block Party. We're here on the plaza cooking fun with a few of our faves. Nobody knows how to throw a party like my good buddy, TV personality, Alan Adam Richmond. He's so good, I screwed up his name. Uh, <laughs> he's here with a delicious appetizer fit for the whole neighborhood. Don't forget, scan the QR code below for the recipe. So what do we got cooking, my friend? We have pulled pork egg rolls. Ooh. Super delicious, right? Like pulled that. pork egg rolls. Oh, wow, everybody loves egg rolls. Everybody loves pulled pork. Exactly. So you can do this with store-bought stuff, but if you want to go from scratch, let's start with from scratch coleslaw. So oh, okay. what we have is green cabbage, red cabbage, and carrots, and uh -huh. I salted it to get this excess moisture oh. out of it. Pro tip. Yeah, well, the moisture is going to obviously break down. So that keeps your coleslaw from getting watery. Watery and that nice, thick, rich dressing breaking down. So right. we have some mayo, so if uh -huh. you wouldn't mind, we have some Dijon, we have some pickle juice, salt, sugar, pepper, and celery salt. Boom. So it's instead of just creamy and sweet, which is what most slaw is. Right. But again, feel free to use whatever, whatever you want to do. Got. No Precisely. Judgment. Now you can buy uh, pulled pork from your favorite barbecue spot. You can make it. I know that I gave the good people at Today Food uh, a recipe for my buddy Myron Mixon, where you can make oh, this Myron. the best, winningest man in competition barbecue. Yep. And he gave me a recipe for how to make. Uh, pulled pork in your oven. So oh. this will take roughly four hours start mm -hmm. to finish. You could uh, shred it with porks, you could just, uh, with forks rather, you could just pull it apart with your hands and you want to get it in chunks. That's excellent. Just mix it all up so it's all covered. And the cool thing with the slaw is the longer it sits in your fridge, the better the, better the flavor is oh, going to yeah. be. So again, you can pull it off into big chunks, uh -huh. hence pulled pork. Yes. Break it up so that you can work with it into the small egg rolls. Okay. So once we have it, you can mix it with your sauce. You can heat it up with your sauce. All right. And we have our egg roll wrappers. You can use water. You can use uh, an egg wash. But basically, we're going to put water around the edges. So okay. that's basically our glue because right. there's enough starch on it. And then, uh, again, you can use any pork you wish. Yeah. You can use char siu, whatever you want. But I like old school pulled pork. I used to get some from a guy in Cabot, Arkansas, at Mean oh. Pig Barbecue. Wow. And I used to get really delicious stuff. And then, again, the slaw of your choice. So right. I, I like this one because it's not so sweet. Because barbecue sauce tends to come with sure. its own inherent sweetness. Yep. Then I put like just a drizzle of barbecue sauce right down the center of it because okay. it's already going to have a little bit of juiciness, right. if you will, from the uh, from the actual now, pork. Now, slow down on that fold. Now, show this. Okay. How do you do it? So we go over and tuck it. Okay. Then bring the edges in as best we can. Right. And then roll it on up. There you go. And then we have that water to seal. Well, well it doesn't tear apart because we're on a 102 degree day yes. on the plaza. Woo! All right, now you can do this in a deep fryer or you can pan fry. Mm -hmm. You want an oil that's going to get to 355 degrees. You want some with a low smoke point. Okay. So peanut oil, right. excellent for frying. Uh -huh. Safflower, also really good. Again, you want to lay stuff down away from you so you don't look like the Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> if you can. So you want to keep it. I usually try to do the wrap side down because then it sort of sticks. Okay. So you want to get it till it's golden brown. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overcrowd the pan right. because obviously it's going to lower the amount of energy to actually make it. So we have a few of these cooking away. And then finally, and I noticed there's like, you can have a dipping sauce of your choice. So I'll give you my favorite peanut sauce, and it is the easiest thing ever. Creamy peanut butter, hot water, sriracha, and garlic. Wow. Oh, that's, you like? that's fantastic. See, and mm. it's, the, the, the nice thing is it's a big, like, flavor punch mm -hmm. without being super intense with the ingredients. So oh, literally, yeah. just use the hot water to get the peanut butter where you want it, mm -hmm. olive oil and garlic in the pan, and then hot sauce if you need it. Now, could you get to this point? Yeah. Put these in the fridge. And to then tighten them to up. To tighten them up. 100%. And and so you, they're done ahead, and all you have to do the day of the, the party, drop them in the oven. Exactly what I do. Coming from a Jewish family, the fact that my cousins always want pulled pork egg rolls <laughs> makes me feel some kind of way. But yeah, that's exactly what I do. Make them in advance. And the same thing, the slaw mm -hmm. intensifies with the flavor. So too does the pork when it's soaking up all the sauce and those fibers. It's sacrilegious, if you will. <laughs> but so delicious. So delicious. It's delicious sacrilegious. It's sacrilegious deliciousness. <laughs> The best. Thank you, buddy. All you guys right. You guys having a good block party? Adam Richmond, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you always got to love at a block party. You kind of you kind of mosey along the block. You walk around, and then you see a good buddy. And look, oh, my gosh, look who I just happened to run into. Joy Bauer. Hello. Oh, so good to see you. Great to see you. Our Today Nutrition and Health expert. We always count on her to bring some healthy and hearty dishes to the party. 
And it, you've got uh, you've got a little something fun, a little something something, a little cooling right I now. I do, I Especially do. Especially on a day like today. Yes. And are we going to start right now? Yeah, let's do Amazing. it. Amazing. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, and you know that healthy food is my love language. Of course. So everything here is super simple. It's easy to make in bulk because I have massive block parties pretty mm. much every weekend. Do you really? And also, it's totally scrumptious and seasonal. So we're starting with mm -hmm. watermelon feta bites. Well, right now, watermelon is at, at, the, at oh, its peak. Absolutely. Yes. And so I'm going to show you very quickly how I cut it because this will make the process very simple. Uh -huh. So I like to cut sticks, watermelon sticks, okay. just like this, because then you very easily can produce a mass amount of mm -hmm. these little cubes. And I should also say, we're using watermelon now. Uh -huh. You can swap in honeydew, cantaloupe, sure. even chunks of pineapple. I did it with mango the other day, oh, wow. and it was delicious, yeah. Huh. So now it's about skewering. Right. So we put the watermelon on a stick. Mm -hmm. We have naturally sweet, juicy watermelon, sure. coupled by feta, because oh. everything's better with feta. Better with feta. <laughs> and so it's important when you're buying feta for this one, you don't want to get the crumbled, you want to get the cubes. Right. right. So we put this on, and now it's all about the mint. So this is going to be a nice aromatic mint leaf. Right. And we need something to drizzle on it. Sure. So let's take this. Now, normally, I would do a balsamic glaze. Mm -hmm. You get that zesty, Ooh. tangy deliciousness. Right. But I also tried it with hot honey. Ooh. Pesto barbecue sauce. Honestly, anything works. Let me open this. Well done. Want to do that? Give it a squirt. Right over there. There we go. And you like pesto also, right? Oh, yeah. And so you, you actually have the perfect combination of this juicy, salty, savory, creamy. Mm -hmm. And what's great about this is kind of salt, sweet. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you can make a great big platter, mm. alternating the fruits as mm -hmm. well. Even though I'm a little biased to watermelon, but really anything works. I've never anything met anybody works. who had a watermelon bias. <laughs> but we all love watermelon. I know, okay. A bias towards watermelon. Uh, I, I love I know, watermelon. I, I, <laughs> I sing okay. songs about watermelon. Now we're in corn is out there. The, the, yes. the sweet seasonal corn. Love. Corn. And so this is a southwestern corn salad that mm -hmm. really complements anything that you're making. Hot dogs, burgers, steaks, chicken, mm -hmm. anything that you are grilling, this will go with it. So I'm going to show you a little trick to get the kernels off of your corn. Okay. And by the way, you can also, if you want, swap in frozen corn or canned corn. But right now, yeah. the ears of corn are Come on. go for it. Okay. So we have a, whoops, a large bowl here. Uh -huh. Then you're going to take a smaller bowl, mm -hmm. invert it down below. Right. You put your corn on top, you take your knife, and you slice it off like uh -huh. that. And what that does is it catches all the kernels, mm -hmm. because if you do it on a, a chopping block, sometimes they scatter yeah, all right. over the place and they go a little wild. So they, they all catches them. But you know what I also like to do? Uh -huh. I just put it on the side, just like this. Uh -huh. And I slice so like corn. that. Yeah. yeah. So either, either way, you either get your way. kernels off. Now here are our kernels. Okay. You're gonna toss them on the skillet. You can also start with grilled corn on the cob, and then right. you can skip this step. I was step. just gonna say because that's what I I do. I like to, if we, especially if we have extra, I just grill it up and put it in a. You're gonna make the salad. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. And so I have a little bit of olive oil right. here, and we're just gonna um, saute it for mm -hmm. about seven minutes. We want to get these so beautiful ends up looking char like marks. This. Yes. And when you do do this, if right. you're not going to use your grilled corn, I'm going to tell you, Al, the kitchen starts to literally smell like buttered popcorn. Ooh. And sometimes you get some jumping actions, mm -hmm. too, from the corn itself. Pop, pop, pop. Right. Yes. Now we're going to build it. Okay. So we have our corn here, and we're going to put in, you're going to scoop this in. This is a can of rinsed and drained black beans. Okay. I have chopped red bell pe right. pepper, lots of color. Now we're going to put in red onion. Okay. The hardest part about this is just doing the chopping, and honestly, I'll chop the night before, mm -hmm. jalapenos and cilantro. Okay. And now we're gonna dress it up a little bit. Mix, give this a mix oh. first. I'm gonna come around here. Okay. And I'm gonna add in some lime juice. Nice brightness. Yes. And um, a little bit of olive oil. We don't have extra olive oil here, but I would put in a little bit more of extra virgin Just olive oil. Okay. A little bit of cumin, uh -huh. honestly, because I love a bit of a kick and salt and pepper. And this is ready to go. But what did we mention before? Everything's better with feta. Right. <laughs> so this time you're going to use crumbled. Okay. And you're going to put a little bit on top. And honestly, this platter will be the hit of a party. Let's it's so it's delicious. Try. Yeah. Here you go. I wish I had an extra fork. What do you think? Oh, that's great. Is it, and, and so okay. easy, and you could double and triple mm -hmm. the recipe so that you could make a great big batch. 
what I do is called mob meals because we have so much family in the backyard all the time. So, uh -huh. well, in Brooklyn, mob say. meal means something else. That's another story. <laughs> it just means extra large, gigantic, healthy food. Oh, all right, enjoy. Thank you. It's always good to see you. Dear. All right, for this recipe and all the recipes from our block party, just scan the QR code below with your smartphone. Coming up next, we got Chef Jordan Andino. He's going to share a summer barbecue staple with a twist you do not want to miss. And David Rose joins us to make delicious mac and cheese bites. Let me tell you, I've had these before. <laughs> they will change your life. The fun continues after Al's ultimate summer block party stays with us. Stay with us. We are back with more from Al's Ultimate Summer Block Party. I am joined now by Chef Jordan Andino. Give it up for Jordan. Let's go! Yeah! He is the chef and co-founder of the Carriage House here in New York. Jordan's also going to share his recipe for a really interesting summer barbecue staple. Okay, chicken wings, yes, but yeah. no, there's a twist. What is that twist? All right, this is chicken adobo wings. Ah. Now, Al, Chicken adobo is a national dish of the Philippines. Oh, by the way, I got to mention, scan the QR code below to follow along and get the recipe. All yes, right, now. check it out. Okay, Filipino. Filipinos are known for chicken adobo, okay? Uh -huh. It's soy, garlic, vinegar braised chicken. I turned that into a chicken wing because that's perfect for a summer wow. block party, All right? All right, grab and so, go. So what we're going to do is we're going to start here with some sugar cane vinegar called uh -huh. datuputi. Okay, then if we're you can't get that, what could you use? Um, regular white vinegar. Okay, but yeah, right. Or even rice wine vinegar. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is dark soy. It's more concentrated on the salinity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then give it a little, a little bit more flavor. And then right here, this is some oyster sauce because you always need that sweet oh, element. Okay. And whenever I cook, I love to have a sweet, so that's some sriracha right there. Oh, so a little spice. So I definitely got to have that spice. Once right. it's in there, you're going to give it a nice little whisk. Uh -huh. Do that up. Okay. So once it whisks, what you want to do is you're going to throw your wings in there. As the wings sit, they need to marinate. Okay. I would say at minimum four to six hours. Could you leave it overnight? Leaving overnight would be best. Okay. Yeah, at minimum four to six hours overnight, you're going to do it. So you're just gonna let it sit, make sure everything's fully submerged, ready to go. Okay. Once you have that, then we'll, we'll get to it. Now, you're gonna make your breading, okay? Because you want that, that nice little texture. Okay. Right? Chicken wings, when you want them crisp, sure. you gotta have it. So now we're gonna put in a little bit of a bay leaf. We're gonna get this going, and we're just gonna chop this up. Zoom. Chop up the bay leaves, you want everything nice and uh, this, uh, homogenous in terms of the texture. Okay. Once that's done, you throw it into your bowl. Right. And then you add your seasoning and your flavor. Of course, you need to accent a little bit of salt, garlic powder, onion powder to help elevate that, that base flavor. 
some brown sugar okay. to balance it out, and then, then some paprika because paprika is always delicious. Could you use smoked if you like? Um, you could use smoked, especially if you're going barbecue uh -huh. on the grill. Okay. I would definitely say that works. Then here's the trick: cornstarch. Oh. The crispiest wings in the world: cornstarch. Wow. Yeah, Pro tip: cornstarch. Cornstarch. So you put it in. Once it's there, give it a nice little whisk. There you go. Okay. And it's ready to rock. So right. all from there. Wings are marinated 46 hours at, at, at best overnight. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna throw them in there. So you fact, dredge them in here? We're just gonna dredge them right here. And you just toss everything ready to go. Like right. so, oops. Toss it up out. There you go, look at that. Crispy right. wings, and then once they're done, uh -huh. we have a napkin right there yeah. for you. And once they're done, they look like this. So now from this point, you can either deep fry them, you can uh, bake them, right. you can even Could roast them. Could you grill them? them? You can grill them for sure. Okay. It would be delicious. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dip. Every wing needs a dip. Every wing needs a Every dip. Every wing needs a dip. I don't care Everybody say it together. Every wing needs a dip. Yes, there it you does. Go. Very All right. Nice. So now what we're gonna do is so we'll start with our base of sour cream. Mm -hmm. Lemon juice is gonna elevate all those flavors. Could you use like a Greek yogurt if you're Greek, Greek yogurt, yogurt? Labno would work really oh, well. Okay. Creme fresh if you want to get fancy. Oh, okay. Take your pick. Now we have coconut milk. Oh. Coconut cream, coconut full milk fat, work. Full fat cream. Yeah, you yeah. want all of that. That's, right. That's gonna give you that nice island mm -hmm. flavor. Add some sugar and some salt to help accent that. There you go, Al. Best sous chef ever right here, by the way. Come on, Al. All right, there you go. Okay. So then, and then so that's your dip. That's your dip. So then, then you have your wings oh, and your man. dip. Please, this is for you to try. Here we go. Come on, let's by do it. By the way, what about you for summer? What was summer like for you, Jordan? Growing up, summer for me was my birthday's in the summer. Uh, so all of these barbecues, grilled skewers, chicken wings, and big familial gatherings mm -hmm. in hot East Coast humidity. Oh. <laughs> that, that was my summer. Oh, what, do you, yeah. what do you think of the wing? These are amazing. They're good, right? Oh. You have texture, you have spice, a little bit of sweet, and mm. of course that coconut cream comes in. Wow. Mm. Oh. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. How delicious is that? Wow. And you can, I mean, make up a big batch. Man, well, so pressure. many, so many. Jordan, always good to see you, Thank my you, friend. Al. Appreciate it, man. Have a great summer. We're doing it. Hey, don't forget, catch Jordan on his Netflix show, Cook at All Costs. That's well, right. Right next door, we got another. You know what's interesting? All these chefs are too darn good looking. <laughs> Gotta keep up with you, Al. Yeah. <laughs> right here, my man, yeah. chef, cookbook author, David Rose putting a spin on an old favorite, yeah. mac and cheese. Here's the difference. It makes it a perfect little portable snack for uh -huh. any block party. You have done this on the show before. Yeah. Life changer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, it's all about portion control. Somebody's taking too much of the mac and cheese. You go, and there's no more left. So portion control. Right. You got 20 guests, make 20 portions. There you go. Yeah. Boom. All right. So how do we get started? All right. So first things first, you want to make our cheese sauce. So that starts with a simple roux. So, you know, equal parts fat, equal uh -huh. parts flour. Right. So you want to carefully, you want to whisk that for me, Al? Okay, you bet. As you know, you add the flour little by little. You want the flour to dissolve into the butter. Right. And that's going to be our thickening agent. So, so little by little. basically a roux? Exactly. You know, so it's going to be a thickening agent. Make it nice and creamy. Mm -hmm. Nice and saucy. All right, so once that's all in there, we're gonna put the heavy cream in there once that comes together. So you cook that till you know it's not clumpy anymore and right. it's smooth. Right. And it's roux-like. It looks kind of like a peanut butter kind of, you know, base. Okay. All right? So as you do that, little by little, you're adding heavy cream, you know? And all why right. not milk, you know? If we're gonna do it, let's do let's it. Go. Let's not Come skimp, on. you know, it's summertime. Because they're small yeah, portions. Yeah, they're small bites. So, you know, every little bit counts. A Little bit of heavy cream and you bring that to a boil. A boil. Yeah, so okay. once you do that, by doing that slowly like that right there, getting all those clumps out, mm -hmm. making that nice creamy sauce. Smooth. Because you gotta have a creamy mac and cheese, yeah, Of you course know? you do. All right, so once that comes up, what you wanna do is you wanna temper the eggs in there. The okay. eggs are gonna get it nice and stiff, because a lot, I'm gonna leave that right here. Oh, I'm gonna show you the tempering part oh, right now. Oh, you're gonna go yeah, from that to that. Because normal mac and cheese, but right. it's just the root, yes. it's gonna fall apart and be creamy, which is great. Right. But we want bites, so you kinda wanna stiffen it up some. Right. So the egg's gonna do that. Gotcha. You don't wanna just add the egg in there, because it's gonna curdle. Right. So little by little, we call this tempering. So you're gonna take that whisk, little by little, and incorporate that roux, that bechamel base in there, little by little. And that's going to incorporate the egg, get it nice and thickened and mm -hmm. stiff. Without overheating. Without overheating, exactly. See? So these little things right here make all the difference. Pro tip, baby. Pro tip, baby. Pro, Pro tip. tip. All right? So once you get that nice and tempered and it's brought the eggs up to the same temperature of that, you're going to put that back into here. Uh -huh. Yes. There you go. You've done it a time or two before, haven't you, Al? Yeah, I know. There I've you never, go. I've never done the egg temper. Uh-huh. See? 
these little things right here, these little chefy tricks make mm -hmm. everything. So you whisk that all together. Tricks. And while you're doing that, you're uh -huh. gonna turn the heat off or turn it down. Then we're gonna add our cheeses in there. So okay. cheddar cheese, mm -hmm. sharp cheddar is a must yes. in there. Oh yeah. You guys like cheddar cheese? Yeah. They like cheddar cheese, Sadly, all right. We, we can't give you any. <laughs> I wish we could, but I'm gonna sneak you one, don't tell Al, okay? Uh -huh. All right, so cheddar cheese. Uh -huh. All right, we're gonna put a little bit of Parmesan for that nice kind of oh. nutty sharpness. Uh -huh. And this we get real creative. You like Monterey, you like Swiss, you like Pepper Jack, do what you wanna do. We are smoking and grilling, so smoke Gouda. Oh yeah. Boom, like that. Everything's Gouda uh -huh. with Gouda. Gouda with Gouda, yes sir. And then we have our seasoning. Salt, smoked paprika, garlic, and black pepper. Mm -hmm. All right, so once that's all incorporated, Al, we wanna slide over here. Okay. We have our noodles pre-cooked. All right. These are elbow mac and cheese uh -huh. right here, but you know, I like using cavatappi sometimes. Right. Those ridges kind of bring all that cheese together. That's right. All right. So we have our cheese sauce, Al. Right. This is the fun part. We're going to count it down. That's the cheese sauce, which is nice and melted mm -hmm. and incorporated. We're going to add the elbow into there. Okay. So I'm going to have you guys count it out. On three, Al's going to pour. Y'all ready? Uh-oh. All right. So one, and add it in there. There we go. Oh. You're going to add that in there. Put that there, Al. Oh. There we go. There you go. I was confused. <laughs> okay. Add it in there. Would have been a lot messy. Would have been right. a lot messier. There we go. All right. So three. Two, one. There you go. Oh. All right. Thank All you right. guys. All right. Then you get that nice and mixed together and nice and creamy and dreamy. Ooh. Everything nice and incorporated, right? Mm -hmm. Doesn't right. that look good? Oh my now God. we can eat that the way it is right now. Of course you could. You know, but you can add even more flavor by smoking it out. So what I like doing is I spray this so it releases a little uh -huh. bit of cooking spray. Right. And on the bottom, I like adding Red crumbs. Oh, sure. And I like adding cheese. It's gonna give it texture mm -hmm. and a nice crunchy exterior and also allow it to release. Okay, when you, when your mom made uh, yeah. uh, baked macaroni. Yes, sir. Cheese. Yeah. Bread crumbs on top? Bread crumbs on top sometimes, okay. yes. Right. Uh huh. Yeah. I know sometimes in some households, bread crumbs is sacrilegious, yeah, but yeah. I'm all about no, texture. All, no, no. I'm a texture junkie. Uh -huh. yeah. So we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese in there as well. Okay. Give it a nice texture. Yes, there we go, Al. See? I love this. Doesn't look good already, my friend. Oh my gosh. There we go. All right, now we're gonna take a scoop oh, and we're gonna like go an ahead and put it in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the great thing about this is it's a one or two bite, depending on how hungry you are. Sure. And it really kind of you know drives on that portion and control. You yeah. And you don't really feel bad about no, it. No, you don't feel bad. Uh -huh. All right. So you would put and you uh -huh. put that in there. And the then oven? a little bit of Parmesan cheese on top of that as well. Yeah. So now, could you, you, the, if, uh, if you if you had your grill going? Yeah. And you had like a, a hot side and a cool side. Yes. Could you put that in there? This right here, this recipe, I uh -huh. actually smoke it in that big green egg. Uh, yeah, uh -huh, the grill. But oh, you the big also, green egg. Yeah, so, you know, they're small, they cook pretty quickly. Sure. 15, 18 minutes, and what you have is crispy, decadent, creamy bites. Uh, I'm gonna let you be the judge, Al. That's fantastic. Right? I'm gonna join you, my friend. Cheers. Mm. Block party to end all block parties with this right here, my friend. Hey, tell me, David, did you go, when you were a kid, did yeah. you go camping or anything like that? What did you do in the summer? Actually, when I was a kid, uh -huh. not so much. The older I've gotten, I've gotten really into it. Oh. And I actually came from a round trip, mm -hmm. Utah and back to Atlanta. And along the way, I camped oh, wow. and just lived off the land and unplugged. It was amazing. You got to come with me, Al. Could Al come camping with me? Yeah. Al should come camping with me. What's, yeah. what, what's your favorite go-to recipe when you're on an open campfire? Uh -huh. Steak, what baby. Is, steak. Steak. Ribeye, luscious ribeye. Get that yeah. nice char on there. Mm -hmm. Medium rare. Slice that up with some, you know, potatoes. When you're all about it. But when you're camping, so what do you bring with you mm -hmm. to cook? I mean, to, to use as, as the as your, your cooking utensil? Like a, I either use a fire, uh -huh. a nice grill grate over that, okay. or you have an induction burner, or you have a lot of these products out here that have little propane tanks oh, where wow. you can put the pan on there. Uh -huh. So it's really, really come along since, you know, the olden days where you're camping. <laughs> it's a whole different game. The now, olden wow. days. Whole different Back game. Back there when you rode Back in on a mule. Day, yeah. yeah, rolling on a mule. And you, that's right. And we, and that, and and we chuck stayed, wagon. You we know. stayed chuck exactly. wagon. We stayed in a lean tube. <laughs> David Rose, good All to see that. you, my yes. friend. Thank you. David's going to come back in just a little bit with another delicious summer dish for our summer bash. Coming up, one of our neighbors here in the Rockefeller Plaza, Chef Greg Backstrom is gonna be joining us to make a summer squash salad bursting with flavor. It bursts so much, you have to stand back. And the game of the summer, cornhole. Why is it called cornhole? Well, we'll find out when we talk to three professional cornhole players sharing their secrets. All that and more yes. coming up on Al's Ultimate Summer Block Party right here on Today All Day.
I'm going to go to Cornhole. Oh, we're on. We're on. We're on. This is the beauty of streaming live. Anything can happen. It's fantastic. Wow, we may have a human sacrifice a little later. Anyway, uh, welcome back to our ultimate summer block party. And we've got one of our 30 Rock neighbors here to show us his favorite block party dish, Five Acres Chef Greg Backstrom. Greg, yeah, good to see you. The, the restaurant looks fantastic downstairs. And Thank I know you, you guys are going to be changing things up a little bit and even expanding it more, yeah. making it so terrific. Yeah. So so what are we making? I mean, before I say that, I keep forgetting you. You have to, if you want to try this recipe, and you will, scan the QR code and get all of the ingredients. So, so now, what are we making here? We're going to make like a super summery summer squash salad. Ooh, okay. uh, so it's like very farmer's market driven, uh -huh. but it, it won't be, uh, it'll be very bright. We're right. going to use some Asian ingredients to make a dressing. So to make like a Thai vinaigrette, mm -hmm. we're going to use palm sugar oh. as, the, as the sweetener. Now, if you can't get palm sugar, is there something? You could, you could substitute with, uh, with sugar. Just okay. use a little bit less, though. Got it. So this is fish sauce. OK. Uh, and then this is lime juice. So that brightens it up. Yeah, so, and then, so it's, it's a dressing with no fat, so it's pretty healthy. So we throw some, uh, a big chili in there, like mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a red jalapeno, some right. garlic, and then these are lime leaves oh, that we just crush up. That's interesting, I thought it was bay leaf. Interesting. Then this we have uh, lemongrass, and we basically just, you know, clean up the outsides. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be too, too serious. Right. You just pop it in, turn it on, and uh, it'll blend up, and that's what we have down on the end. Okay, so that's so, done. Yeah, so then, so that's the dressing. Right. And then we're gonna have like a like a crouton or a topping to the salad. So it's toasted dried shrimp. Oh. Uh, it, it's it's easier to find than you would think. Interesting. Cashews. Mm -hmm. Those get blended up, and uh, once blended, we have it here. We we add uh, crispy shallots to it. Oh. So we're gonna take shallots uh -huh. on a mandolin. Watch your fingers. Yes. Go slow. You start it with it off. Right. You break them in there, and you'll what you'll end up getting is these little fried rings. Oh. Once it comes to a, once it comes to a low simmer, eventually uh -huh. they'll get nice and crispy, and you'll get these guys here. Ooh, that looks so, so we just make a mix of those three ingredients, uh -huh. and it becomes our little uh, crunchy topping for our salad. Mm -hmm. So then here's like the zoodles or the, the the sort of the healthy part. So we use uh, summer squash, like yellow zucchini, basically, and green zucchini. The trick is you don't really want to use the inside part because it's too watery. Oh. So you just kind of, you know, safely oh. go like two, three times each time, mm -hmm. and you'll have these nice long noodles. You'll bring it here. You know, it doesn't have to be that serious. Any herbs you want. We got mint, we got basil and cilantro, and then that dressing. Yeah. And we just give it a quick little toss. Could you put mint in there if you wanted? Yeah, mint. I mean, honestly, if you didn't even want to do it with these ingredients, I've done it a lot with like orange and olives uh, instead. Oh, wow. And so you just dress it like five minutes before you want to eat it. Okay. And uh, so, in other words, you could do you could do the separate ingredients ahead of time, leave them in the fridge, and then assemble. On, yeah, all, on all the day you, of. you just need something very acidic, you know, like a, like a that in this case it's the lime juice. Uh -huh. So lime juice, red wine vinegar. Uh, Whatever you have. And, and then and your so, crunchy topping. So it's like a very bright, summery squash salad. And everyone likes a good fork twirl. Oh. Kind of like a little pasta. Or yeah. The zoodle. Good daytime salad. Oh. That's fantastic. Thanks, yeah. What is, what, what is summer, summer food, block party, camping? What, what have you done when you were growing up? Well, I was in the Boy Scouts for like 15 years. Oh, wow. So a lot of my summers were uh, camping with my father and my, my brother. And then, uh, yeah, we, we, we lived in a nice neighborhood that had a block party every every year. Wow, that's fantastic. Well, this is a perfect addition to a break. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much. Thanks. I'll see you Good down there. See you. All right. Yeah. Hey, so what's a block party without some games? Well, we've got one that has seemed to explode. Cornhole, one of the most popular activities at neighborhood gatherings this morning. We've got three of the best cornhole players in the country joining us. We've got Lori Duell, Yeti Irwan, and Moses Azuda. Uh, they are pros in the American Cornhole League. I never knew there was an American Cornhole League. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, so how did you guys get into cornhole? So we all started playing cornhole at our local leagues and started to become bigger and started travel going to a regionals, conference, and our national, our world championships, which are next week. So, so Yeti, why is it called cornhole? Oh, I, I think because in, uh, when it just started, it's uh, the people that play it in the beginning, they 
play the bags filled with corn. Oh, very <laughs> good. And Moses, did you have you grown up playing cornhole? No, I've actually I walked well, somewhat. I've been playing since I was about 15. All right, oh, how old are you now? 18, about All right, all, uh, like a third of your life. It's unbelievable, right, almost, or a quarter yeah. of your life. All right, so so why don't you show, are there certain, are there certain moves to cornhole? Um, there's yeah. a certain so, way to throw the bag. You and Yeti will go down there, and Yeti's going to okay. teach you yeah, how to right. teach you how to play. So show us how we do this. Okay, so first of all, every bag um, in the pro, like, you know, usually every bag has two sides. Uh -huh. So this is the slick side, which is faster, and oh. this is the sticky side. Uh -huh. And then when you throw the bags, mm -hmm. When you release it, your fingers, is, it's called finger blast. A finger blast. A finger blast. So you use your fingers to spin the bag. Oh. So it will be flat in the air, spinning. OK, so it's spinning like, like you're, you're tossing a pie, a pizza pie. Ka yes, Okay. that is correct. All right, so, so here we go, the blast. All right. There you go. Uh, let's see you th let's see you throw one out. I see. Oh yeah. There's oh, well, this is not going to go you well. Try. So, no, yes, you so, can. so is is it the only goal? Uh, see, it says uh, uh, the red zone. Is it obviously the goal is to get it in there? But if you're, is there like you're knocking your opponent? Is it like a shuffleboard where you've got to knock somebody's bag off to keep them from going? So yes. what the red zone is for is like say if Yeti had a bag right here. Right. Well, we call it, we call it the red zone because it's still possible to get that bag back into the hole if Yeti was to shoot okay. straight for the hole hit this corner and pull it back in. That's why we call it the red zone. Uh -huh. To let us know that it's still there I to be see. dragged. Okay. You can always play defense. Oh, there you go. Shuffleboard. It's a little high, you got it. Yeah, a little high. Throw a little bit higher. Okay. You want a nice arc on it. Nice like, arc. Okay, yeah, go, go up ahead, a little Yeti, bit. Oh. Just a little. a little too hard. Oh. 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 That's, oh. It's like I'm bowling. Oh. Go up like that. <laughs> go up, up. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. You keep your arm a little straighter. You got it. Oh gosh, <laughs> I'm missing right now. <laughs> it is. Oh, 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 oh. oh, that one looked pretty good. It looked good. One more. Okay, one more. Yeah. Come on, Al. Lift it up. There it is. Oh. Oh, all right. Very good. Well, Laura Yeti and Moses, thank you so much. Very exciting. And we found out why it's called corn. Up next, we're going to move on to dessert with milk bar owner Christina Tozzi. And my buddies from the third hour today will join us live for her summertime skillet cookie recipe. Mmm. Don't go anywhere. Loads more block party bites coming up on the second hour of our ultimate summer block party. Christina will be back. Alejandro Ramos will be back. Adam Richmond will be back. This is a party. You guys having a good time? It's the summer block party, your Al's summer block party, right here, today, all day. Let's go.
Oh, we're doing great, guys. I mean, we're having a great time. It's, we've got so many of our great friends, chefs. It's a perfect way to celebrate the best parts of summer, thanks to our sponsor, Good & Gather, only available at Target. Join me right now, milk bar owner and dessert queen, Christina Tosi, going to show us how to make a summertime skillet cookie. I love this. I mean, who doesn't love a skillet Come cookie on. for the summertime? Woo! So for me, baking has a place uh -huh. at a block party, Yes. 100%. But I brought this recipe with me today because, like, you can feel the energy out here, sure. right? Like, yeah. it's convivial. It feels like a reunion. There's togetherness. And you don't want to spend all your time hiding out in the kitchen prepping, no, right? No. You can do so this and then bring it out you later. You can do this. You can buy store bought. Like, there's so many ways around mm -hmm. it. I'm going to show you how we get it done from scratch. Oh, my good You're friend. You're my Craig cookie Melvin monster, right? right? Oh, thank looks, you. My Hold friend looked warm. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Thank you. What do you think? Check is us. I like it. <laughs> Very impressive. <laughs> Craig's always got your back. Yes. Okay, so we're going to start with two sticks of butter. Okay. You're going to give me a little light brown sugar. Okay. I'm going to go granulated sugar in the mix. It's a nice little combo. This right. is going to be a chocolate chip based cookie, so oh, I like nice. a little light brown sugar, a mm -hmm. little granulated sugar. If you were going to go more of like a fruity sugar cookie vibe, I'll go all granulated sugar. Okay. The sugars really help set the tone of the flavors that are going to come after. From there, we're going to scrape down the bowl. Right. It takes one egg and a whole lot of vanilla extract. Mm. The secret to any great chocolate chip uh, cookie, by the way. You want to get on vanilla? Okay. I'll go egg in the mix. You can make this dough ahead of time, which is really great. Oh, that's we great. also make this cookie dough and we sell it at Target. Oh my god. You can get a cornflake chocolate chip marshmallow cookie dough or a fruity cereal Ooh. cookie dough. So different strokes for different I folks. I like that. And then it's dry ingredient time. Okay. So we're gonna do the normal dry ingredients first. Okay. Flour, okay. salt, baking powder, baking soda. Wait, a, a, any particular order you no, want? Just all in the just mix here. The I mean, do you want a job? Uh, I feel I, like you I could need, work at the milk bar some days kitchen. I need one. We'd hire you. I'm, I'm, I'm there. Look at this man, Wait, he's pay, taking control. Pay me in cookies. So here's a real, go for it. Okay. Here's a real tip for a cookie like this. If you're gonna make a cookie and add a bunch of fun stuff at the end, right. you add your basic dry ingredients first, you bring your dough together just to what I call it shaggy, so it's uh -huh. not all the way mixed, so that it stays nice and fudgy and dense. Right. And then you add what I call the fun stuff. Okay. So cornflake crunch, marshmallows, Ooh. chocolate chips, right? Mm. It's salty, it's sweet, it's a Got whole lot of going energy. For it. And then everything goes in the mix because we know we still have mixing to go. Right. So adding this stuff into the dough is going to give us texture and goo and personality. Okay, so we're mixing the dough. You pull out the skillet. Mm -hmm. So this skillet has been preheated. You can make the skillet cookie in an oven, okay. 350, or hand it to the person man in the grill. Oh my god. Or gosh. woman in the personing the grill, right? The grill. So you preheat the skillet to so get right. a nice crust on the bottom of your cookie. It goes straight into a seasoned skillet. Grease it if you don't have sure. a seasoned skillet. And all you do is you take your spatula and you spread, spread it, out. it out just so it reaches the end. And then you go fun stuff. So whatever you think meets the personality of the cookie you're trying to make, mm -hmm. there you go. Oh, I like the salty sweet. The salty sweet we've cookies. got. So these cookies are our super crunchy cookies. Mm. They're new to the aisles of the grocery store. That's brown butter chocolate chip okay. to bring the flavor personality. Look at him, he's like, like a give me pizza. a cookie. I've been ah. out here all day. All right. So milkbarstore.com, we got all the rest Piece mm. for you. We got all the cookie energy for your That's summer block fantastic. party. All right, we got to go back to our pals at the third hour today. Next commercial, guys, you come out, get some cookies. Fantastic. So, okay. So anyway, the oh, cheetah, is just getting started. They're, they're going. There. So there it is. I lo oh, so this is a chocolate chip right here. Cornflake chocolate what chip. Is, when, you, when you think summer, what are some of your summer memories? Um. So we were just joking in the back, um, all the chefs together. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I never went to sleepaway camp. My mom sent either. me to Ohio where my grandparents live. And she was like, you're gonna live that farm life the way that I was raised. Oh my God. To keep you like, I don't want you to be a city girl. I want uh -huh. you to be like, I want you to appreciate where corn is grown and how to mow the lawn yeah. and all that sort of stuff. You know, it's so funny you say that because that was one of my regrets. I had all these friends in my neighborhood hmm. who's, who had family like down south and they'd go down south for like two weeks, three weeks a month. My family literally was within a mile. But <laughs> so we had no, I know it's we, all right. But we had nowhere to go. <laughs> Wait, so what did you do? Block party? We would go, well, we would ha you know, have backyard barbecues. People would come over. And we would also go here in New York, uh, you know, about 40 miles north is Bear Mountain, whatever, oh, yeah, which we'd sure. always call upstate, which is really, in that, it's just a suburb. <laughs> There's a lot more 
upstate yeah, New York, I know. the Bear Mountain. But we, but it, would be a, it would be a caravan. Swimming? No, swimming, some swimming. But we'd be a caravan of, of, of station wagons going up, you know. Skillet cooking on the but grill? I, oh, yes, I absolutely. Mean. I mean, so that's really great. Oh, oh I love it. Are you no, ready yeah, for let me a try slice a of this? Oh, this thing is gooey. You can oh. s'mores it up. Oh, my good. friends. Are this you ready? So good. Hold on, let me get a slice in here. Okay. What's your I, favorite kind of cookie, by the way? You know what? I, I Either a chocolate chip or an oatmeal raisin. Oh, okay. I see. There's a little okay, parchment little, under here. Oh, oh, they did some parchment go. to keep it from sticking. There you which go. Which seemed to defeat the purpose. But there oh. you go. Oh, here we go. Mm. Oh, Tell okay. me you're mad at that. You're not mad at that. No, never mad at that. Well, that does it for the first hour. Come on over, Christina. It does it for the first hour of our ultimate summer block party. I want to thank all of our chefs and the cornhole players uh, who helped us kick off our summer special. Christina, you're going to be uh, back in the next hour. What do you got? Oh, I got strawberry corn cookie bars for you, my Woo! friend. You, you eat that while you play cornhole. Uh, so it doesn't get much more summery than that. Our <laughs> ultimate summer block party continues right after the break. Don't go away. Right here. Woo! Here we go. Summer block party. I'm Al Roker. Hey, we got a very special, yeah, because uh, we're hosting our very first block party right here on the plaza. Thanks to our sponsor, Good and Gather, only at Target. We're cooking up an epic party with tasty treats that will have your whole neighborhood talking. Uh, we got uh, JJ Johnson, JJ, JJ Johnson right here. Okay, uh, he's got festive finger foods. Uh, Milk bars. Christina Tosi back with a summery dessert you don't want to miss. Uh, Adam Richmond, Alejandro Ramos, right there, uh, and more. Scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen with your smartphone for all the recipes. Of course, Block Party wouldn't be uh, complete without fun and games. And we are going to be joined by a New York stapler, staple, the elite, the elite Brooklyn Jumpers. The, the, these are not them. These are, these are not them. Uh, but, you gotta, I don't ever want to see that. I don't ever. I don't ever. Ever. You look like the Blues Brothers. I need you, you, you. You, you, it's anyway. summer. It's uh, summer. Block. Does something. Oh, man. <laughs> little throwback there. Block parties are a beloved American tradition. No surprise why, as long as there's no dancing like that. Uh, they bring communities together. Our friend Hoda Kotb dug into the history behind the social phenomenon. Everyone. 
When summer hits its peak, neighbors from coast to coast pour out onto the pavement. America loves a block party. It's an epic get together set in the street with everything from grilling and games to music and dancing. The beloved tradition dates back more than a century. A New York Times article from 1923 calls the block party a social phenomenon. And over the years, the neighborhood gathering evolved into a full-on celebration, often even including live entertainment, vendors, even rides. When residents close the streets, the traffic ends, and the party begins. Oh, that, 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 I love it. Thanks, Hoda. We really appreciate that. <laughs> well, I got another New York stable here, TV personality, Alan, Adam Richmond. I did it again. I said, That's I'm okay. Alan. Adam Richmond, who's back with a summer dish you're going to want to share with friends and neighbors. You already had me at, 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 at sautéed onions. Yes. So but basically what we're going to do is we're going to slice the onion nice and thin, you know, make a nice little, like, claw with your finger. And you could even use a mandolin, but you want to get these nice, nice thin slices. Mm -hmm. So once we have the onion sliced then we're going to caramelize them down to so roughly this consistency wow. and an easy way and, to and add. how do you do that? I mean, so just, just oil, butter, and thyme. You don't want to, a little bit of salt, but not this the spice. Take like, time. No, no, this could take like 20 minutes. Not even. Not, oh, not even, even. Not even. And okay. you want to make sure you don't have the heat too high because uh -huh. when they pass this caramelized color, they get burnt and it kind of tastes kind of nasty. So what we're going to do is not <laughs> eat much. <laughs> so we're going to add some of this wonderful Good and Gather beef stock that uh -huh. we have, and that's going to help sort of bring up the beefiness. And a little trick, and this this my dad even used to use in his hamburgers is, for the block is, parties. Is this, is this onion Lipton's? soup mix? Yeah, onion soup mix. Oh, so you're gonna put my mom used to put that in meatloaf. Amazing in meatloaf, incredible in meatloaf. My pop used to use either meatloaf seasoning, McCormick's meatloaf seasoning, uh -huh. or the soup mix. So you want to get this going. You want to uh, eventually come to a boil and then simmer it. Okay. And then while it's actually simmering we're going to just take some thinly sliced roast beef you could just buy this from your local deli already cooked right and so this is inspired by one of my favorite places in Brooklyn at Nostrandon Avenue U called oh. Brennan and Carr oh my gosh and they make a sandwich called the KFJ the knife and fork job mm. so I call this my knife and fork job casserole so this is what that will eventually look okay. like and plus because it's cold it's gonna soak up all that broth we take potato rolls you can get yeah. the dinner roll size you lay it on the bottom, right. and then what we're going to do is basically just take a whole honking bunch of the, that's a technical term. It is. A honking bunch. That's a, it's, for, it's from the French, isn't it? Yeah, from Le, le Honk. Le Honk. Le Bunch, Le Honk. We've, been, we've known each other too long. Mais bien sûr. Have you ever been, my oui, late... chef. Exactly. We worked together at Vandalay Industries years ago. <laughs> <laughs> he was my latex salesman. you want to be my, my latex, latex salesman. salesman. <laughs> exactly. So basically, we're going to layer this on there. And there used to be a lot more of this, but we... Tell her about the shrinkage, Jerry. I was in the pool, Al. I was in the pool. Anyway, so we're going to lay this down there. And the broth, obviously, the beef is cooked into it. Sure. We want to layer in as much of the broth as we can, about whoop, roughly to the height of the last oh, bun. Okay. KFJ stands for knife and fork job. And mm. that's basically what we're going to do. So once we layer it on, we're going to layer in some Swiss cheese. Okay. Could you oh, use any cheese you want? You can. I've always liked beef with, like, Swiss with sure. roast beef. Mm -hmm. Cheddar does really well, but you right. want something with a bit of bite. Right. American tends to be very creamy. Sure. So I tend to like, like a Gruyere, which melts really nice, or Swiss. Mm -hmm. So we do this. Then we're going to top it as much as these guys can stay together. We're going to top it with the entire sheet of buns. Right. And then we're going to brush just some melted butter right on top uh, uh. so they get glazed and they get brown and they get nice and golden. We're going to put it into a 350 degree preheated oven for 25 minutes. And what's so cool is when it's finished, when you serve it, everyone gets their own little slider. Right. So you can prepare a bunch of sliders all at once and it still soaks up all the juice. Please let me and, know what you and, think. And hence, because of the soggy bottom, probably knife and fork. Knife and fork job, right. exactly. Although in 102 degree Manhattan, mm -hmm. soggy bottom takes on a whole new meaning. Isn't that a suburb in Washington? I think it was soggy bottom. Something like that, or <laughs> it's where like yes, SpongeBob has mm. like a, a restaurant. What summer? What was summer for you like growing up in New York? Oh my gosh, you know, Dad grilling Cherry Stone and Little Necks on the Weber in the yard, uh, Nellie Bly amusement park, um, playing ball with my friends at Marine Park. So you, like me, 
there was probably no sleepaway camp for you. Eventually there was. Was there? Eventually there was. I was a Manhattan Beach Jewish Center day camp kid. Oi, blavin, schmavin. <laughs> but I did that for a while. And then I went shockingly to performing arts camp. Oh, wow, um, which one? I went to Frenchwoods Festival oh, in Hancock. And I went to Brookwood in Glen Spain, New York. I did that for a little bit. Are you bit. going to be an actor? I, well, I went to Yale Drama School. I did not know I that. I got the agents that helped get me Man vs. Food, I got out of Yale Drama School. I, so, I, Yale School of Drama class of 2003. My gosh. My classmate Malik was in 30 Rock right here on this very, very beautiful network of yours. Wow. Adam. Love you to death. Thank you, my friend. Love that. All right. Happy Let's summer. head over this way. Happy summer. Chef Jordan Andino is joining us What's now. Up, hey, Chef. What's happening? We're back. We're back. Good to see you, sir. How are you? How are you? Good, good, good. Now, he's known for his unique spin on traditional Filipino dishes, and he's got a summer staple, barbecue pork skewers. To follow along, get this recipe, just scan the QR code. All right, Jordan, I over, can't wait to see over this. Over here. Over we're here. start here. Okay. okay. So, so here's what we're going to do. Right. We're going to start with garlic. I have garlic tattooed on my arm oh right my here. Gosh. See that right there? Wow. We got garlic. It's a base flavor that I love to put in all, all, all of my Filipino food, all right? Mm -hmm. So every kitchen, I think, should have this. Okay. For whole, whole garlic, you're just going to blend it with some vegetable oil. All right. And then this now allows you to have that minced garlic without having to peel and, it. Yeah, yeah. and mince it every time. That's and now brilliant. you just take it from a spoon. So it looks like that. You're ready to rock. Okay. Now here's the tough part. Lemons. Okay. You want that acidity. You want that to break down and tenderize the meat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna squeeze. Okay, you're gonna be the squeezer. Okay, squeezer. Ready? I'm gonna Bring squeezer. it over here. So okay. you, we're gonna have, we're gonna take three lemons, squeeze it, and then give it to me. Done. Okay. We're gonna do we're gonna do all these. Now the, wow. the main reason here, the acidity is gonna tenderize the pork. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of that that delicious flavor goes really well with with pork, especially when it marinates. This right here, you have to marinate for at least, at least a day. Oh, at the, least a at day. At least a day. The longer, the better, okay? Wow. Yeah. All, all because my... you always hear that if you've got, you know, a lot of uh, citric, citrus in your, your, your marinade, the meat starts to cook. That is correct. But when, when we're talking about pork, uh -huh. you want that kind of semi-cooked a little bit from all that acid, and you really want, want to bring oh, wow, that together. Cool. Okay. And then the last one right here. All right. So now, once you do that, you're going to add in your brown sugar, and okay. Al, let me tell you, let me tell you. Please this, tell me. This dish just makes it perfect for summer barbecues, okay? You grill, I grew up having this in all my Filipino barbecues, mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of pork barbecue skewers. Wow. You go to the Philippines on the street, there's they're skewers, there's, yeah, So this is like street everywhere. food. This is street food. This is delicious street food, and we're gonna start featuring this mm. at, my, at my other restaurant, Flip Siggy, also in the West Village. All so, right. and now we're gonna add in, ready, secret, Coca-Cola. Whoa! Whoa. Mind blown! Coca-Cola? In the marinade, y'all! That's how you do it! Wow. All right, so now then you have some oyster sauce. Mm -hmm. Oyster sauce is going to help with that same, like that sweetness, but also the salt. And then, of course, soy sauce to bring in the salinity. Okay. Now, the carbonation coupled with the vinegar uh -huh. or, the, or the acid from the lemons, right. that's going to tenderize your pork. Here, okay, so what kind, of, what kind of pork are you using? Okay, so here we like to use pork butt. Okay. And a lot of people don't realize it's not the butt. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's the shoulder. Ah. Okay, it's not it's not the butt. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this. It's imperative that when you cut it, you cut it into small little strips uh -huh. so that you know that you can get everything caramelized, but also it doesn't it takes it a lot less longer to cook. Right. Right? You don't want to take too much time. So it's gonna look like this, about an inch, I'd say an inch long by half an inch wide. So first time you cut a, Just against like the grain, and then you're cutting. Yeah. So yeah. Well, you're gonna cut with the grain. And, I see. A little bit, but also Eventually. obviously against because yeah, we're gonna sure. we're gonna chop Back it and up. Forth. Once you get it here, you're gonna pour that marinade right in. Okay. So we'll just bring it in. Oh, right. we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll go this way. Yeah. There you go. Oh, oh, got it. You okay? It gets messy in here. It gets Woo, messy in here. Look out! All right. So now we're gonna do. Now this is fun. This is the skewering part. Okay. This is where you can bring in your family. Right. As a as a child, I sat here and skewered That's hundreds. It. And hundreds, hundreds uh, and, and hundreds. hundreds of skewers for my own birthday. Make those summer. kids work for their supper. Right, and then so once it's skewered, you can put four or five pieces on. It looks mm -hmm. delicious, and then you can just put them right on to the grill like so. So at this point, you could skewer these all, put them in the fridge until yep. you're ready to cook them up. That's right, and that's why this makes for a really good summer recipe because mm -hmm. you can do all the work ahead of time. Right. All you got to do is just throw it on the grill whenever you get to wherever you're gonna go. And how long will these take to, to cook? So up? Th these typically take about like I would say. You know, five five to eight minutes, depending mm -hmm. how, how hot your grill is. Right. Uh, you want to leave it on medium heat, and then what you're going to get is nice, beautiful caramelization. Oh, yeah. I heated this up for you. I cut that. Look, look oh, at that. Look at that. Right there. Cheers. Mm. Cheers. Oh, that is magnificent. Isn't it? Wow. Tender, but juicy, tangy, spice, salt. It's all there.
How good is that? My gosh, that is fantastic. Jordan, thank this you all, so this much. This how Filipinos eat in the summer, Al. Well, you guys got the right idea. We get it. We did it, baby. Well, yeah. it's not a block party unless you've got somebody doing double dutch. Oh, yeah. Coming up, we're going to introduce you to a group that's bringing communities together across the city. And Chef David Rose will join us with the best chicken sandwich on the block. We'll be right back as Al's ultimate summer block party continues. Woo! the ultimate summer block party here on Today All Day. We want to switch gears a little bit. You know, you've been eating. Now you got to maybe work off a little bit of that food. Right. Well, uh, we've been highlighting another fun block party everybody can get into. Double Dutch. Joining me right now, Tashima Flowers. She's the co-founder of Elite Brooklyn Jumpers, a Double Dutch group here in New York, along with a few of her talented uh, spinners and jumpers, ropers and jumpers. So, so Tashima, uh, tell us. How did you get involved with, with the, the Double Dutch? So Double Dutch has been something I've been doing since I was about 10 years old uh -huh. in the community of Brooklyn. And after COVID, I decided to reach out to one of my friends, ask her if we could jump Double Dutch. And she was like, let's do it. So it was just something just going outside, uh -huh. Delta to jump in and having fun. Yeah. And we just got so much, you know, good vibes from the community. Got Tell me, how does, it, how does Double Dutch bring the community together? Uh, look at it. <laughs> Fun, you burn calories, you bring mm -hmm. people together. And you've got a lot of, oh, you, okay. And you've got, uh, obviously, jumpers of all ages. Uh, absolutely. We have the we have our young jumper right here, Jackson. Hey, Jackson. And we have our older adults right here jumping. And just, again, just having fun. Wow, right? that's, that, 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 that's, that's amazing. Uh, so walk us through, when you talk about double dutch. Okay. Because, yeah, I mean, jumping rope is hard enough. Right. Is it about the rhythm? It's about the rhythm. It's about the one, two, one, two mm -hmm. rhythm. So, as you see Javon, he's just going this one, two, one, one two. two, one, two, one, two. And as long as you keep that rhythm uh -huh. and you have great turners, you'll always stay in the rope. Well, let's let's get JJ in there because JJ uh, okay. is, uh, has been showing. You want to give it, give it a shot, JJ? I mean, I haven't jumped in a long you time now. JJ. <laughs> I got to jump in? Yes. Oh, you, you want to jump, jump in? in the middle? In the middle? OK, 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 OK. What's the trick? How do I do this? So when I say jump, I just it's a one, one rhythm. We just jump in, all right? OK. One, one rhythm. All right. All right. So back up slightly, the slight, OK. Ready? Hope I don't embarrass you. Set. You're good. Jump. Hey, oh, yeah. Around. Oh. Cross, 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 cross. That's what I'm talking huh? about. <laughs> Whoa! That's a good workout. Hey, Tashima, is Up there is there a a, a, a skill to 
uh, doing the rope? Great job. You mean turning? Yeah, turning the yes, rope. Yes, you have to pay attention. It's important for you to pay attention to Come on, I'll get jump up, right? So no, the, I, no, the no, turners just, have to pay I'm using my knee jumper. surgery as, as, uh, as oh, an excuse. Oh, come on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so so that, now look, so now my turners are paying attention to the way he's jumping, uh -huh. right? So if he was going too fast, then they would speed up the rope. Right, and and each turner has to be in, in, in sync. Yes, it has what to be doing, in sync. Yes. So it's, it's a team building skill, right? Wow. It's a team building oh, skill. <laughs> That's Great fantastic. Job. Great job, guys. Job. Really impressive. Thank you. What's your name? Benoa. Benoa, and you are? Javon. And you are? Kimberly. And you're Jackson. Good. Yeah, 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 yeah. I like Jackson's style. I love that. And, you, and uh, Tashimi, you and your jumpers are going to yeah, be back yeah. a little bit later in the hour. Uh, teach some more of our chefs how to double dust. Yeah. But first, let's check out my man, Mr. David Rose. I'm going to put that right there. And uh, back out. Chicken sandwich. Yes, sir. The ultimate chicken sandwich ultimate chicken for the sandwich. ultimate block party. Yes, sir. All right. So, how do we get started? All right. First things first. You have your chicken right there. You want to dry that off. Uh -huh. and it's all about a three so breading chicken breast? process. Chicken breast right there. Could like, you use chicken thighs? Yeah. So I love chicken thighs. You could use either one. You like know, a boneless, yeah, boneless, boneless chicken, chicken thighs. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you have right here, you want to always season as you go out. Right. So we have here some AP flour. Uh -huh. You want to help me? Got salt. We got a little. Garlic powder, uh -huh. little cayenne, right. a little bit of smoked paprika, Ooh, nice. black pepper, yeah. onion powder. You want to give that a whisk for me there, Al, oh, please? Bet. Thank you, sir. All right, so what you want to do right here, the standard breading procedure. I don't know about you. I like crispy fried chicken. Uh, who does And this is going to be the winning combination right okay, here. I'll so I'm going to slide around. Okay. And what you're going to do. Does this so have a double dredge? Double dredge, exactly. Oh, double so dutch? For double double, dredge. double dredge. See, double entendre. I like that. Woo! I see what oh, you no, did we there. We weren't doing a double entendre. <laughs> that's, that's a different show on a different streaming channel. True that's story, a, true story. Uh, no. Okay, never mind. Exactly. So what we have here, you want to get that in okay, there. Right. You want to add that to our egg wash. You got our good and gather. Right. Eggs right there. Both sides. I have similar seasoning in the mm -hmm. panko as well. Panko so you is like Japanese. Panko yeah, I love panko. Gets that nice, crunchy, kind of crispy exterior. Mm -hmm. And then you batter that on both sides. Right. All right. So batter, 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 boom, batter, boom. batter right there. Okay. You have our. Hey, batter, batter, right batter, batter. Here. This is the fun part. That yeah. sizzle. If it ain't sizzling now, it ain't. Cooker. So let's That's listen. It. Let's listen. Let's listen for the sizzle. It's uh, faint, but it's almost there. Well, it, it's it, almost there. So is that when you talk about it sinking? Yeah. Uh, do you know it's ready when it reaches, kind of exactly. floats up to the top? What I like doing to kind of test it before I put it in, a little bit of flour. Uh -huh. You see those bubbles kind of pop? You right. know that oil is ready for you. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and you don't want to overcrowd the pan. You don't want to overcrowd the pan because it's going to steam. You want it to fry and get that nice, crispy exterior. Right. You worked hard for all that, Al. So Come on. I skip now. All right. All right. So saucy, spicy, delicious. Yes. We have sort of a Asian-inspired kind of barbecue sauce. Uh -huh. So you got ketchup. All right. You can help me out here, Al. We got okay. some gochujang. Which well, is a, uh, that's a spicy, Japanese, yeah, I mean, exactly. Korean. Spicy Korean chili paste. Got great umami in there as well. Mm -hmm. I like sweet and spicy, so uh -huh. maple syrup. Maple Ooh. syrup in there as well. Okay. A little bit of that Worcester again. Soy Worcester sauce, Worcester. rather. Soy Worcester. sauce, Worcester. that nice umami. And, then, and a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Because okay. whenever you're making your sauce, you want to have balance. So sweet, right. salty. Acidic, you let that come to a boil, reduce it. Uh -huh. Now, I'm all about, you know, nice contrasting flavors. So you need a pickle. A ah. pickle gives it that great acidity. Right. You make these at home in scratch under 10 minutes. So in the really? end, I got some sliced thin cucumber. Mandolin uh -huh. is great. Sliced thin onion and some dill as well. So to this, I have rice vinegar. Right. I boil that with some crushed red peppers, mm -hmm. some uh, crushed garlic in there as well, and mm -hmm. Szechuan peppercorn oh. to kind of drive home okay. and bolster that Asian flavor. Now, when you pour hot. it, is, do you, you pour it in hot? You pour it in hot, okay. yes. And then you cover that up in the mason jar uh -huh. and let that kind of simmer hang out within 10 minutes. They're acidic, they're sweet, they're salty. Wow. You let that hang out in the fridge when you're ready. Okay. So now's the fun part. Okay. Are you ready to build a sandwich? I think they're ready. Okay, so we got crispy chicken right there. We have some spicy mayo we made again with that gochujang. Uh -huh. And just very tasty, very flavorful. We're going to add our chicken on there like right. here. Boom. And we can't forget those pickles. I like a lot of pickles. Yeah, actually. I do too. So put that on there. So acidic, crispy, sweet, spicy, mm -hmm. amazingness. And we're going to jump in there right there. I'll already. try that. Cheers to summer. All right. Cheers to block parties. Yes. Cheers to you. Mm. And cheers to you guys. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That is so good. And so what, moist. What's the secret, do you think, mm -hmm. to bringing the right group of people together for a block party? The right group of people, it first starts with great food, um, great energy, 
uh, people who are fun, friends, family, and people who are like-minded, you know? You know, you want to come together. It's summer, it's hot, we're having a great time, and just, you know, it starts with food, mm -hmm. drinks, and just merriment, yeah. you know? I'm Jamaican. We share that kind as That's well, right. and we already know what a good time is about. Oh, it's going to be yeah. a party and music. And, and all music, that. yeah. And sometimes I think inviting people who may not be like you. Yes. Because once you're eating, mm -hmm. you can't, you, you got to be friends. I always say my thing, good food and laughter. Doesn't matter where you're from, what country, what religion, ethnicity, good food. You know, once you bite into that yeah. and get that look, yeah. you know, you just already know. So food is the common denominator that brings us all together, no matter where you're from. Thank you, right, sir. sir. Appreciate you. Thank Appreciate you, Al. Thank you. All right, you. here we go. Now, let's move to another person from our neck of the woods, the chef and restaurant owner of Jupiter, Hi. right here in 30 Rock, Jess Shadbolt. Oh Jess, God, how nice are you? Nice to meet you. you. What a day you're having. Yeah, this is so exciting. Thank you. We've been so happy to be here. Okay. Are you ready for something? I am ready, in fact. And if you get ready, you want to try this out at your next block party, just scan the QR code to get all the ingredients. Welcome to the party. Thank you for having us. We're super psyched. We're actually going to head to Italy now. Oh, I love it. You know, we're going to take and transport ourselves out down to Naples. Uh -huh. We're going to be cooking like a really simple, beautiful puntanesca sauce. Ooh. So really easy. Mm -hmm. Even my mom can do this one. <laughs> so it's just tomatoes. We've got some beautiful olives, anchovies, gentle spice, a little bit of pasta, olive oil, orange zest. Done. Yes. Shall we get going? Let's do it. Okay. So we've got, you know, obviously we're in the middle of summer. We've got these beautiful heirloom tomatoes. Right. They are at their peak at the moment. So we're going to peel them. Now, really. now, a lot of people get scared about peeling tomatoes. Oh, my God. Super easy. Literally just put a little score at the base uh -huh. and you can do some at the top. Chuck it in this boiling water, kind of boiling water. Right. Let that go for a little bit. And actually, as it kind of like... Um, bobs around in there, you'll see that the skin begins to peel away. Mm -hmm. At that point, we're going to just pull it out of the water. It's not quite there yet. Right. Um, and then we can just literally easily peel, peel off the it skin. Off. And then you're just left with the flesh, which right. is really delicious. Mm. Then, in this pot, we've got a little bit of olive oil. Well, I right. say a little bit, quite <laughs> a lot of olive oil. Um, and these lovely capers. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to fry them. And you really oh. want them to fry mm. in that olive oil. Um, and you want to bloom them. You know, you really want to kind of um, let them burst into their flowers. That uh -huh. releases all their delicious flavors. Ooh. So you can see them bubbling away in there. Super delicious. And at the same time, we're going to start to add in the anchovies. I love it. Oh, people are kind of weird about anchovies. I know they are. I think you can't beat a good anchovy. Yeah. Um, chuck that in there, mm -hmm. and then they'll start to melt too and release all their delicious flavor. Um, and then the garlic. Now, it's really important not to brown the garlic. Right. Like I feel because like it gets too bitter? Exactly. That's what gives bar garlic a really bad name. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you just want those... You all to give come... garlic a bad name. <laughs> exactly. You want those guys just to get to know each other, become <laughs> great friends. Um, and we're going to chuck in some of this dried chili. Okay. You can make it as hot and spicy as you like. Sure. I think a little gentle kick. So Why not? Water. Ooh, la la. Oh, we lost some we flowers. Lost flowers, down. flowers down. Flowers down. Flowers down. What are you doing oh. over there? No flowers oh were injured Lord. in the filming of this special. Wow. Okay, can you smell that? I mean, yeah, we're basically so in Naples right now. So tasty. You can put a little fresh chili in as well, mm -hmm. just to kind of get the party started. <laughs> um, and as that's going, we can chat a little bit about our tomato. So okay. we literally, this is a great one for kids. Just, well, oh God, I don't want to get right. it on your shirt. I've already okay, messed it up. Or mine, to be honest. But um, yeah, chuck it in here. Get in with the hands, have fun with mm -hmm. it. Juices, seeds, the All whole shebang. Yeah, get it in, uh -huh. have fun. Oh my God, so tasty. Right, now this is really beginning to go, which right. is great. I'm gonna chuck this in. Oh my God. Oh. What better than Puntanesca for breakfast, right? Yeah. Okay, now that can just go low mm -hmm. and slow right. for about an hour, right? Okay. Oh, so know, about an hour. Kind of um, lower the heat a little bit. Every mm -hmm. time you remember about it, Give Just it a stir. It. You don't want it to stick. Right. Um, and then, ta-da, here we are. Um, so you can see that it's kind of like reduced a little bit. Right. But it's still like nice and light. It's not too jammy. Mm -hmm. Am I talking too much? Uh, no, you are okay. not. <laughs> You're terrific. I love it. Okay. Well, you've got that, that accent. You, can, music. you got the accent. You could read the phone book and we'd be, we'd be no, fine. No, no, no. Um, okay, so that's going. Right. Now, in here, towards the end, we've added in the olives. All right. So well, you don't want to put them in at the beginning because they get a little bit bitter. Uh -huh. So just towards the end, so after about an hour. Olives. Yeah, just chopped olives. And at that point, I'd give it a little taste. 
Obviously, you've got a lot of anchovies in here. Mm -hmm. You might need a little bit more salt, but depending on what your you know preference sure. is. Um, that is like ready to go. That can sit in the fridge for a couple of days too. Oh wow, that's that great! Effect. Great idea. Cooked pasta, spaghetti is like what we love it with, but you can choose whatever shape you uh -huh. want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Salted water, cook it al dente. Don't overcook pasta. Okay. You know, it's not. Never. You know, Nobody never. likes that. Yeah. And actually, cook it a little less than you would normally in the boiling so pan. So less than al dente. Less than al dente, and then I would cook it in the sauce. Yeah. Ah. So like, and then that takes on all the flavor mm -hmm. of these beautiful aromats, oh. all of the tomato sauce, mm -hmm. and. Bob's your uncle. Here we are on a plate. My favorite saying, Bob's your uncle. Who was Bob? We should find <laughs> out. Okay, a little bit of wild oregano on here, mm -hmm. fresh, dried, whatever you've got, basil, I mean, and then orange there. So that oh just my gosh, brings the party zest. at this point. There we go. And then, you know, always some olive oil to finish. Of course. You can never have enough. Never. Right. Bon app. Mm. Good one. Yes, that's fantastic. Well, you can come and eat at Jupiter tomorrow. Can't wait to. Lovely. Thank you so much. Thank Good you for having you. us. Thank you. Okay, guys, stay with us. JJ Johnson and an unexpected Rice Krispies treat. And let me tell you, this is from Katie Stilo, our food stylist. I have had this Rice Krispies treat. Your mind will explode. And Hoda and Jenna are going to join the party with Alejandro Ramos. All that and more coming up on Al's Today, All Day, Ultimate Summer Block Party. Summer Block Party continues with our 30 Rock neighbor, James Beard, award-winning chef and cookbook author and philanthropist, J.J. Johnson. He's sharing a family-inspired recipe that's sure to be an instant hit, a take on his granddad's smoked trout dip. If you are already thinking about doing this, just scan the QR code to get the recipe. J.J., good to see you, my friend. Good to see you. All right. Well, Listen, so, so tell me about your granddad. Dad was a uh -huh. and he would build these fires, and he would catch fish and he would smoke it and then he would make these dips and give us raw uh, raw vegetables mm -hmm. but the dip was so good that you would forget about the, the vegetables wow. so I wanted to show you like you don't you can put this right next to your crudite platter uh -huh. and something that I love to smear on a tomato Ooh. so just some nice smoked trout you can smoke it yourself uh -huh. or you can get it in the store and you just flake it off like it's just really good okay now if you're not in a smoked trout you can do whitefish oh okay okay 
inside my inside my um, food processor, yeah. I have some sour cream yeah. and cream cheese. Mm -hmm. So if you like cream cheese, uh, who does This is where it is. Okay. And some horseradish. Oh, so okay. A little bite. A little bite. Yep. And then you just, and it's simple. Like you just throw this on here. Turn it, let it, let it pulse. Oh my gosh, a food processor that's actually worked. It worked. Unbelievable. I tested it before I came on here. Well done. <laughs> so then you get this, uh -huh. now, and this is where the magic is. Okay. Okay. You're just gonna add in a little bit of lemon juice. Okay. Right. Nothing like fresh squeezed lemon juice. Oh. Boom. Okay, now throw everything in there, Al. Okay, so you got chives? Chives, red onions, parsley, the smoked trout. Okay. Okay, throw that right in, mix it up. And then right here, a little Worcestershire. Oh. Boom. A little hot sauce. Yes. Boom, mix it, keep going. And you get that nice creamy effect. Mm hmm All right, now what do you want to put that on? Anything. All right, so look, I got some. My hand. Come, no, don't put it on here. Come down here with me. Come on, come <laughs> okay, on, come okay, on down. Okay. So heirloom tomato, endives, some Persian cucumbers. Now I love this on a tomato. Now heirloom tomatoes are just in season yeah. right now. I cut them in these nice little wedges. Mm -hmm. And a little trick that I like to do with my tomatoes are before I serve them to anybody, yeah. I lay them out and I hit it with a little bit of sea salt, Ooh. right? That sweetens and that them up. Sweet, it sweetens them up really yeah. nice, right? And I then, remember my mom used to do that on watermelon. On watermelon. Yeah. She and bring out the sweetness, yeah. right? And, you know, my parents used to throw a black party. Oh, yeah. did they? Yes. I grew up in, I grew up in Pennsylvania, uh -huh. in the Poconos, on our block. All of our neighbors would, would have to contribute a dish. We would have double dutch. We have egg throwing contests. Wow. Wait, egg throwing? Yeah, egg throwing contests. Hard boiled or raw? I, I, I don't want to put my parents out like that, but you know. Oh, they're, 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 <laughs> And we would, they would throw the eggs, uh -huh. and the adults would do something with cucumbers running back and forth backwards. <laughs> it was a big, it was a big affair. Uh -huh. um, so seeing you doing, do throwing this black party today, uh -huh. really bringing back some memories. And you know, it's nothing like having on the table some really great vegetables mm -hmm. and a smoked trout dip. So I would, you could throw it right here on your plate. Right. And you got your beautiful cu, you got your beautiful tomatoes. Yes. Some cucumbers, whatever you like there. Mm -hmm. And listen, your crudite platter could be whatever you want. Sure. It could be all those vegetables that are just inside the fridge that need some love. Oh, that's fantastic. But I love it right here on that tomato. You just scoop wow. it right up. Oh, mm. that is fantastic. Delicious. And again, something you can do ahead of time. Something you can do ahead of time. Something you can do with large groups. Mm -hmm. And something to, to pick up, pick it up. Yeah. You don't just got to put some herb mixture, some mm. some dressings this right here anybody can do at home that's amazing could do it really easy mm. and it tastes really good Woo! and you know what i also uh your 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 fantastic restaurant tell us about the new one you just opened up so just open up third field trip mm -hmm. up on 114th street and broadway field trip is a rice bowl shop yep everything's under 14 dollars, and you're going on a field trip all around the world right so if you want southern food west african food asian food you can get it all in field trip. All the rice is freshly milled. We have one in Rockefeller Center. That's right, right we down at the concourse. So right in the concourse, If you're yep. visiting uh, here at the Today Show afterwards, head down to the concourse and get a fantastic meal at field trip. Well, cheers to you. JJ, always good to see you, my great friend. Great to see you. Right. Happy summer, everybody. There you go. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, JJ, being a great neighbor. And you can visit that field trip, like we said, lower level of Rockefeller Center. And speaking of keeping it in the family, up next, one of my faves, Ms. Katie Stilo. That's right. He, you know, so when all the chefs, when all the chefs come, our food team goes through it, preps things, gets everything. I think people think that stuff just magically happens. Yeah, they do. But uh, I'm the magician. You are the magician. You are <laughs> myself and my team. You are our David Copperfield and, yes. and, and the entire team that's here. Yes. And in, speaking of teams, again, our mm -hmm. teams are from our camera crews to our, our stage hands. hands who have been lugging. I got to tell you, folks, so, so you can keep seeing this, but see, they've got to, if you look over there, they've got to move stuff over, they've got to change the tables out, and then they have to bring stuff back in and, br and do it fresh. Live. I, live. Yeah. I mean, while this is happening. It's I just unbelievable. Crazy time. Yeah. Talk about magic. All right, so uh, just so you know, not just a pretty face, she's an Emmy <laughs> Award winning culinary producer, head Ooh. food stylist, and the host of Today Food Radio. Yes. And one of my favorite simple desserts is a, a Rice Krispies treat. Well, you are going to give Rice Krispie Sunday cones. I am, Al, because one of my favorite things is a Rice Krispie treat. And what better way to have it 
for a block party than in an ice cream cone. I like because when this. you're at a block party, you don't really want things to be melting all no, over your hands. Please. So I'm taking my iconic ultimate rice crispy treat recipe that you can find on today.com slash food and jazzing it up a little bit with just a few special ingredients to get that ice cream essence. But to kick it off, we're right. starting with your classy ingredients. We have some melted butter right. and some really delicious good and gather marshmallows in here. You want to melt this up just until it's combined. Uh -huh. Come over here. Melt it down, ooey gooey, a little right. bit charred on the bottom. But that's okay. That's all right. You know, it kind of gives, gives a it more of a caramel. Yeah, yes. it's like we're at a campfire. Exactly. You know, roll with it. Yeah. If you'd like to help me, we can add in some sure. of our mix in. So, classic, we're adding some of your favorite crispy cereal. If you want to jazz this up a little bit, definitely add in some like Captain Crunch. Oh, sure. Fruit. Ooh, Crunch Berries. Yes. Mm. And what I love to add to my Rice crispy treats that I think makes it super chewy and fluffy, fluff. Oh, okay. marshmallow fluff. Yeah, because when I developed this recipe, I felt like there was not enough marshmallows in classic rice more marshmallows. Yes, it's more like, marshmallow. It was like the Christopher uh, Walken thing in the <laughs> SNL. I need more cowbell. Yes, I need exactly, more marshmallows. Exactly, exactly. And then we're not done yet with the marshmallows. More marshmallows. More marshmallows. We're adding in some mini marshmallows. It's marshmallow palooza. Get that texture in there. Uh -huh. And then you pop in some salt uh -huh. and then some vanilla extract. Oh. And this all comes together. Right. Get a little arm workout in, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> but that's okay. Some upper body work. Yeah, we're outside. No one knows you're sweating. Hey, now. Okay, now the fun part is where you get to add your ice cream flavor toppings. Oh. So for the strawberry flavor, I love to use freeze-dried strawberries. All you do is grind them in a, like a spice grinder uh -huh. until they're a nice powder, and then you just mix them in. So Everything's if been... it's not super humid, it'll <laughs> yeah, come it's right out. Right in. Oh, we oh. lost something else. Something broke. Okay, we're okay. Winds I mean, are picking up. It wouldn't be a second. There's a hurricane <laughs> blowing! It wouldn't be a Today Show segment if there right. wasn't something chaotic happening, right? One of my favorites, uh, I, I love uh, uh, like a like a chocolate chip, mint chocolate chip. Yes, me too. So I have just a little bit of mint extract uh -huh. that kind of evaporated, but we're going to put that in Pretend there. Pretend it's in there. And then you add in some chocolate chips uh -huh. just to stud throughout so you have that nice texture. And then if you want to go crazy, you can do a chocolate. All you folks, <laughs> grab hold of somebody you love so you don't blow away. <laughs> grab hold. Everybody grab hold. All right. You could add in some cocoa powder if you uh -huh. want to for a chocolate version and then some chocolate chips as well. So to get that fun little scoop effect, uh -huh. you simply just take an ice cream scoop. You can grease this with a little bit of cooking spray mm -hmm. and then pop it onto a sheet tray. Right. And it makes that cute little mound. It's oh, so much fun. And then to pop it onto the cones so that they stay secure when you're in gale force winds on the plaza. <laughs> You just take a little bit of candy melts, uh -huh. and you can use any fun color. So get the kids involved here. Sure. If you have a little block party and you're outside, make the kids choose their own ice cream topping mm -hmm. flavor, and then they can add their own candy melt. And it's super fun if you want to, a little little tip, you can tuck some candy in the bottom. Oh. Uh huh. So that when you're done with your Rice Krispie on top, you have another treat. So, so, you, so in case they haven't had enough sugar, yeah. Just wind them up. Jazz them up. Woo! Yes, which is perfect. And then you can pop it on some rainbow sprinkles. Mm -hmm. And it's super cute. My personal favorite flavor is the strawberry. Ah. So that's the mint chip variation. And it's oh, super wow. easy. And if you don't want to serve them on the cones, you can uh -huh. definitely just keep them just little, in little in little trays. Or do, or do the squares like the, the yes. traditional thing. Exactly. What what's your go-to uh, recipe for for a block party, summer block party? Ooh, if I had to bring something, I'm known as like I bring a cookie or uh -huh. a bar. I'd probably bring this, to be honest. Or my grandma's butter cookies. That's always a classic in our house. Like it's like what I grew up eating. So. The dessert bar, very big very in the Midwest. Yeah, very uh -huh. big sweets heavy. I grew Love up that. eating all the sweets. <laughs> well, I really appreciate it. It's fantastic as usual. Again, Katie Stilo, our food stylist. We love it, uh, and we appreciate it. And uh, oh my gosh, <laughs> got look, the visitors. Look, look who's here. We've got we've got Hoda Kotb. Oh hey, and, and, what up? And Jenna Bush Hager. Come on over. Oh my gosh. Hey guys. Three, two, one. Okay, look what's happening. Al Roker, you're like a marathon. I know. Man. How are you doing? Doing great. I, I mean, got all my friends, my chef friends here. This is the ultimate summer block party, and we're we're here for it. I know. And Al, you invited us, which yes. we appreciate. Always Have you yeah. been eating some delicious things? We've been eating. We've had such a good time. Uh, this party is being presented by Good and Gather, available at Target. Uh, Alejandra walked us through a mini muffaletta sandwich <laughs> earlier. Now she's got another great grab and go for a block yeah. party: empanadas. Empanadas. And the QR yes. code's got all the ingredients you need. Oh, That's right. You can Okay. Show That's us, Alrighty, girl. so we are starting with our savory empanadas, and we're keeping a vegetarian. We're doing some sautéed spinach and onions, and you uh -huh. put it in the pan, really simple, and then we add our cheese. Yeah. Oh. I like to do two types. What kind what of cheese? What types? So we've got crumbled feta. Because that gives it that nice salty bite. Yeah. And then the the mozzarella, mozzarella gives it the cheesy pull, which Did is what everybody Did you know that Jenna's loves. nickname was Salty Bite? <laughs> salty Bite. It, that's I my thought you were going to say mozzarella. <laughs> um, 
I love it. I do love so some you, cheese. You mix, I make, you mix it up a little bit neater than I've been doing. <laughs> no, it looks good. And it's then good. what? Lemon? It's a nice and a little bite. lemon? And then we squeeze that lemon juice in. You can also add a little fresh lemon zest. Okay. Gives it not, lots of great, bright flavor. Nice. I love, this is kind of like, have you ever had spanakopita? Yeah. So this is kind of a little grab and go version of that. Okay, what is that? And now, so we've prepped our, we're prepping our fillings here. So we've got the savory filling ready. Now this is guava paste. Oh. You know I love my, yes, yeah, so no? guava. Guava I'm Puerto Rican and I know we guava. are I love guava, guava and cheese as a dessert. Oh, we yeah. call it Romeo and Julieta, Romeo and Julieta, because it's salty sweet. And uh, so you start off with the guava paste, and all you want to do Got is it. cut it in little slices, just like little pieces. And if you can't find guava paste, you can do any kind of sweet jam will work well for this. Okay. So strawberry, cherry, yep. tropical, pineapple, whatever you can find. But you want something about this size, okay. not too, too big. All right, then we are moving on to our pie crust. So, oh, you just buy a pie crust? Yes. Yeah. That's great. Store bought pie crust. So much easier. Oh my God, it's, it's too hot. It's too it's hot. Summertime. For that. Come on. Yeah, not yet. First, we want to cut out the forms. Right? So then oh, we've got, yeah, so we cut it out first. Well, no, actually, the egg wash doesn't belong there. Oh, okay. <laughs> the egg wash, it. we'll bring it's the egg wash over here. Oh, we're going to bring it over here. <laughs> yeah, here oh, there's some yeah. over there already. Yeah, we've got over yeah, here. So we have a brush. Okay. Well, actually, you know okay. what? We can give me the spinach. You can give me that spinach filling. Let me give you the spinach. There I'll we go. You do that. As a team. Put a little spinach in there. Okay. All right, let's make let's make those guava and cheese empanadas over here. What kind of cheese do you use? All right, so for this, I'm doing cream cheese. Yes, and the cream cheese is like, got it's got that nice sort of of salty uh, mix and it's also just melts it's so good in that soap and then you put your little guava That's right there it? on top yeah so simple and it literally it's literally guava the recipe is the name then you brush it with your little egg wash right on the side yeah. glue that down yeah bounds it over right pinch and you can it. you can pinch it and there's so many I mean you could do a fancy Look, I did this one were you happy with that I like the little but here's what here's the trick too. You take your uh, your fork and yeah. you crimp it, and that's oh, gonna pretty. really lock in oh, the. Look at, uh, wait, look how but how you did you do this? Do look at this. This one, yeah. So did this you is, do that? This, I, I did yeah. not do that one. But <laughs> 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 that's our, our fancy culinary team here did that one. But that is another option. So you can fold it. And what actually a really good tip too is because when you're doing savory and sweet empanadas, uh -huh. you want people to be able to know what's inside. Oh. So this is like a fun tip for you guys. Right. I like doing a little bit of food color and you can just kind of brush like so for example this is like the green food coloring so we'll put it on the spinach and you could just do like a little swipe that there mean, oh so this is so spinach, that, that's and, spinach this is... and this is the guava so you can put a little pink food coloring oh, and that makes especially when you've got a big crowd that just makes it really easy to kind of grab and go uh -huh. and so everybody knows what's inside without constantly mm. being like hey what's Should this one, one of these mm -hmm. Al do you yeah. want one sure do you like that yeah which kind sweet or savory I'll go with uh, sweet Sweet. I love a sweet one. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yummy. Wow. Really good. They're so good. It's such mm. a fun dessert. Like I grew up eating these. This is like a classic. Sometimes as a kid I would literally just eat the guava and the cheese. Not even wait for the empanada. Why? Would you buy this is why? so delicious. So what was your summer tradition growing up? We, we just had, what did we do? Ran through a sprinkler and ate watermelon? I don't know. I love it. That's how I do my weekend still. <laughs> you know? I'm like, what did I eat? Um, popsicles. Oh. So, yes. And frozen grapes. Oh, oh yeah. That's a good one. Super good. easy. I, I love like that. that. You that's know, sometimes too. when I, like my first job, I used to walk to work on summer mornings eating a popsicle to stay cool. There you I go. love it. Gotcha. Breakfast. Well, guys, you can catch Alejandra on season two of The Great American Recipe on PBS, uh, Great American Recipe on PBS. And for these recipes and all the recipes, Piece from my block party, just scan the QR code right here with your Al, smartphone. You're a, you've been on the air since 7 a.m. Yeah. It is now almost 11 Eastern, and you're going to keep going? Oh, How much going, longer baby. is this block party? Uh, I think around uh, 1, 2 o'clock in the Wait, afternoon. Wait, what? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. it, I was it, like, it, Al, it, drink some water. Next, guys, it, it, we're going to be in about our newest day <laughs> follows. TikTok's upcycling queen coming up after this. But for those of you who are on all day, after the break, a double Dutch lesson from the elite Brooklyn jumpers. Ooh, I wish you guys were staying. I'd love to I see know, that double Dutch. Well, oh, a yeah. perfect activity <laughs> for any block party. Stay Fine. with us.
invited to today's, uh, today all day's like ultimate like summer that. party. <laughs> Tashima and our friends from the elite Brooklyn Jumpers are back to teach us a thing or two. So Tashima, what's happening here? Oh, oh, oh so the guys are jumping right. together. Oh. So this is their first time jumping double dutch. Uh, the first time? Their first time jumpers. Okay, you got and this, JJ. JJ, come on, pick your feet, move up a little, move back a little, move back. Okay, David, so there you go. David, now they're both in Jordan. Oh, oh, okay, okay. One more time, one more time. Right. Okay, okay, okay. David, right. hold on. All right. All right. Wait, let's go, Jordan. One at a time. Let, one at let a JJ time. go first. Go, yo, okay. Oh. Jordan's in. Jordan's right. going in now. Okay. Back up, back up. Oh, oh, oh. You went in the wrong oh, time. You, you missed oh. time. Yes. Yeah. So close. Time. One more time. One more time. One more time. We're going first. Move back a little. Move back. Yep. JJ, go. Come on, Jay. Go, JJ. Come on. Okay. Come on, JJ. Here we go. Professional. Get it. Get it. Oh, get it. Oh, get it. Oh. Oh. David and JJ sitting in a tree. That's a, that's that's a, a what is it about double dutch and black parties? It goes hand in hand, right? Huh? Like back in the days, you would uh -huh. jump double dutch. We right. look forward to black parties because that's an opportunity for us to go into the streets and show our skills. Oh, Tashima, hold on a second. Okay. Hold on. Have you ever done double dutch? <laughs> he said he's done it years ago. Yes, ago. yes, uh -huh. yes. All right. Okay, let's give Adam a shot here. Adam, Come on, Adam. Come on, Adam. You got Adam. this. You got this. Adam. 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 Take your time. Okay. Now. Now. Wait, oh, wait. all right, all right. One more time. Set him up. We'll go. Set him up. Yeah. Now. Here we go. Now. Come a little closer. Not closer to you. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Now, run it. Now. 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 Yep. Yes. Oh, okay. Out. You got a half. That was good. One more. We're gonna try one more time. I wanna try to jump in. No, go in the middle. Okay, go in the middle. There you go. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Oh, oh, that's right. Pull those pants that's up, right. Adam. That's right. we, got <laughs> we don't need to see that. <laughs> Nobody needs to see that. Yes! 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 Go, Adam! Go, Adam! Go, Adam! Uh oh! Uh oh! Whoa! Hold on! Hold on! Wait! Whoa! 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 Bring those bad boys up. That was close. The team at Lee Brooklyn Jumpers. Thanks for joining us. Okay, we're gonna be right back. The Bob Hardy next. That was close. Oh, that was Woo! Oh that my was God. great, Adam. Oh, Thank you God. so much. Wow. That was awesome, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Come on, come on, come on. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that was
things up then with our buddy Christina Tosi earlier in the program. She made a gooey, ooey, gooey skillet cookie. And if you want a fresh way to use seasonal produce, strawberry corn cookie bars. That's right, Al. I love so, that. Strawberries are in season. Yes. Like that's for me what screams summertime block party energy. These strawberry corn bars, they're my they're my flavor story. They're the flavor story we're rocking at Milk Bar right now. We have a strawberry corn layer cake. We have strawberry corn cake truffles. We make our classic corn cookies and layer them with this pickled strawberry jam. Wow. You wanna learn how to make it? All right, let's do <laughs> okay. it. So it starts with some granulated sugar. Uh -huh. This is pectin. It's the stuff that makes oh, jelly? Um, jam jelly, uh -huh. right, exactly. And a little bit of salt. And we're gonna whisk those together. Yeah, I'm gonna put you to work. Okay. Like you haven't been working all day. I'm telling you. But when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. That's true. <laughs> So you whisk those ingredients together so there's no clumping or lumping. Okay. Then yeah, I'm gonna whisk I'm gonna whisk you or give you to whisk in some strawberry puree. So fun fact for people in strawberry land this season. What's that? The smaller the better, the redder the better. That is like my best advice when you are buying I love strawberries. That. Also, the strawberries that look a little bruised but are super duper fragrant, uh -huh. they're almost overly ripe. They don't look great to our eyes when we're shopping, but you want to know what? They're the best strawberries. For especially because for they're most they're the most ripe, so they have the most flavor, they're the most fragrant. Okay. Um, if you're buying them at the market, sometimes they call them seconds. Right. They're the bruised they're the bruised So they're cheaper, but they're the most Ask the, the most person, flavorful. go to the back, they're the most flavorful. So once you get those liquid ingredients together, uh-huh. On a, on a saucepan, medium heat. We're gonna take these tiny little things, it's coriander. So it's gonna just give this pickled strawberry jam just a little bit of edge. Uh -huh. And the reason that we're pickling this jam, because what's in what's in the bowl here would be a delicious jam. Right. But the reason we're pickling it is a little bit of acid from that strawberry. It's still gonna be sweet and fragrant, right. but going in with this buttery corn sweet cookie, it's gonna wow. help. Oh! One of these. Uh, I hope I'm. Whoa. Get it out! I believe in you. Okay. All right. Oh my That's gosh. not going anywhere. You got now. my back. <sighs> Best sous chef ever. Woo. Um, so the pickling is going to help a little bit of acidity with the sweetness mm -hmm. and the butteriness. So it all it all measures up. So toast the coriander. We add a rice wine and a sherry vinegar to give it a little bit of that edge. Okay. Those things like sherry vinegar, the smell of sherry vinegar, mm. it's something deeper, it yes. gives a little edge. We bring that up to a boil, we fish out the coriander, and then we put this strawberry mixture okay. in. Go for it. I love this. Do you bake a lot at home? I, you know, I'm not a great baker. I, Stop. You know, here's the thing. To me, baking is science, whereas just cooking is kind of like, you know, Ad -lib it. You want to know what? I'm the baker that's going to change you because okay. I love to bake with the intuition of a, of a cook. Okay. So taste this. This is what we're working with in strawberry, pickled strawberry jam mm. lamb, right? Wow. It's acidic, mm -hmm. but it also has the strawberry energy. Yes. Now on to corn bars. Okay. Flour. Yep. Corn meal. All right. Salt, baking powder, baking soda, and this is the secret weapon. It's freeze dried corn ground into a powder. Oh, wow. It's the secret to our strawberry corn cake. Like, so our it cookies. gives it more of an intense corn exactly. flavor? Exactly. We replace a little bit of like traditional flour in a recipe with mm -hmm. corn powder. Super secret sauce. Wow. You can find all the How best corn recipes. How come up with that? I just worked for a bunch of brilliant chefs and then found my voice. <sighs> okay, and like all good cookies, mm -hmm. butter. Yep. Granulated sugar. Of course. Some egg. I'll mix those together. You're going to give me the dry ingredients, and this makes a really great corn cookie. So you bar. want to do this by hand? It's, I love to do it by hand. You don't need a fancy mixer if you don't have it. It's no big deal this mm -hmm. season. This recipe we got you. If you just want some corn cookie energy or strawberry corn cake, we uh -huh. got you at Milk Bar outright. Mm -hmm. As that comes together, you basically get this great corn cookie batter. So right. it gets really brilliant and uh -huh. yellow as you mix. Now, greased, thank you, eight by eight inch corn. I grew up in Ohio, so what grows together goes together. Ooh. Strawberry and corn, corn fields, the strawberry patches, they're right next to each other. Greased eight by eight inch pan. Mm -hmm. Rather than spreading this corn batter all the way across evenly, uh -huh. we're gonna kind of give it like peaks and valleys because we want a place for the strawberry, pickled strawberry jam that we made mm -hmm. to come. So corn cookie to the edges, but we don't want to go full right. smooth because we want a place to dollop in the strawberry jam. So I'm gonna let you dollop in the strawberry okay. jam. I'm gonna take some fresh strawberries, slice them just on the bias so that you get a little bit of that really nice strawberry seed hold mm -hmm. moment. 
I gotta tell which you, is really nice everything, as well. You know this is going to be good because everything on its own is fantastic. Well, that's really the secret for any great pastry mm. chef or baker like mm. me. Wow. So I like to put those fresh sliced strawberries right. from there. You bake them, you cool them. <laughs> and boom. You got strawberry corn bars oh, for your friends. Yes. Strawberry yes. corn bars? Y'all have been crushing that yes, strawberry yes, life. Yes. 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 Get it, get it, get it. This morning. Katie, get if you need some inspiration oh, yes. for your own yes. summer block party, yes. scan the QR code uh -huh. for these recipes. Oh. That does Damn it. That you have a great summer. Throw your own summer block party. Thanks to our sponsor. Block Party, the first of what we're hoping is many. I'm Al Roker. Of course, block parties are an American tradition, and for the first time ever, we're going to host our own right here on the Today Plaza, thanks to our good sponsor, Good and Gather, only at Target. Next two hours, we're cooking up an epic party featuring 10 chefs right here, like this, serving uh, 16 delicious recipes for a crowd. We got uh, Adam Richman. He's going to be whipping up pulled pork, egg rolls. J.J. Johnson is grilling Block party bites. The queen of dessert, Christina Tosi, will share her must have summertime treats. Plus, fun and games, everything you need to host the perfect summer celebration. You want to follow along with the fun? Just scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen with your smartphone for all the recipes and more. All right, so guys, to your stations, and we got, we're going to start off with uh, Alejandra right now. So, of course, you know Alejandra Ramos. You've seen her here today and on her show. Okay, break, everybody, break. They're going to go play cornhole. And I want to find out how did it get named cornhole? Because it just sounds weird. I don't know that one. That's yeah. right. Sounds and a little weird. Her, her show, uh, The Great American Recipe on PBS. And so you're making something kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, the the Mufaletta, which is, we've heard of. Yes, heard down, in, down in New Orleans. These are a New Orleans classic and fave. But you're and making baby Mufaletta. You, yeah, usually they're about this big. Right, but huge. since it's a block party, we want to keep them kind of small for grab and go. That's right. right. Okay. Also, you want to be able to enjoy all the treats. Yes. I don't want to fill up on just one sandwich. So for this, the key thing about the muffaletta is the olive salad, uh -huh. right? So that's kind of like the spread. Mm -hmm. And we're going to make it in a food processor. We're right. starting with, with some uh, um, stuffed olives, like right. the green ones. Like or the also, olives. Yes, exactly. Uh, then we're also going to do some of these kalamatas. But okay. honestly, you can do a mix of whatever olives you have. Sure. Just make sure no pits. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then we're also gonna do some capers. I right. love capers. These are briny. They're uh -huh. salty. Some pepperoncini okay. peppers, garlic. Of course. You know I don't Gotta do recipes garlic. without garlic. And then this is giardinera. So these are it's an Italian mix of pickled vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's oh, so delicious. Those. You buy this in a jar. Uh -huh. So good on its own. But we're adding it here, and it's gonna add a lot of, like this nice mm. tangy yep. briny bite. We've got some olive oil, some lemon juice. That all goes in there. And what's great is like, honestly, these are jars basically, mm -hmm. right? So it's a bunch of jars into the food processor. You can do this by hand if you prefer, because then right. you can, um, you can like pan chop it. Right. You really want the little coarse. I'm having a little trouble here, Mr. Roker. <laughs> you get it. Okay, but you, 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 know, well, you, know, you know how food processor works. So you go, use that pulse button, you go, no, chop, 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 chop. You want a nice coarse chop. It's gonna look like this. You don't want a puree. Could the, you make this ahead of time? Actually, you should make it ahead of oh, time, okay. right? Because that's why these sandwiches are so great. Mm -hmm. These sandwiches should be made up to uh, 48 hours in advance because oh. they taste better that way. Because all the juices soak yes. into the bread. You got it, yeah. sir. Yeah, so all of this olive spread gets in mm -hmm. there. It soaks into the bread. I like going on both sides. Oh, OK. And both then, sides. yeah, both sides. And then we just build the sandwich, right? OK. Uh, and we've got a whole variety of meats here. You can do the soppressata. It's kind of dealer's salami, choice, whatever you want to put it. Whatever you want to do, whatever what is on sale, whatever mm -hmm. your family or your friends Friends love. What is Pile this? it on. This is mortadella, I'm but I'm not it's, a big fan yeah, of Yeah, I'm not a big Yeah, so this, oh, you can also do like bologna, people uh -huh. like it. But honestly, it's, do you worry more about the amount of meat? Right. So if you want to do a pound of meat, but you can pick and choose what you want. And then we're also using some provolone, ah. which is really nice because that also has a little bit of spice, uh -huh. a little bit of kick to it. Uh, I love food with a lot of flavor. Right. Pile it together. So then we've got our beautiful sandwich here. Mm -hmm. And then here's the tip first. Okay. Uh, so I don't have it here, but if you have some plastic wrap, right. you wrap it up in plastic wrap. And then you're gonna use a skillet or pile of cookbooks and you weigh it down and this is how you put it in the fridge. Ah. And you leave it for 48 hours mm -hmm. like this. And then we can do the cut, I'll, I will let you do the honors there. I like doing little uh, little oh, triangles little, little almost. Triangles. I know I should have told you that before, <laughs> before we cut. But it's great and then because this, these are such um, kind of like they're, they're loaded. Stacks. Exactly, loaded. You want to do the, the uh, little pin, but In I fact, love... it's kind of like my uncle at, like, at our, he's at our block totally party. Loaded. He used to get loaded. Oh, he's loaded. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love those guys. The olive kind of holds it down. Mm -hmm. Looks so, so fun. Yeah, hold on. What do you think about this? Yeah, hold on. Uh, it, it, this is part of the problem with the, with the block party. You're oh, no. spitzing. Oh, no. You're spitzing. Oh, it's you're, that summer we're, heat. We're spitzing That's here. how you know you're having a good time. <laughs> And so, right. especially with the heat, you want something like nice and cool and refreshing. Exactly, cool and refreshing. We've got some fresh fruit, but here's a fun way to do it. So we're doing these DIY charcuterie oh. cups. Oh! So you can buy these little paper cups like, uh -huh. at um, at the store. You can get them online. Right. And then all you do is you can layer in your like meats and cheese oh, and brilliant. some rosemaries, mm -hmm. and you can also make little skewers like with the like the fresh mozzarella balls uh -huh. here. You know, everything here is a little it's a little warm today. <laughs> This is what people are gonna have. This is what it's gonna party. be like, right? But that's good. And so oh, then you put those in. This is brilliant. So you can just walk Look around. How gorgeous! Yeah, you can walk around with it, and that way you don't have people like pulling it off the uh, the charcuterie shelf. That is fantastic. What do you I think about this. that? Yeah, let me try a little bit. Love like this. Mm. Also, do you know how to make a charcuterie rose? No. Look at these guys, right? How do you do that? Uh, okay, so this is like a fun little tip you can do. So you can use a champagne flute for this, mm -hmm. and we can use some of this uh, little warm salami here. And you just kind of load it on the side like that. Mm -hmm. And then you just layer it in. You could do this in a wine glass too, but that'll be a bigger uh -huh. rose. And you just kind of keep layering it like that. See, and I'll just do the little, like that. And then once you uh, have another layer there, uh -huh. there we go. And you can flip oh, it out. Oh. And that's how you get your my rose. Gosh. Look, I mean, isn't that just the cutest that's, thing? That's amazing. So these are these are great. And for this you, party you got the the salami rose yeah, right over here. Rose. We've got Chef David rose, She's, exactly. which is very 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 <laughs> fitting. Chef, so, we've got two roses. What a what a great <laughs> idea! <laughs> I love it though. And and so when, when you do these things, yeah. How how far in advance could you put this out? Or okay, well this, this you want it. You can prep this in advance, but keep it chilled uh -huh. until you serve it, and then you can put it out, and then right. people do it. So Fantastic. this is yeah. Alejandra, but those guys definitely make them way in advance. Make them in advance. Yes. That's great. Hey, don't forget catch Alejandra on season two of PBS's The Great American Recipe Mondays at nine. Well, next up, we're going to be turning up the heat on this party with one of our 30 Rock neighbors, Chef J.J. Johnson, right over there. Woo! 
JJ, hey, JJ. You know him from his. Oh, let's let's kind of walk over. We're gonna walk over this way. I'm ready for Jeff, you. Jeff, JJ, you know his his fabulous restaurant here in New York. In fact, one hey, when you guys finish up, go down to the concourse so you could check out JJ's field trip. Well, today he's gonna be grilling lemon pepper prawns with a signature collard green salad. Good to you see know you, about sir. Good to see you too. Hey, how's everything? Oh, everything's great. Ready for the summer? Um, I, yeah. I mean, I'm in it. This is it. I got the fit. You're going. Back. You said I'm coming to a block party. You, you got to look right at the, the block party. Got the party. shorts. Got the kicks. So Looking good. Today's all about lemon pepper prawns. Okay. So how, how's your pepper? How's your pepper game? My pepper game is strong. I it's like strong? the pepper. You so like this is going to be spicy. All right. Okay. So onion powder, garlic powder, black pepper. It's so humid. Ooh, it's so <laughs> humid. It got stuck. Look at this. Look at this. They are literally rock hard <laughs> because it's so humid. That's crazy. You added some pepper flakes. Can you get it in there? Hold Use on. that spatula. Get it in there. Get it in there, Al. Hold on. I got wow. you. I've uh, never seen that before. <laughs> coagulation. <laughs> Woo! And then fresh lemon zest. Oh, okay. Right? That's the trick. Yeah. All right? And then the good and gather olive oil. Uh-huh. Then mix that up for me. All righty. So you mix that up. Now, they, let me, you, you said prawns. What's the difference between prawns and shrimps? If you, if you can't get... Uh, prawns, could you use shrimp? You can use shrimp, you can use really a large shrimp. The great thing about prawns is they come from like three places in the world, Costa uh -huh. Rica, Australia, and Nigeria. Okay. Oh, so, cool. and they come in many different sizes. I like to have my prawns with the head on. Uh-huh. But, and then they look like this. Right. And then you just put these, boom. You put these right on the grill. You don't want the grill too hot because you don't uh -huh. want to smoke it up, but you want a little bit of that sizzle, right? Sure. And when you talk about summertime, are you ready for summer? Prawns or shrimp talk summer. Yeah, and the great right. thing is they cook up fairly quick. They cook quickly. This is great for large groups. Mm -hmm. You're trying to figure out what to do with family coming over. Right. Go get some large Not shrimp. Not everybody eats meat. Exactly. So that's perfect. And now, then, once, you, once you've got your shrimp, Once you've got prawns, the shrimp now, Al, come on now. It's all about oh. this lemon pepper sauce. Uh-oh. All right? This is when you turn it up. So there's some, there's some hot sauce in here, so right. your favorite hot sauce, mm -hmm. honey, yeah. a lot of lemon, and then you just drop that on top. Oh, now, big that looks, Does that not look good? It looks good. Let's see come how on, it I'm going to jump in there with you. Oh, that's fantastic. Mm. Sweet, spicy, the lemon. Mm. Man, that was good. Now listen, I can stay here all day and eat this with we you. We could, but we've got other things to do. Well, let's jump into collard greens. Oh, yeah, the collard greens. Now, we're not braising collard greens. Oh, okay. These are not your mama's collard greens. Mm -mm. This is raw collard greens. Okay, what you always think, wow, it's so tough. You, you couldn't eat it no, raw. No, but that's the great thing about collard greens. They're versatile. Mm -hmm. They're affordable now. Right. I used to want to say cheap, but they're not no, cheap no, no, no more. No, no, nothing's cheap they're anymore. They're affordable. And this is a great thing. So you make this beautiful coconut dressing. So what did you, what, what was it, like a toasted? So some toasted cumin seeds. Okay. And you got to toast the cumin Why? seeds because you want to get that effervescent. Mm -hmm. You want to bring it to life. So lime juice. Yeah. Coconut milk. And, and if, if I can, just for a second, I want our crew, we, we can't do this without our crew. Let's take a look at our stage crew. They got to bring stuff put in it all and together. out in this heat. They're getting this thing done. Thank you, guys. You guys are doing a great so job. We really some, appreciate some it. mustard here. Uh-huh. Ginger. Yeah. And then if you want it spicy, right, you can put a little bit of chipotle. I like to put a, I like to put it all out. It's got you know a little smokiness in exactly. there. Exactly. And then you blend that up. Okay. All right. So that's your dressing. So, collard greens, you like the stems? Uh, I do like the stem. Well, I mean, so if you like the stems like me and Al, you can keep the stems in, mm -hmm. or you can just pull it. Okay. And what I like to do with the stems is I pickle them. Oh, nice. So there's no waste, right? You're all right. So, so humid out here, Al. <laughs> Nothing's working. Nothing's <laughs> working right. And then you just roll them up really uh -huh. nice. And you're basically going to chiffon out it? Yeah, so if you guys, if anybody ever comes to Rockefeller Center, Go down to Field Trip. Hell yeah. My rice bowl shop. We just opened a new one. Where? Right in front of Columbia University oh. on 114th oh. Street in Broadway. Those students are going to love that. So, you heard Ali say that the students are going to love it. Send your kids to Columbia. That's it. That's and a get main some reason trip. to do it. <laughs> so, you end up with something that looks like this. Something like this. And uh -huh. then, you add in the beautiful ingredients some red onions, uh -huh. some cucumbers, right. candy cashews. Oh. You can buy those in the store now. Uh huh. Azuki red beans. And, and then you keep red beans, and then that dressing, right? And you just drizzle that right on top. And you mix that up. Mm -hmm. Ah, what you think? This is my famous collard green oh, salad. Oh man, this is bright. It's fresh. And Ooh. you can you can put these you can put those prawns right on top. You oh can yeah, there you go. Some chicken to it, some swordfish. You can layer this things. bad boy. Exactly, all the things mm. that speak summer. You know, I just I just mix it up, but 
you know, black parties for me are a thing. That's fantastic. Thank you, sir. We no appreciate problem. that. Jeff, JJ, thank you so much. Guess what? We are just getting started here on the Ultimate Summer Block Party on today, all day. J.J. Johnson's going to be back in our next hour with another delicious recipe. Coming up, then we're talking Mr. Adam Richmond, my man, going to show us how Brooklyn does a block party right. with a crowd-pleasing recipe for the perfect handheld bite. And our own Today contributor, Joy Bauer, is here with two tasty and nutritious recipes. Everybody's going to love all that more as the Today Summer Block Party continues right after this. Summer block party. We're here on the plaza cooking up fun with a few of our faves. Nobody knows how to throw a party like my good buddy, TV personality Alan Adam Richmond. He's so good, I screwed up his name. Uh, <laughs> he's here with a delicious appetizer fit for the whole neighborhood. Don't forget, scan the QR code below for the recipe. So what do we got cooking, my friend? We have pulled pork egg rolls. Ooh. Super delicious, right? Like pulled that. pork egg rolls. Oh, wow, everybody loves egg rolls. Everybody loves pulled pork. Exactly. So you can do this with store-bought stuff, but if you want to go from scratch, let's start with from scratch coleslaw. So oh, okay. what we have is green cabbage, red cabbage, and carrots, and uh -huh. I salted it to get this excess moisture oh. out of it. Pro tip. Yeah, well, the moisture is going to obviously break down. So that keeps your coleslaw from getting watery. Watery and that nice, thick, rich dressing breaking down. So right. we have some mayo, so if uh -huh. you wouldn't mind, we have some Dijon, we have some pickle juice, salt, sugar, pepper, and celery salt. Boom. So it's instead of just creamy and sweet, which is what most slaw is. Right. But again, feel free to use whatever, whatever you want to do. Got. No Precisely. Judgment. Now you can buy uh, pulled pork from your favorite barbecue spot. You can make it. I know that I gave the good people at Today Food uh, a recipe for my buddy Myron Mixon, where you can make oh, this Myron. the best, winningest man in competition barbecue. Yep. And he gave me a recipe for how to make. Uh, pulled pork in your oven. So oh. this will take roughly four hours start mm -hmm. to finish. You could uh, shred it with porks, you could just, uh, with forks rather, you could just pull it apart with your hands and you want to get it in chunks. That's excellent. Just mix it all up so it's all covered. And the cool thing with the slaw is the longer it sits in your fridge, the better the, better the flavor is oh, going to yeah. be. So again, you can pull it off into big chunks, uh -huh. hence pulled pork. Yes. Break it up so that you can work with it into the small egg rolls. Okay. So once we have it, you can mix it with your sauce. You can heat it up with your sauce. All right. And we have our egg roll wrappers. You can use water. You can use uh, an egg wash. But basically, we're going to put water around the edges. So okay. that's basically our glue because right. there's enough starch on it. 
And then, uh, again, you can use any pork you wish. Yeah. You can use char siu, whatever you want. But I like old school pulled pork. I used to get some from a guy in Cabot, Arkansas, at Mean oh. Pig Barbecue. Wow. And I used to get really delicious stuff. And then, again, the slaw of your choice. So right. I, I like this one because it's not so sweet. Because barbecue sauce tends to come with sure. its own inherent sweetness. Yep. Then I put like just a drizzle of barbecue sauce right down the center of it. Because okay. it's already going to have a little bit of juiciness, right. if you will, from the uh, from the actual now, pork. Now, slow down on that fold. Now, show this. Okay. How do you do it? So we go over and tuck it. Okay. Then we bring the edges in as best we can. Right. And then roll it on up. There you go. And then we have that water to seal. Well, well it doesn't tear apart because we're on a 102 degree day yes. on the plaza. Woo! All right, now you can do this in a deep fryer or you can pan fry. Mm -hmm. You want an oil that's going to get to 355 degrees. You want some of the low smoke points. Okay. So peanut oil, right. excellent for frying. Uh -huh. Safflower, also really good. Again, you want to lay stuff down away from you so you don't look like the Phantom of the Opera, <laughs> if you can. So you want to keep it. I usually try to do the wrap side down because then it sort of sticks. Okay. So you want to get it till it's golden brown. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overcrowd the pan right. because obviously it's going to lower the amount of energy to actually make it. So we have a few of these cooking away. And then finally, and I noticed there's like, you can have a dipping sauce of your choice. So I'll give you my favorite peanut sauce, and it is the easiest thing ever. Creamy peanut butter, hot water, sriracha, and garlic. Wow. Oh, that's, you like? that's fantastic. See, and mm. it's, the, the, the nice thing is it's a big, like, flavor punch mm -hmm. without being super intense with the ingredients. So oh, literally, yeah. just use the hot water to get the peanut butter where you want it, mm -hmm. olive oil and garlic in the pan, and then hot sauce if you need it. Now, could you get to this point? Yeah. Put these in the fridge. And to then tighten them to up. To tighten them up. 100%. And and so you, they're done ahead, and all you have to do the day of the, the party, drop them in the oven. Exactly what I do. Coming from a Jewish family, the fact that my cousins always want pulled pork egg rolls <laughs> makes me feel some kind of way. But yeah, that's exactly what I do. Make them in advance. And the same thing, the slaw mm -hmm. intensifies with the flavor. So too does the pork when it's soaking up all the sauce and those fibers. It's sacrilegious, if you will. <laughs> but so delicious. So delicious. It's delicious, sacrilegious. It's sacrilegious deliciousness. <laughs> the best. Thank you, buddy. All you guys right. having a good block party? Adam Richmond, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you always got to love at a bark party, you kind of you kind of mosey along the block, you walk around, and then you see a good buddy, and look, oh my gosh, look who I just happened to run into, Joy Bauer. Hello. Oh, so yeah. good to see you. So great to see Our you. today nutrition and health expert. We have something fun, a little something, something, a little cooling right I now. I do, I Especially do. Especially on a day like today. Yes. And are we going to start right now? Yeah, let's do Amazing. it. Amazing. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do, and you know that healthy food is my love language. Of course. So everything here is super simple. It's easy to make in bulk because I have massive block parties pretty mm. much every weekend. Do you really? And also, it's totally scrumptious and seasonal. So we're starting with mm -hmm. watermelon feta bites. Well, right now, watermelon is at, at, at oh, its peak. Absolutely. Yes. And so I'm going to show you very quickly how I cut it because this will make the process very simple. Uh -huh. So I like to cut sticks, watermelon sticks, okay. just like this, because then you very easily can produce a mass amount of mm -hmm. these little cubes. And I should also say, we're using watermelon now. Uh -huh. You can swap in honeydew, cantaloupe, sure. even chunks of pineapple. I did it with mango the other day, oh, wow. and it was delicious, yeah. <laughs> so now it's about skewering. Right. So we put the watermelon on a stick. Mm -hmm. We have naturally sweet, juicy watermelon, sure. coupled by feta, because oh. everything's better with feta. Better with feta. <laughs> and so it's important when you're buying feta for this one, you don't want to get the crumbled, you want to get the cubes. Right. right. So we put this on, and now it's all about the mint. So this is going to be a nice aromatic mint leaf. Right. And we need something to drizzle on it. Sure. So let's take this. Now, normally, I would do a balsamic glaze. Mm -hmm. You get that zesty, Ooh. tangy deliciousness. Right. But I also tried it with hot honey. Ooh. Pesto barbecue sauce. Honestly, anything works. Let me open this. Well done. Want to do that? Give it a squirt. Right over there. There we go. And you like pesto also, right? Oh, yeah. And so you, you actually have the perfect combination of this juicy, salty, savory, creamy. Mm. And what's great aromatic. about this is kind of salt, sweet. Yes. Mm. And you can make a great big platter, mm. alternating the fruits as mm. well. Even though I'm a little biased to watermelon, but really anything works. I've never anything met anybody works. who had a watermelon bias. <laughs> but we all love watermelon. I know, okay. A bias oh. towards 
towards watermelon. I, I, I love I watermelon. Know, I, I sing songs about watermelon. Now we're, and corn is out there, the, the, yes. the sweet seasonal corn. Love corn. And so this is a southwestern corn salad that mm -hmm. really complements anything that you're making. Hot dogs, burgers, steaks, chicken, mm -hmm. anything that you are grilling, this will go with it. So I'm going to show you a little trick to get the kernels off of your corn. Okay. And by the way, you can also, if you want, swap in frozen corn or canned corn. But right now, yeah. ears of corn are, Come on. go for it. OK, so we have a, whoops, a large bowl here. Uh -huh. Then you're going to take a smaller bowl, mm -hmm. invert it down below. Right. You put your corn on top. You take your knife and you slice it off like uh -huh. that. And what that does is it catches all the kernels mm -hmm. because if you do it on a, a chopping block, sometimes they scatter all yeah, over right. the place and they go a little wild. So they, they all catch them. But you know what I also like to do? Uh -huh. I just put it on the side just like this. Uh -huh. And I slice so it like that. Yeah. yeah. So either, either way, you either get your way. kernels off. Now, here are our kernels. Okay. You're going to toss them on the skillet. You can also start with grilled corn on the cob, and then right. you could skip this I was step. just going to say, because that's what I, I do. I like to, if we, especially if we have extra, I just grill it up and put it in a... You're going to make the salad. Yeah. <laughs> Boom. And so I have a little bit of olive oil right. here, and we're just going to um, saute it for mm -hmm. about seven minutes. We want to get these so beautiful charmar. Like yes. And when you do do this, if right. you're not going to use your grilled corn, I'm going to tell you, Al, the kitchen starts to literally smell like buttered popcorn. Ooh. And sometimes you get some jumping actions, mm -hmm. too, from the corn itself. Pop, pop, pop. Okay. Yes. Now we're going to build it. Okay. So we have our corn here, and we're going to put in, you're going to scoop this in. This is a can of rinsed and drained black beans. Okay. I have chopped red bell pe right. pepper, lots of color. Now we're going to put in red onion. Okay. The hardest part about this is just doing the chopping, and honestly, I'll chop the night before, mm -hmm. jalapenos and cilantro. Okay. And now we're gonna dress it up a little bit. Mix, give this a mix oh. first. I'm gonna come around here. Okay. And I'm gonna add in some lime juice. Nice brightness. Yes. And um, a little bit of olive oil. We don't have the extra olive oil here, but I would put in a little bit more of extra virgin just olive assume. oil. Okay. A little bit of cumin, uh -huh. honestly, because I love a bit of a kick and salt and pepper. And this is ready to go. But what did we mention before? Everything's better with feta. Right. <laughs> so this time you're going to use crumbles. Okay. And you're going to put a little bit on top. And honestly, this platter will be the hit of a party. It's so a delicious. Try. Yeah. Here you go. I wish I had an extra fork. What do you think? Oh, that's great. Is it, and Fantastic. so easy, and you could double and triple mm -hmm. the recipe so that you could make a great big batch. What I do is called mob meals, <laughs> because we have so much family in the backyard all the time, so. Uh -huh. Well, in Brooklyn, we mob start. meal means something else. That's another story. <laughs> it just means extra large, <laughs> gigantic, healthy food well, All right, enjoy. Thank you. It's always good to see you. Dear. All right, for this recipe and all the recipes from our block party, just scan the QR code below with your smartphone. Coming up next, we got Chef Jordan Andino. He's going to share a summer barbecue staple with a twist you do not want to miss. And David Rose joins us to make delicious mac and cheese bites. Let me tell you, I've had these before. <laughs> they will change your life. The fun continues after Al's ultimate summer block party stays with us. Stay with us.
We are back with more from Al's Ultimate Summer Block Party. I am joined now by Chef Jordan Andino. Give it up for Jordan. Let's go. Yeah. He is the chef and co-founder of the Carriage House here in New York. Jordan's also going to share his recipe for a really interesting summer barbecue staple. Okay, chicken wings, yes, but yeah. no, there's a twist. What is that twist? All right, this is chicken adobo wings. Ah. Now, Al. Chicken adobo is a national dish of the Philippines. Oh, by the way, I gotta mention, scan the QR code below to follow along and get the recipe. All yeah, right, check now. it out. Okay, Filipino. Filipinos are known for chicken adobo, okay? Uh -huh. It's soy, garlic, vinegar braised chicken. I turned that into a chicken wing because that's perfect for a summer wow. block party, all right? All right, grab so, and go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start here with some sugar cane vinegar called uh -huh. Datu Puti. Okay, then if we're you gonna... can't get that, what could you use? Um, regular white vinegar, okay. but, yeah, right. or even rice wine vinegar. Oh, okay. Yeah? This is dark soy. It's more concentrated on the salinity. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then to give it a little, a little bit more flavor. And then right here, this is some oyster sauce because you always need that sweet oh, element. Okay. And whenever I cook, I love to have a sweet, so that's some sriracha right there. Oh, so a little spice. But I definitely got to have that spice. Once right. it's in there, you're going to give it a nice little whisk. Uh -huh. Do that up. Okay. So once it whisks, what you want to do is you're going to throw your wings in there. As the wings sit, they need to marinate. Okay. I would say at minimum four to six hours. Could you leave it overnight? Leaving it overnight would be best. Okay. Yeah, at minimum four to six hours overnight, you're going to do it. So you're just gonna let it sit, make sure everything's fully submerged, ready to go. Okay. Once you have that, and then we'll, we'll get to it. Now, you're gonna make your breading, okay? Because you want that, that nice little texture. Okay. Right? Chicken wings, when you want them crisp, sure. you gotta have it. So now we're gonna put in a little bit of a bay leaf. We're gonna get this going, and we're just gonna chop this up. Zoom. Chop up the bay leaves, you want everything nice and uh, this, uh, homogenous in terms of the texture. Okay. Once that's done, you throw it into your bowl. Right. And then you add your seasoning and your flavor. Of course, you need to accent a little bit of salt, Garlic powder, onion powder to help elevate that that base flavor. Some brown sugar okay. to balance it out, and then, then some paprika because paprika is always delicious. Could you use smoked if you like? Um, you could use smoked, especially if you're going barbecue uh -huh. on the grill. Okay. I would definitely say that works. Then here's the trick: cornstarch. Oh. The crispiest wings in the world: cornstarch. Wow. Yeah, and Pro tip: cornstarch. Cornstarch. So you put it in. Once it's there, give it a nice little whisk. There you go. Okay. And it's ready to rock. So right. All from there. Wings have marinated four to six hours at, at, at best overnight. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna throw them in there. So you fact, dredge them in here? We're just gonna dredge them right here. And you just toss everything ready to go. Like right. so, oops. Toss it up out. There you go, look at that. Crispy right. wings, and then once they're done, uh -huh. you have a napkin right there yeah. for you. And once they're done, they look like this. So now from this point, you can either deep fry them, you can uh -huh. bake them, right. you can even Could roast you them. Could you grill them? You can grill them for sure. Okay. It would be delicious. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our dip. Every wing needs a dip. Every wing needs a Every dip. Every wing needs a dip. I don't Everybody say making. together. Every, Every wing needs a dip. There yes, you it does. go. All right. Nice. So now what we're going to do is so we'll start with our base of sour cream. Mm -hmm. Lemon juice is going to elevate all those flavors. Could you use like a Greek yogurt if you're Greek, Greek yogurt? yogurt. Labno would work really oh, well. Okay. Creme fresh if you want to get fancy. Oh, okay. Take your pick. Now we have coconut milk. Oh. Coconut cream, coconut full milk fat, work. Full fat cream. Yeah, yeah, you want all of that. That's, right. That's going to give you that nice island mm -hmm. flavor. Add some sugar and some salt to help accent that. There you go, Al. Best sous chef ever right here, by the way. Come on, Al. All right, there you go. Okay. So then, and then so that's your dip. That's your dip. So then, then you have your wings oh, and your man. dip. Please, this is for you to try. Here we go. Here. Come on, let's see. By it. the way, what about you for summer? What was summer like for you, Jordan? Growing up, summer for me was my birthdays in the summer. Uh, so all of these barbecues, grilled skewers, chicken wings, and big familial gatherings mm -hmm. in hot 